Welcome everybody to the Qatar Airways GK Kite World Tour. Inside the water, like everybody wanna win. It's gonna be a good show. Freestyle is everything in my life. The pressure is a privilege, brings out the best in us. The level can fully be shown when the conditions are perfect. It's time to show it. Let's get it. Who are going to be our new world champions? further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents. Welcome back to the Laws of Tram GKA Big Air Kite World Cup. I am Lewis Crathen and I'm joined by Liam Dredge from the GKA. How's it going, Liam? Are you excited about the action we've got in the next few days? Oh, Lewis, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, riders have been pushing for the last couple of days. I thought the conditions yesterday allowed them for a good uh, training. We've been super excited from the GKA to have the first Big Air event, you know, here partnering the Laws of Tram. So the, uh, the riders that we've got coming, some of the biggest and best kite ballers on the planet for Big Air. So I'm super excited and, and as are the crew. It's the fifth edition of Lords of Tram here and it really has that sense that the event is going places here. Now officially part of the GKA World 
tour. The biggest names in the sport are here. The riders briefing really felt like something special down there, Liam. We're going to start with the ladies, which is which is going to be taking place very shortly. They're all out on the water, Liam. Looks quite strong. We're going to bring you loads more information about the conditions, what sizes the riders are using. But I can just see out here already, they're on around eight meter kites, maybe seven meter kites. Yeah, you can see here on your screens, that's sort of our, our prime location, our prime conditions here. And uh, just a few of our riders getting used to the conditions. As you said, Lewis, wind is starting to build. It's starting to get a little bit more consistent. So looking forward to the action. We'll be back with you very shortly. We just go to some commercials. Lots of tram is more than a competition. I was ready to cast in the spot. <laughs> From the beginning, the desire has been to bring together the best riders in the world to develop the big air kite discipline. To make an event, you need a lot of things. A team, organization, authorizations, budgets, and more. We are very grateful to our volunteers, our media team, and our judges. Everyone takes part in and is passionate about extreme sports. You will find them in the air or on the water. Partners are also a big part of the event. We are committed to creating meaningful links and building long-term relationships with them. We're back again, Liam, and uh, we're back with Big Air because Big Air really is taking the limelight with kiteboarding right now. There's so many dif different disciplines in the sport, but Big Air is huge. Last year, we had those Big Air World Championships in Tarifa, which were really successful. And we have so many of those riders coming back to perform here in Bajarez for the second time of uh, Lords of Tram. Three times before that was in Grusan, but we're here in this absolutely perfect spot. And it looks like the riders are already performing their moves. I think they're just warming up there in the background, Lynn, but they're going massive already. Yeah, we've got prime view here as well, Lewis, you know, with, with location. We can see all the riders in front of us, all the rigging up. It looks like we've got the eights, the sevens and the sixes are sort of the prime sizes. Really, really promising forecast. It's going to be blowing. It's absolute nuts off, I reckon, for the next couple of days. And as you mentioned, big air is going through the roof. These guys are pushing and we're excited from the GK as well. We've got an exciting year ahead. We know pushing on after this in Tarifa. And then we're hopeful to have another third stop as well, which is TBC. But hopefully more information to come on that. Well, where's that going to be? Can you tell me, Liam? Oh, mate, that's going to be something that we have to do off the live stream, unfortunately. OK, well, that's really exciting. And that saved me from going straight into actually saying, well, it's going to be these two events which count to the Big Air World Championships. That might not actually be so true. But we'll bring you more information on all of that. So yeah. Uh, let me go for some more commercial breaks here now, but it's just heating up on the water. Stay tuned. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents. Big air, Liam, is that we really need strong wind to get the riders up into the sky and perform all of their really good moves. So we just look at some of the conditions we've got here 
down there. It's overcast. It's actually not so overcast no, now. Not I think all. that was my fault because it said grey <laughs> and I decided to change it to overcast. The sky has got blue. There's no waves here, obviously, because we're inland. But it's the wind that's really key to us here. 30 to 38 knots. That's roughly in the early 40 miles per hour. That's strong enough that these riders can get airborne, Liam. Yeah, it's a sort of wind where it really gets the, uh, the smile going and gets these riders excited. And the good news as well, Lewis, is that is what it's at now. I mean, local time is half 12 and the forecast is very promising to just push up to that 45, you know, even, you know, past the 50. So these big air riders, they sure will be excited. You know, big competition on the way. First big air event of the year. So it's all systems go. I also want you to take a quick look at the temperature as well, because something that's often overlooked with big air is the temperature. Now, typically we don't like super warm conditions. The nice cold temperatures gives that nice dense wind which the riders really feel helps them get into the air it's so high now the local area is a wonderful area anybody that's been into kiteboarding will know that this area is featured on the map for years and years and years we're down here in Bacares, who are 100 percent committed to this event they really are a city that put everything on the line to make this event happen it's a wonderful area for staying in your camper van there's loads to see and do and you can get up close to all these amazing lagoons. It's, it's a place that people have been visiting for years, windsurfing, before kiteboarding was even here, Liam. Yeah, I think one of the really amazing things about this location is just how close you can get to the action as a crowd member. You know, we've seen a few locations like that. You know, Tarifa is a little bit similar in the fact that you can be like, you know, on the beach and you can be sort of be on that little pier. But here you can literally be touching distance from these riders. And when they're going to the absolute moon, I mean, what a place to be. You wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world during these next two days. No, you talk about going to the moon, Liam. We're not just two guys talking about, you know, people going massive for the sake of it. We nearly saw the world record height, uh, which is around, I think it's 35 metres, nearly broken just yesterday <laughs> yeah. in the warm-up for one of the men. That was right here, right in front of you. And you can see the early spectators are starting to arrive down here. We expect that to get packed out as the day goes on and as we're explaining to you. Just look how close you can actually get here. And you get this really great a perspective of distance when the riders take off here on your screen they'll be coming way down to the left hand side and in some cases they'll land out of the screen yeah one of the riders that was uh, going for it yesterday was uh, Jamie Overbeek he was going you know the distance he was covering after his jumps were quite spectacular really so a rider that's definitely on the radar for me just looking at the riders training over the last couple of days yeah, for sure. He's here with a big support. He's got his father here. He films everything, all his big air jumps. He got a good film uh, yesterday. He like, showed me earlier during the riders, uh, riders briefing. He'll have his brother here to help as well. And I think he's one of the big names now, fresh off his podium out at the King of the Air. I think he's going to be one of the names to watch. But it's the girls that are going to start things off for us here, the ladies. And uh, we're going to have Natalie Lambrecht, highest ranked in this heat, up against Carly Thomas and Jasmine Cho in this first heat, which looks very, it's going to start very soon. I see the time is just currently sitting on 18. And it's a very different format here as well that we do, Liam, which worked really well last year, where the riders are actually going to perform their moves one by one, similar to freestyle. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's a really, I mean, what it allows also for the judges is a big thing is that in an event like this, a major first big air event of the year, you know, these guys have got to be super on it. So judges are able with one jump at a time. They're really able to focus on the maneuvers, especially with big air, you know, going down the route it is at the moment. They need to be on it. Let's show you then what it's like around here in Bacares, the wonderful region. Hello everyone, so are we in uh, Bacares for the long time, um, first event of the GK World Tour, Big Air. Uh, the conditions look insane, the, the sky is clearing up, wind is picking up, so we're going to start today with the action with the woman. Uh, it will start uh, really soon, as soon as the condition and uh, everything is ready on the beach. So check out the live stream, it's going to be insane, forecast looks really good for today and for tomorrow as well. 
So we're going to have a crazy weekend in Baccarat and the rider is going to fly and send some crazy tricks. Thanks very much, Val. And uh, we now turn our attention to the action about to take place on the water. And it uh, looks like I can see the three kites of these riders that will be in this heat. I think this might be Carly Toma. Maybe she's uh, warming up, although that's quite a big move. A nice mega loop with the delayed back roll for her warm up. It's one of the sort of moves that you want to get in there to start with. And the next two riders I can see there is Natalie Lambrecht will be on the yellow duo tone and just behind her on the core kite will be Jasmine Cho. Yeah, really exciting. Three uh, heavy hitters out on the water that are sure going to kick things off to a flying start. Uh, as you mentioned there, Natalie is one of those riders that sort of does it all and just there looping around, just getting a few dialed down early doors. But, you know, keeping herself busy this year, Lewis, we saw her over in Colombia. And there you have it, riders on your screen, Natalie Lambrecht coming out of Sweden, Carly Toma out of USA, but, you know, representing Hawaii as well, and then Jasmine Show out of America as well. So there they are. There's the riders. You don't see that every day. Two from the States, you know, like we've obviously got that very famous region, the Gorge, for its big air, and I've got a feeling there might be some big air things going on there in the future. It's long overdue to be there, but two from the States, that is very rare. You get outnumbered in a heat, so it's great to see uh, these ladies representing their countries from the States. They're up against it, though. Natalie Lambrecht, who finished third in the world last year in a tree for the Big Air World Championship. So she's come into this ranked third. She's going to be hard to beat. Yeah, she's definitely one of those riders that, you know, when you see her, you know, when she's registered and raring to compete, you're like, whoa, this girl can throw down. She, I remember seeing a few of her uh, Big Air videos on, uh, on the old Instagram, Lewis, maybe about close to a year ago now. And the, the angle of her kite as well was... You know, I remember some of the even some of the guys like Jet Bradshaw commenting on it, saying like just how low that kite angle was. So conditions like this, I'm I keep saying it, I'm pumped, I'm ready to go. She's also a really incredible freestyle rider, and that rider, and that always gains my uh, attention and respect to be able to just switch between disciplines that, that some of these riders so often can. It's, you know, there's totally different skills required. But meanwhile, these ladies just getting some big air going. We can see. Nothing's uh, coming in score-wise just yet as uh, the lady's just getting a feel and it looks sounds to me in the background <laughs> like this live stream booth is beginning to start taking a pounding from this <laughs> wind here. And it's a very strong wind. It comes from the northwest out here and uh, it blasts down from the Pyr Pyrenees out to the warm Mediterranean. It's a catabatic wind. It's a very unique wind that you just have to experience once in your life down here. Make sure you dress up warm if you ever come here. You can see temperatures as low as zero, just like last year where we were commentating in double pants, double trousers. That's English pants, not American pants. Um, we were really doubled up just to get through the temperatures, but much warmer this year, Liam. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. And uh, But nothing we're not used to, Lewis, you know, coming out of the, the UK. We're, uh, this is like, I mean, this is a little bit better than home, I would say, with the blue skies out. Yeah, there's, there's a sense of spring in the air, definitely <laughs> down here. I mean, we landed in Barcelona, which is one of the easiest ways to come here and drive just the two and a half hours north and over the border in France. It was 20 degrees when we landed. It definitely feels like uh, as you come down further and further south, it's a nice time to do so as well, Liam, when you're just not quite there in the UK or maybe the Netherlands. It's all starting down here and there's you can just smell it in the air. It's a wonderful place yeah. to be and we're not doubled up as, as such. No. They all are closed this time around, which would be nice also for the riders. I mean, there were some riders wearing booties and gloves and all sorts, making it that extra bit more difficult to compete. But I can see a lot of them are quite happy with the temperatures here today. Yeah, and just uh, just curious as well, Lewis, for, my, for myself, you know, just before we get underway, coming from your background, you know, as a, as a past big air athlete, you know, watching this now, do you, you know, do you, do you miss that, that competitive edge you wanted to get out there? Do you wish, you know, maybe, you know, I should have gone for it. Yeah, massively, especially when the wind really, really picks up. I've always felt that the sport kind of changes once you get over 40 knots. And maybe in my time, I wasn't lucky enough to compete in as many ev events as I'd have loved to over over that wind strength. But it really does become a different sport. And the reaction speed to the riders uh, and their awareness, their airborne awareness, it has to be second to none to, to land smoothly. But the way these girls and guys are pushing it right now, on the other hand, sometimes you think maybe I am in the best place yep. being in the live stream booth. But here we go, oh, here then, we go. Liam. Yeah, first jump of the uh, the event and uh, 
Going big up there. Nice little kite loop there, just uh, get things up and running. Yeah, mega loop with a delayed back roll. You could probably have bet your house on that being a start now. Can you believe we're saying this? You know, that's a start here for the ladies here. It's day one here at the Lords of Tram GKA Big Air Kite World Cup. A big warm welcome to you if you've tuned in from wherever you have around the world. What a time to tune in. Cancel all your plans this weekend and maybe even Monday because the forecast here is outrageous once again early in april as well we're not hanging around waiting till the end of april first of april and we're off so next up to trick will be carly thomas and they're in sequence here to remind you yeah carly thomas just there with the uh, with the north kite so right in the orbit we know that kite can can sure deliver so let's see how how we go as we are couple minutes in but just also on your screens on the bottom left hand side you will see that we have uh, our partnership in the event the the surfer app, Lewis, and uh, just talk to our viewers. You know what is the, the all the specs and the the information that's coming up on our screens. Well, it's lovely. We get all this live data straight back off the riders who actually uh, have got the the phone on them with the, the software running. I'm just going to cover this as uh, Kylie told me there. Nice jump, and it's a mega loop with the delayed back roll as well. Clean landing. It's going to score similar to Natalie. I think maybe a bit under with the height. Yep. But now what's lovely is we get instantly. This data that we can talk about. Here's the replay of her coming down. She really, do oh, a little grab, reach for the board there as well, Liam. I wonder if the judges saw that. That scores a bit higher if you can get a grab in. But there, like you're saying, bottom left-hand uh, corner of your screens, we can see she was in the air for 4.9 seconds. She travelled 50 metres in distance, and this is a real key metric for me, Liam, to see how far expect some of these riders to cover over 100, 150 yep. metres as the event goes on. And, of course, we have the speed the rider went through the air at the fastest crucial point. Over to Jasmine now. Jasmine there, just going for that single kite loop, the mega loop there, sorry, just with a little bit of a grab as well as she was coming down. So didn't have the rotation like Natalie and Carly did, but, you know, Sometimes for these riders, it's just about getting that first trick dialed down, getting a bit of confidence, and also getting used to the spot. Really nice uh, example there of having the bar sheeted out as she edged upwind. There was a nice grab on the end of this loop as well. It's not going to score, I don't think, as close to the other two, but pretty sure she's got the back roll in there as well to uh, to score. Let's also tell you how they're getting scored here. How have we forgotten to do that so far? So the riders are getting six trick attempts. And their three best tricks are going to score. They're individually scored out of 10, so it's a maximum of 30. We don't even have to tell you about a variation score. There is none. So there's no confusion with that already. So it's nice and simple. But right now on your screen, then, is Natalie Lambrecht, who's going to edge hard up towards, well, uh, away from this camera angle. And off she goes. Nice high. Wow. Look at that. Mega loop one footer. Puts it down nicely, Liam. Yeah, I remember in uh, in Colombia, just uh, when we had a little big air exhibition off the freestyle, we, uh, she went out and uh, that was one of her dial tricks as well. So no surprise to me there to see Natalie just go for that one footer there. And you can see nice height, nice loop there. Didn't get a crazy yank, but nevertheless, another score on the board. Yeah, it's, it's hard to get a crazy yank with just one hand on the bar. You can never really get that bar right in close to you. But that was a lovely slow replay, just seeing how early she had that hand on the board. Here we go then to Carly. She cop Oh no, that's the replay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did look simple and uh, similar and I thought oh she's copying it, but it's lovely we can bring you these replays as well. Over to Carly Thomas. So scoring a 6.57 um, Natalie for that last move. What a start from her. Yeah, two good scores on the board. 12.97 now. So you can see there Carly with that 5.93. So still Carly had an you know a nice opening score there, but it's hard for us to sort of gauge you know these scores as well with the women at the moment with it being the first heat you know we've got some big names in the lineup as well so you know excited to see sort of where the scores start to go as the conditions and the competition you know takes place this afternoon because it's only going to get windier Lewis yeah it's true and it's a tough one for the judges that they don't want to go oh, that's a big oh, boogie yeah. in there I love that technique that was a really nice technique from uh, Kylie Thomas she starts to pump the hands a bit I've got a feeling this is going to be one of the highest scorers of the heat I've always felt that the front roll into a, a mega loop is a much more difficult position to put yourself in rather than a back roll one and it has to be done especially in strong wind with really good technique it's very easy to be rotated further into a, a second roll maybe a third or or to the point where you don't know what's going on which nobody wants to, to have especially with a kite loop and there you can see the surfer app, seven point, you know, 4.1 seconds in the air. Covered 33 metres, so not that much. But like you said, 
you know, showing a little bit more variation there on that second maneuver, and that scores just dropped. So 6.37 there for Carly Thomas. Yeah, I think Natty's just getting that extra height. This lady here, I don't think she quite got the front roll, maybe, that she wanted there. She reached down for the board, though. It might have been a board off attempt. I'd have to see the replay there to really to explain what happened there. But what I can tell you is that move was aborted on the way up. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Good job they've got six trick attempts, Lewis, because, you know, sometimes, it, you know, especially here, we I'm speaking to the riders over the last couple of days. The one thing they do always refer to about this spot is that it can be quite gusty. So if you don't catch those gusts at the right time, you know, you might not be able to get that height you want. But talking about height and one person that's going big, Natalie Lambrecht. That lovely powered edge, and she's going above the horizon for me here nicely. And she's just going for, that's quite sensible in my opinion, she wants that third trick on the board. Now we have to remind you, they can't just go and do the same three tricks. They have to perform tricks from different families. So just the straight megalith there, look at that lovely edge. If you're not jumping so well, that's the sort of edging technique that you need to apply. Perfect megalith from Natalie. It's gonna, I don't think it's going to score anywhere near other ones, but it's just another solid one. And here with this angle, we get this lovely view. Look how close her center of gravity is to the water, bringing that bum right down, actually touching the water. That is great technique. Yeah, she's got a very unique style, Natalie. We see, you know, she's got that sort of, you know, really gets low and, you know, parks that bum right down into the water. And now looking like Carly Thomas going for a very, pretty much very similar to Natalie there. Slightly delayed on actually pulling the loop in there, though. It's actually a contra loop then from Natalie. We didn't quite have the angle on the top of her kite. She jumped so big out of our angle. So I can see this on the score here. Those yep. of you possibly screaming at the screens back at home. I've been one of those people, don't you worry. And uh, that looked to me like a contra loop as well, perhaps. For Carly Thomas. You can see all the live scores yourself. Head, head to the GKA KiteWorldTour.com, click on the live button in the top right hand corner and be part of this just like we are watching this move. Yes, definitely a contra loop with the left hand pulling and looks like she was even going for a one footer maybe. There was a lovely grab on there. So she's responding really well then, is uh, Carly, to this uh, attack from Natalie Lambrecht. And Jasmine now on your screens. Oh, I just missed the start of that, but going big there. Oh, she just can't hold it, unfortunately, for her. It looked like a boogie loop to me uh, that time. Let's take another look at this replay here then. Nice and edged. Got to initiate that front roll, which she does. Got nice and inverted and ended up in this position, which I quite like for a boogie loop, where you're coming in toe side. It saves you over rotating it. But sometimes, if the wind's not there, you can fall back over that heel side edge. So, unfortunately, that's not going to score. But the attention goes back. So Natalie, we're in full speed mode here at the Lords of Tram GK. Big, oh. car, big crash, Liam. Yeah, that's a nasty crash there. Going for the board off there, but yeah, unfortunately not being able to get it back on the feet. Not swinging underneath the kite. And once again, replay showing us here that Natalie, holding that edge so well, goes up, initiates the loop, takes the board off, but just, yeah, not being able to swing under there. It's a difficult thing to try and get your head around, you know, imagining how it would be to also take the board off, put it on in a very limited time. And uh, here we get a nice view of what perhaps maybe happened here. I just don't think she got the board on nicely at the start. And at that point, it's not stupidly nuking here yet. It's about 30 to 35 knots. Didn't really have the height to sort of try and force that board on and she bailed out. But so often we can see that's where the injuries come, is where you land half one foot in, one yep. foot out, Liam. That, that could have been a bad one, but fortunately from Natalie, she's, uh, she's avoided it. But, you know, I can pretty much guarantee you one thing, Lewis, and for those at home, that's not going to be the only crash that, you know, we, we're going to see crashes that are going to be, you know, I mean, board breaking. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be nuts. I mean, the level is going through the roof. Women and the men, they're going to want to be pushing. So here we go. That's a lovely move there. That's a back roll mega loop with a second delayed back roll on there. And uh, we've got to be careful about the trick families as well, as long as she hasn't seemed to have continued and copied one of the trick families. She has done a mega loop with a back roll already. So I've got a feeling that this is going to be an upgrade of that move, although it, or it will... Uh, uh, it will not be scored as a separate move, as far as I understand. But that was very well executed. A tough move to, to learn that one from Kylie Toma. Gets a nice back roll to start with. Doesn't over-rotate it. And then spinning the bar, forcing it around her body. 
Very stylish rider, actually. Yeah, definitely showing a, a, a good element of control there throughout the move. And you can see now a couple of scores dropping. Natalie's last one of a 4.37. And Jasmine there just coming in and managing to stomp that line there. She'll have confidence from that one. And we'll be able to have a little look at that replay now. Yeah, she needed that, really. She's just falling off the pace with these other two landing pretty much all their other moves then. So here she comes then, just controlling. I love this angle where you can really see that edge upwind. Really good understanding of a boogie loop. And I love yeah. that position she ends up in here. She hasn't come all the way around hillside. It's a, it's a good position to try and get in. It's much easier one side than the other. So let's see what she scores. But just feeling a bit at the moment, what have we got here? Uh, that the others have been going... Uh, 8.4 metres. It's just out the corner of my eye. I wondered where the height was. Got my computer in the way, Liam. There we go. So that was 8.4 metres in height from the Surfer app, which you can download and use today. That's big. Yeah, that's big. Coming in and landing just perfectly there. Just, you know, cruising in. Not, you know, catching an edge and going down. Nathalie there showing a nice style nice control and that's one of the things that you know judges our head judge Mallory was talking about he wants to see the flow and the style but also that element of commitment yeah it wasn't, it wasn't as a hundred percent clean as I think it could have been from her the way she sort of you watch the body position here for me this is what I watch on a boogie loop here she's gone up nicely really committed to power but just getting yeah. pulled a little bit out of sorts into that sort of little railing means she probably hit a big gust as well but it will be another Big scorer from her, 8.8 .8 meters high that one was, and uh, maybe was going to be a mega loop with a board off perhaps for Carly, but she's going to have to settle with a, a grab there. So yeah. now we're getting to crunch time in this heat already, where they really are working their way down these tricks, and I think there's only uh, about six minutes left now. Yeah, it was just over, I think. There's not long, and it's um, it's all the, the speed that these riders are actually performing their moves. They're actually getting 40 seconds each to perform their moves but it looks like they need more like four seconds the way they're riding into the box and getting on with it which is uh i just couldn't get the foot out there unfortunately if she wanted to saw the look of natalie's one foot and oh, thought you know what i'll give this one a bash as well but here you have jasmine on your screen now going for her next trick and you can see there on the scoreboard definitely a little bit off the first two riders so here she goes looking keeping the edge what are we going to see Just going for that kite loop with a grab there, but again, not really getting the height, not really sort of, you know, getting the yank and the, and the commitment, probably, you know, wanting more, definitely wanting more, in fact, Lewis. Yeah, I think so, too. So we apologise, we haven't got the full picture of the scores coming in right now, um, up above, so we're going to keep you a bit more informed we can from behind the scenes, but it's, uh, it's a close heat, I think, this one, mostly between Natalie at the moment and Carly. But this nice replay here is gone. <laughs> <laughs> that one's gone forever. But here's Jasmine riding into the box then on that core kite. It looks like a seven meter to me. And she may well have got one of those lulls that we've talked about. Yeah, that's, that can happen. Yeah, second time that's happened to, to Jasmine as well. So, you know, unfortunate, but it's, you know, got to be sometimes you've got you to play with Mother Nature and you've got to be in the right place at the right time. And, you know, as you mentioned, Lewis, 40 seconds for each trick. But, you know, if the judges do see that it's, you know, going through a little bit of a lull out there, they are going to be that little bit lenient because, you know, we know it's an up and down spot. Sometimes we know it can be gusty. So I think uh, everything's in the riders favours for this event. Next up then, <coughs> Natalie Lambrecht. She has a such a tendency to find the gust. Oh, that was a wonderful execution of how to crash in big air. She's kicked the board away. That This is going to be one hell of That looks like an equipment malfunction to me there. Something's gone there. Sent it straight down. We're barely half an hour into this thing, Liam, and my heart is racing. Here we go then. What an angle. So, I don't... Wow. Let's hope she's okay Ouch. down there. The other ride, I can see her kite moving around, so she's okay. So... What a reaction that was to get rid of the board and land two feet like that. We're going to have to get to the bottom of that one because that was a biggie here at the Lord of Tram GKA Big Air Kite World Cup. Liam, you told me we weren't going to just see one crash here today. And we've just seen one of the biggest ones I've seen in in years, mate. Yeah. Sent straight down. You wouldn't want to do that for a million pounds. No, no. I mean, uh, 
it sounds bad to say it, but <laughs> yeah, rather nasty than myself on that one. I mean, it's uh, going going down hard, but you know, it's good to see that she's up on her feet. I mean, that's the most important thing, up on her feet. And she's a rider that wants to commit, and I'm sure next jump we'll see her go full beans again. I think I've got my head around it. This is one of those hard <laughs> moments as a commentator where you're wondering what could happen here. As Carly Tomo just puts one more move in. It can't be equipment malfunction because she's back out on the water. So I think she let go of the bar. I think she might have hit a gust and maybe let go of the bar, perhaps. That's all I can think of. Yeah, the kite definitely didn't come up and, and catch and you know, going straight down. But here, Carly, just dialing down again, landing. But again, not one of her biggest tricks. Coming down actually quite heavy on the landing. So... Scores are starting to come in. You can see Natalie there still in currently first position, but we are still waiting for a few scores to drop. And with just two minutes left now, it's uh, coming down to that good old famous crunch time now. So just under two minutes, Natalie on her feet, which is always good to see. We've got Carly Tomer out there and Jasmine on the core. And riders still, to, you know, have a little more dabble out there, have a couple more jumps just to, you know, get out, iron out those cobwebs. And we can see, you know, the flags are really starting to pick up now. Kites are on the beach, you know, rigged and ready to go. We've seen our, our next riders just getting ready to enter the water now. So what do you think goes through some of these riders' minds, Lewis, now? Especially after seeing a couple of these crashes, one that Nasty had especially. <laughs> are you thinking, what do you reckon? No, I think not. they're thinking, I hope that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, for, that's for sure. But I could just tell just by the... The wonderful view we have out the window here. You just want to be on the water. It's a yeah, big air rider here. Sure. I and mean, you're looking out the window. Six, sevens and eights. That's all I can see rigs. No nines. You know, what, what a wonderful big air event to just have those small kites rigged. And uh, any kite boarder just wishes they were out there. So I'm sure the rest of them want to, to get out there. But meanwhile, that is a really nicely executed mega loop with a delayed back roll by Jasmine. And she's stuck it in the drink at the end. <laughs> I don't believe it. Oh. So... Just as the replay cut in, out the corner of my eye, out the window, she put it in the water. How did she manage that? She had it in the bag. She did. She rode out of it. There we go. You can see calm, cool, collective. And unfortunately, not being able to see the kite, but I can see now it's up in the air. Let's see if this angle is any different for us. Yeah, I wonder how long we can get... Uh, oh, no, this is... Uh, oh, uh, this double was it. time what there. Happened? Yeah, I don't know what happened there, but... Um, Cool. There's been uh, lots of drama in this first heat of the day. It's day one of the Lords of Tram GKA Big Air Kite World Cup. It's the ladies. It's the first heat of the day as uh, we're almost uh, almost up with this one. But there are plenty of talking points in that heat. Yeah, but that's what we like, Lewis. We like a good talking point, don't we? So it keeps us on our toes. It keeps us uh, excited for the next one because it's great to see that the women aren't afraid to push the limits. I'll tell you who else it keeps on their toes is the guy driving the jet ski out there. <laughs> like He would uh, have been straight tested. Right, well, and we do have a wonderful safety team uh, as part of all the events we have here. Of course, at the Lords of Tram in the past and also with the, with the GKA. So it's good to know. And as you can see now, the time is up. So... Time is up and we're getting ready for the next heat. Welcome back then, after that very dramatic first heat of the day. Wow. I hope you saw that. If you have just joined us here, it is day one of the Lords of Tram, GK Big Air Kite World Cup. I'm Lewis Crathen, and sitting next to me 
is Liam Jedge from the GKA. Who's up next, Liam? Uh, we've got a big fleet now. Zara Hugenrad coming out of the Netherlands. Justin Justine Avril from the local France. And then we've got Elsian Zijlistra. Hopefully I pronounced that one right from the Netherlands. So once again, Lewis, no heat is an easy heat as we enter round one. Heat number two for this first big air event of our calendar year. Yeah, and it's wonderful we can be here. And it seems like the starting place of the year always, uh, certainly for the Europeans coming down here in the very south of France. And those are your three riders within reach of driving down here, all three of these. Not sure about those two from the States in the last heat. They definitely flew in, but I'm sure some of these have driven down here. And if you've got red, white and blue colours and you're supporting this heat, you've got the right heat here. Two from the Netherlands, one from France. Highest ranked here is Zara Hugenrad, who finished second last year just pipped by Michele Sol to the Big Air World Championships in Tarifa. She'll be hoping to change that this year and hoping for a, a strong event here. But Justine Avril and uh, Elsie and Zelstra, they're, uh, they're no mugs either. Justine finishing fifth last year. She had a really good year as well. So it's going to be a good one. For sure it is, Lewis. For sure it's going to be a good one. And Zara is just definitely one of those riders similar to Natalie who likes to push the limits a little bit, push the boundaries and, you know, rides for core. And you can see as well at the moment that that core sort of looks to maybe they've brought out a, a little bit of a new weapon, but see how that one performs. But there we can see some of our riders just starting to initiate a few turns here as we're going to work on getting that graphic out of the way. Boom. Just like that. The money shot. Boom. That's what we're looking for. Our riders on your screen, front and center now. And 18 minutes is on the clock. Six trick attempts, three of which counts, and uh, 40 seconds per turn, Lewis. Yeah, and so if you just did miss that last heat, then uh, this timer then really isn't uh, as applicable to their moves as such. They will be getting 40 seconds each to perform their moves in single file, I guess is the best way to put it. But uh, that was Zara Hugenrad's move. So that timer should be running uh, in the top corner there, that 18 minutes just... Uh, it's more, it's more just for aesthetics, really, to kind of make it look like things are going. I'd prefer a green flag or something up there, but Sarah Hugenrad getting a 5.70 is the confirmation we need here that she has scored. This could be a big crash, and it is a big crash. Didn't quite get the hype for, to create the space for that mega loop board off there from Justin. No, definitely not there, not getting the height. And uh, we actually saw Justin there, the first rider to jump right foot forward. So you can jump both left foot forward and right foot forward at this spot, but we see... I would say the majority of the riders, you know, most of their jumps are left foot forward here. Um, but, you know, you have the option to go right, Lewis. So wh why is it do you think that maybe they, they, they are going left foot? Do you reckon there's a little gust, you know, a little pocket here where it's just that little bit, you know, a couple more knots, a little bit more, you know, juice in the tank? Yeah, definitely. That's a lovely boogie loop. Meanwhile, can she stick it? Oh, it just falls over the back, unfortunately, there for, I think that was Elsian. Yes. It's crashed there. But just to go back to that, Liam... I think it's uh, two things, actually. I think takeoff, you get a bit of a flatter takeoff as you get closer to that protected bit of water. You're not having to ride so further out. But also that little boost you get maybe of the of the, of the wind just on an uplift yeah. from that. I think riders will go massive also right foot forwards, but it depends on the angle, actually. Here you can clearly see, lovely angle here, of Elsian coming right at the beach, and that gives you a really nice cut. Little grab there as yeah, well, it looked was. like. That's pretty impressive. A bit dangly on the way down, but actually that was a big committed move. And that one from Justine, 7.2 metres for her. So we should see her scores coming in nicely. But the angle we can see today quite clearly is even on right foot forwards, they are cutting in towards the beach. Sometimes yeah. that ends up being a tap where you're out to see. Boogie loop. Nice landing as well from Elsian to get on the scores. Yeah, it's just these these riders now just doing their first few tricks, getting you know getting loose out there, loosey goosey as uh, as we would say. So a few replays just showing that last manoeuvre as that clock still yet to move, but I can we can guarantee that you know this heat is well and truly underway as our riders are now going through their second trick attempts and it's looking now like on your screen I'm just trying to identify this rider coming in on the right hand side but it's looking like Elsian or should I say Zara here on the core let's see what Zara's got oh I almost thought she was going to send that into another one then it's another big committed boogaloo and I think what happened there Liam why things got a bit confusing there is one of the riders actually went in front of her and she's preparing for a right foot forwards yeah. move now there is a kite hovering 
in uh, the corner pocket, let's say, and I'm expecting to see that. It's a north kite, uh, and I expect to see that driven down the middle of the window and accelerating off to the right-hand side, I guess aiming in a south to south westerly direction. Mm -hmm. We'll see how correct that is later when I have a look. <laughs> but meanwhile, this is Justine. Actually, she's still going to wait one more time as she waits for the traffic to pass. It's Justine Avril in the white rash vest going for a nice boogie loop of her own. These the girls are not getting as high as I think they can do just yet. 7.4 metres. They can push it over 10 metres, no problem. So I don't think it's really nuking wind strength just yet. We do know it's going to come up in the day. But it's a lovely technique there, just reaching down for the ball. But you can just see they're landing quite quickly after their their moves. As meanwhile, I can see out the corner of my eye that north kite has been driven down the middle of the window and it's accelerating right foot forwards. Here on your screen then is Elsian. And I don't think that's going to be a huge jump either. 4.3 metres for her. Only 14 metres distance from our surfer app there, Liam. That, that's a great metric to see how far someone's gone. It tells you, it kind of indicates how long they've been in the air for, how yep. much power they've had. It's a, If I could have one metric, I think that would be one be of them. Your choice with it. Yeah. Yeah, nice little golden nuggets that we're getting from the, from the surfer app. And uh, just looking a little bit on the forecast here as well, it looks like that sort of four, three, four o'clock time is where things really could start cranking up we need about roughly just over four hours of you know good solid conditions for the women to complete so that is the rough plan you know if conditions allow and it doesn't get too hectic and hairy out there we keep pushing and pushing with the women yeah and like when it says 30 knots here everyone knows it means 50 it's one of those sorts of places okay then on our screens it's Zara coming left foot forwards, last year's Vice World Champion. What's she got for us here as the camera pans away? Zoom, zooms away. Panning's left and right, I think, isn't it? Zooms, yeah, it doesn't zooms, fancy that left foot away. forwards. What's the word? That pulls away. That's the correct terminology. No, she fancies a right foot forwards here, Liam. And it looks like she's going to fancy a left foot forwards again. So this is what we were talking about with the riders one at a time getting their tricks. They can. And they've actually got time to do four attacks. 40 seconds. Yeah, they could, maybe even more. So she didn't fancy that, the first left foot forwards here, did Zara. And she just eventually finds the wind and goes for a big mega loop. 9.8 metres. So they're not flying above no. 10 metres. But as you said... It is going to really kick off today. I mean, and tomorrow, and the next day. I mean, the oh, forecast is... It's gone a bit for Tuesday for me now, so it's really just this Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And as I scroll down, I can see, yeah, it's going to... And interestingly, it's actually going to change. It's good. The angle is going to change. We talked about the angle that they can attack the beach is going to change, and it starts to come more from... Uh, it starts to come more from the east, which would change their angle. Trying to work out how that affects them is quite a lot to think about. But meanwhile, on the water now, sending a nice big jump with a white rash vest. It's yeah. Justine Avril with a kite loop with a delayed back roll. Yep. Nice landing from her. 7.4 metres on that one. Nice landing. But, you know, we keep referring to it, Lewis, with the women. They can definitely go that little bit higher, you know, for sure. But maybe that last sort of run from Zara was just an indicator of maybe what the wind's doing. Maybe it's getting a little bit sort of up and down. Maybe she was waiting for, you know, the right gust and maybe maybe it's a little, you know, just changing out there a little bit. But, you know, we keep referring. 40 seconds, you know, 80 minutes on the clock. So they've got time to play with. It's day one of the Lords of Tram GK Big Air Kite World Cup. Lots of action on the water so far. We've seen some two pretty epic crashes so far. And meanwhile, on your screen, a nice replay of a back roll with a mega loop from Elsian. On your screen then, coming left foot forwards right now then. Oh, that was a replay. That's what was on your screen. Now we're back. Back in order then, because the ladies do perform their moves in order their tricks are scored out of 10 of course and their three best tricks are on the screen right now winning by 0.44 at the moment is Zara Hugenrad who just almost looks like she slapped the board there she was angry she couldn't get the board off and takes a big backbreaker 
manages to control that kite, which takes a lot of energy. Let's take a look at this. Liam, what went wrong here? Oh, I mean, just keeping an edge nicely, getting what looked to be actually definitely wanting a little bit more height, going for the grab, but just trying to see, just <laughs> real I nut. think she tried to get the board off here, at least for a one-footer or not. This is going to be a wonderful a angle. This is going to be a wonderful angle to see. Did she try and get this full board off? There, yes, yeah, she did. She's she did stuck get, here yeah. now. The foot's not even in the board, and that is a horrible crash that she's managed to take as good as she can, really, trying to spread the load on the back, I guess. It's not a nice one to take, but sometimes that's the best way to, to minimise the, the feet and the impact on the feet is to try and spread them in front of you. So, so good how we get that other angle, Lewis, isn't it? Just, be, you know, we're questioning it from the angle originally. We're not quite sure if she actually even managed to get a foot off or if she if she did or not. And then that behind the angle just showing us exactly what went wrong. Yeah, I mean, we must be three or 400 metres from the action. You actually see our little, there's the judge's booth just there, the white one, and we're just behind that. So we're far away here, but this angle here is bringing us all closer to the action. But good to see Zara back up on her feet as well. You know, if that's what you want to see, you know, it's, some big crashes going to be coming our way. We can pretty much guarantee that. But, you know, we want these riders to be safe out there. And Cedric, our race director, in the in the riders' briefing this morning, made it very clear that, you know, we want to see you you riders push the limits. And we want to see you try and, you know, take big air, kite to that next level. But be safe at the same time. And uh, I wonder if we're actually, if that's going to go through our riders' minds or if they're just going to think, you know what, Cedric, I, I'm, that's going in what going in one ear, coming out the other. I'm going to push the boundaries and just uh, squeeze everything I can out of this comp. I, I did think that also when he was asking people, as we see another nice move landed there uh, from Elsian. Um, you know, asking riders not to push the limits too hard. I wondered how many of them switched off when that was said, but I guess he's got to say it. He is the, the safety guy. Very nice. Yeah. And inverted there. Yeah, he says it and he can tick it off the list, Lewis. It's, it's, it's done and dusted and he's told. So if anything does happen, then it's all covered for, for our race director. But we've got a really solid team out here, both safety and the judges and the crew, of, you know, the local crew and obviously the GKA guys. You know, real solid crew here. And this event is sure going to be one for the history books. I reckon it's going to be really, really good as soon as we see that win really start to come in as big late back there on a kite, kite loop. Yeah, I think that was... Uh uh, Zara there that was nice and that was st still not over 10 meters but she covered some good distance there and this one's getting really close actually this heat if we start to look at the scores and I think that's because the wind if anything has just come down slightly that's almost the highest they can go on these eights and yeah. I wonder if nines might have been better but it definitely looks like it's calmed down it sounds like it's calmed down in our live stream booth here as we get this lovely replay once more perfect takeoff pulling on that backhand and it's a real commitment thing you've got to throw that back roll Ruben always used to say that you've got to throw it you've really got to initiate it so there are the scores right now Justine Avril sneaking this one at the moment oh I wonder there what she was after on the water there from uh, Justine so this has really been turned upside down um, this heat as far as the scores uh, are showing me right now Elsie in with 15.5 in second, and Zara Hugenrad, last year's Vice World Champion, looks to me like she needs a trick in a different category here to score that third trick. But uh, she's looking good on 13 points for two tricks, though, it has to be said. Yeah, 6.77 or 6.27, you know, 13.04, she is chasing that that 15.54. So really not a lot of uh, gap, not, not a big gap to close, as we would say. So we'll be looking to just bump herself up a few more spots for sure. And the riders now, I know it still says 80 minutes on your screen, but we're just trying to keep you on your on your toes back at home. You know, how long's left? We are curious as well because currently we're trying to find that exactly. But I reckon we've probably got maybe about five minutes left, maybe just under five minutes, Lewis. Yeah, well, like we're saying, it's impossible to know how long time is because it's all down to when they perform their tricks. They're given 40 seconds each time, and that's a big screen on the beach saying your 40 seconds has started. But some of the riders will perform their tricks on five seconds into that, so we never actually know time wise how long it is but we do know as far as when their tricks will be formed and maybe we're having that moment now about the wind dropping we've discussed this about where the, when you don't have all the riders in the zone at the same time it can actually be unfair on one of the riders and right here we have that example here here is Elsian Zelstra who's in a really crucial time of this heat she's riding around here as I've got an electric shock on my Mac <laughs> for some reason but she is riding around here and she's indicating that she isn't powered. The wind has dropped. 
And this would be the first time. There'll be many of the guys also watching on here wondering what's happening. Even the board angle looks slightly different to me now. She's not cutting into the beach. She's actually underpowered enough that she's out to sea. So that's the best she can do, which is pretty good, actually. Even giving the camera guy a hard uh, run for his money to get that shot on there. So the wind did just drop a little bit, and that'll be interesting to see how the uh, race director views the rest of this heat, which must be coming to an end. It's quite funny as well, Lewis, because you know the wind's now dropped, and I'm looking out the window, and I'm seeing sevens sixes and fives and eight, so eights sevens and sixes so if they need their nines then they're gonna have to get busy and get pumping yeah and that's always something you've got as a race director to say well look you know perhaps if you were one rider what do you do though do you leave the heat there the wind is clearly picked up here now um and this looks like it's going to be zara hugenrad who's going oh. massive that's over 10 meters i think or on the money about 10 meters let's see what our surfer app data says 9.3 meters nearly but that's a decent height for a powered mega loop yeah you could see you know the amount of spray that was coming off that board zara really catching and holding an edge going in with plenty of power nice pop and as you said 9.3 so just shy of 10 and a nicely executed move there heat number two of the day then it is the Lords of Tram GK Big Air Kite World Cup. It's the first event of the year, and the wind now is rocking the live stream booth again. I think it's about 30 knots coming in here, so I've got to reserve some wind increments to pick up because it's going to get stronger as the weekend goes on. And that's a nice kite loop from Justine. 7.9 meters for her. And this heat really is going down to the wire here. But Zara's still out there, which is indicating to me that she's got another another go. You can see there, Justine, on your screen, going right foot forward. Lights going that right foot forward, going for that back roll kite loop, taking off a... Was that taken off a foot there, Lewis, after the loop? Not sure. We're going to have to look at the replay to, to see there. But that was really quite impressive. She's really come strong in this heat so far, which was so controlled by Justine, so by Zara. But I think Zara's got another move here. I don't think this is as clear as my scores are showing me. It's showing me that there's six tricks done by Zara, but actually I don't think that's the case. I think perhaps... She's got one more, though she is coming back to the beach now. So I think this is a potentially... We, there. Yeah. She was We've seen a little mix-up there, Lewis, as well. Second place. She's bumped herself up a little bit there. So a couple of scores just sort of altered. But I reckon maybe there's still a few scores to come. But we will wait and see. And obviously, as soon as we find out this news, we're going to let you guys and girls and everyone at home watching know exactly who goes through to the next rounds. Heat number three coming up shortly then, and I think we're about to be joined by Julian Quinn, who's uh, actually in the main event of the men as well. But let's take a look at who's up in heat number three. It will be Michaela Pilkington, another one from the USA. Well, they're really taking over. Johanna Distier and Francesca Miani, who's doing so well in the big air sport right now. Welcome, Julian. Julian, Huyen, you are in uh, in the booth with me, and um, thank you. It's nice to speak with you again. Nice, yeah. Um, I'm super stoked to be here uh, for the Lord of Tram GKA event. Um, yeah, stoked to be commentating again. Uh, some good souvenirs. And even more stoked to be riding in the event. Last time was so much more difficult for you. You'd had an injury. Life might have been so different from your perspective. But now, how do you feel knowing that you're going to be one of those people out there that we're talking about and the world can see uh, in the coming days? Yeah, it's gonna. It's it's a little bit more stressful, uh, but it's also exciting at the same time um, to be in for the GK. It's my first GK, so I'm I'm quite happy to be in the list. And yeah, we're gonna try to give a good show. 
And uh, let's talk about the conditions out there. I want you know, you know this area pretty much better than most people. Now, what's going on now? I think that is, is it. Am I right in saying the wind is coming up and coming down? Is it getting ready for a big nuke later? What do you think? Um, uh, to be honest, I don't really catch here that often, but I know there's always um, a little break at one one ish where the wind comes down a little bit. But usually after. After one, at like two or three, the wind picks up instantly. Yesterday we saw the wind was like 20 knots. No one wanted to go out and all of a sudden, in half an hour, everyone was throwing doubles and everything. So the wind can pick up, yeah, super quick, yeah. That's a great lesson for me as well. Never just uh, presume that somebody knows the spot inside out just because they speak the local language. So thanks for that reminder there, Julian. But um, I think... Just going back on what you were saying before we get into this next heat now, is definitely that you can see on your screens right there now, it looks pretty calm. It looks like a spring day out there as such. It's um, It can't be more than 20, 25 knots right now. So I would not have wanted to have been in this next heat out there on an 8 and a 7. Uh, the wind there is I can see the rough pattern on the water returning here in Bacares for the second edition of uh, the Lords of Tram. It's the GKA involved as well this time as well. It's actually the fifth Lords of Tram, but the second that we've done here in this wonderful arena is flying in on that Nash now with a nice mega loop to open up her account for this heat. Was a rider who I'll bring your name, bring her name very shortly. Is these uh, these live scores? We just don't have them on the screen right now. Maybe they're just warming up. But I've got a feeling just after seeing Francesca Maiani. I mean, I know her because she's from England. That's an easy one to work out. But such is the amount of riders that are entering this now, and not just the men. There's 24 men here, uh, 12 ladies. There's lots of them, and uh, they're pushing always for the fleet to change. So we are in heat number three between Michaela Pilkington, Johanna Distier and Francesca Miani. Francesca has impressed you or not, Julian, over the years? She's really stepped up from racing to, to big air. Yeah, for sure. She's always, I feel like she's always been into big air a little bit. But yeah, I think uh, she's also following the tour. And now we can see she's going to go for boogie loop. Nicely executed and nicely landed. And yeah, she's progressing a lot. She's been sending it in Cape Town. First woman to land a double. So that's quite sick, to be honest. And yeah, I think she is definitely going to kill it for this comp. Difficult heat then again. The wind's not just solidly nuking it right now. We've seen Francesca. That seemed a lot lower than it actually was. But here on this core kite... That's a nice takeoff, mega loop there. Not high, the height's just not there from these ladies at the moment with this this wind lull. So only 5.7 there from Johanna. Yeah, we can now see Michaela going for her next trick attempt on the Nash kite, and um, yeah, she's definitely gonna try send something big. And it's not just the view which is amazing out here, also the sound system which is conveniently placed right to the left hand side of our live stream booth, blasting away. Someone's just turned that down. Although that, oops, that I mean, it, okay, that's quite hard work for us in here, but they've got it down there. They just need to relocate that and get that going for the weekend because there's going to be a lot of people down here. Always makes a big difference to the event. Heat number three then of the day so far. We're expecting to get all the way through the ladies today, possibly even starting the men. There's a nice angle. We haven't seen that angle so far today. Who's up there? Where's he been? <laughs> That's one of the best angles we've got. Are we going back down to our classic angle? But I like that last angle. Yeah, for sure. And we can now see uh, Joanna going for a next trick. Um, I think she's not really feeling the wind, so she turned around. But they have only 40 seconds to jump, so she has to make a decision and she has to jump soon. This guy needs to get his focus sorted. He's on the bushes at the moment. He needs to turn that ring. He's got. I mean, it is a lovely bit of nature shot we've got for you there. But as far as I can see, yeah, he's 
focused on the wrong action or maybe he knew that at the moment there is a bit of a wind lull that would seem to feel like a bit of a broken record here. This wind, which we know is going to pick up today. We know it's coming here Saturday. Actually, the forecast did predict around between one and three, a bit of a drop. I've actually got as low as 16 and 17. Julian, you're not going to pull out a wind guru version that isn't a pro version are you because that will upset uh, me or have you got another um, no site? i was i was just gonna check the wing guru of uh this actual spot oh okay, no. okay. <laughs> he's got me no, no. he's got me uh, back there because i've got look at here so yeah yes. i'm just gonna check uh for <laughs> what a <Dos>. reply <laughs> Okay, all it's right. it's not a pro version, but it's the right spot. Okay, I think we, I think I'll, I'll take an even for you there. Perfect. Very good reply, but yeah, just down the road. I don't know why I just still got Lucat probably from the Mondial Devon, which is just down the road. But this spot south of Lucat, way more unique, and it looks to me like the wind has shifted more to the north here, um, Julian. Yeah, the wind is usually shifting when it's not properly. Uh, picked up, but when it picks up, it's usually the perfect direction. I think now the wind is just setting up a little bit. It's the beginning of the calm, beginning of the day. Um, yeah, everyone's warming up, and even the wind. So yeah, we're having a little break um, in the heat now, waiting for it to pick up a little bit. Um, but yeah, soaked. Next heat then, Michaela Pilkington, Johanna Distia, Francesca Miani. It's actually this heat, but I've got a feeling that this one is on uh, some sort of standby because of uh, the wind last. All three riders just sitting out there on the water at this moment in time. Yeah, for sure. Nice. Oh no, someone is going. There is somebody that's just moving their kite to decide and it will be next in line here. Michaela Pilkington, left foot forwards then, coming into the box. The flags just aren't blitzing through your screens there. That's not a bad mega loop. Still going to not be much more than around five meters. 5.4 meters there for Michaela. It's got a clear idea of what these riders are riding now. Here's the replay of that bang average kite loop, which I'm sure Michaela will also agree with for her abilities. And uh, this is interesting now. Here's a great shot for you. We've got all three riders in this heat now, just over by the trees over there. And just by their body language, just staying over there with the kites up in the sky, they're indicating to the judges, look, I don't want to go. I don't think it's windy enough for my trick there. And that now coming into the box actually now is uh, is Johanna this year. So she wants to be careful how close she gets in here riding too fast. But she, she can indicate to the judges that I'm not happy with this wind quality here. And this is what comes up when we have this one-by-one one rider system. Have you ever competed like this, Julian, where it's just one rider each? Uh, yeah, I did the previous edition of the Lord of Tram when it was still in Grisson. And yeah, he's always been doing that one-by-one uh, one format. I think it's very nice, but also all the pressure is on you. Everyone's watching you and only you. So yeah, but at least you have the spot for yourself, which never happens. And yeah, we have now Joanna. Yeah, the wind is not ready here yet. Yeah, and I wonder if Joanna wishes she never actually bothered uh, doing a move there. Here is the replay of that 0, 0.0 something move. I don't know. What was this? Just a jump as uh, she took off there. Yeah, didn't really go for that and committed with that. Has she used up a trick attempt there, though? I wonder. What do you think, Julian? Will that be a trick attempt? Um, I don't know. To be honest, I think the wind is a little bit down now. Um, you can you can see by the kite position and the body language that they they they're still here. Yeah, they're trying. It's a it's a world it's a world championship. Nice laid back here from Francesca. Yeah, and this will send a message to the judges. Look, she's happy to do the moves. Major moment on the beach right now, which I was wondering would this come about then as we see this replay. We talked very much about the black and yellow flag at the riders briefing and there's that hip hop song, the black and yellow one being played. I wonder if there was a black and yellow. You know that song? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. A good one for the black it, and yellow it's, flag. It's not yeah. bad. It's not bad at all. So apologies, we've got no scores going on at the moment, so we don't know what's going on with the scores, but we're pretty sure these riders are not being scored because the wind is very light. Although every time Francesca Mani comes in and throws a back roll with a delayed mega loop, she's pushing to be scored. Yeah, for sure. And it's it's also, we mustn't forget, it's a, it's a world tour. It's one of the... Um, one of the stops and they don't want to mess up the heat. They don't want to go just to go just to make points. It's, it's important. It's, uh, they can have a world, world title. Um, so yeah, I think that everyone's really conscious of the wind conditions and that they should, um, maybe wait a little bit or just, just wait for the wind. Um, but that they're still going, still going hard. So yeah. Nice edge into a back roll there, might be sent into another one there. Oh, it got thrown into two and a half in the end, uh, did Michaela Pilkington, but she really needed, it looked to me like she'd overdone that first back roll, voluntary or involuntary or not here. This back roll was quite a heavy one and the timing of the loop meant, that was a really nice move, not super high, but just doesn't land that, almost too many back rolls. Yeah, it was very fluid. Uh, we could see everyone, everything was going into one movement and yeah, that's what we're looking for fluidity style and yeah very nice nice shot there you can actually see the riders smiling at each other having a chat maybe it's a very different side of competing that we're seeing here they're just out on their own far away from everyone even though they're one of the biggest events in the world for kiteboarding here at the lords of tram it is the gka big air kite world cup here in france just nice little moment there uh, good camera work from our camera crew just zooming in as now on your screens then is johanna Distier who's preparing herself for this move. And she's headed out just a little bit further out this time, maybe to catch a bit more wind. Yeah, and we can see they're all looking to jump on the left side, but from riding here a couple of times, I know, yeah, but like that little channel, there's a little wind, a uh, little wind path. Um, yeah, sometimes it's stronger there. Uh, so it's always an option if you have your goes to the left to go to the right and to do a move to the right or so a trick. Um, but yeah, we have a little bit of a, a lower time now doing this GKA Lord of Tram. And yeah, quite happy to be here. It's way hotter than last year. Last year we were freezing, but this year it's way hotter and it's a little bit better. It feels like spring. Yeah, it definitely does feel like spring. It's um, so often freezing down here, but it's definitely more of a spring condition and I'm wondering if this heat has been postponed here we've got just the stats from the live uh, surfer update in the bottom left hand corner if they're anything to go by um, then yes uh, I think this heat has been postponed because we only had 3.9 meters yeah and we are now have Joanna going for a trick is she gonna have enough wind looks like she's going quite fast edging jump Kite loop, landed, yeah, 6.3 meters, um, yeah, the wind's not really here now, They're, all three of them are on sevens, um, I don't know if a kite swap to eight will be the, the option, I'm not too sure, um, but yeah. It's the Lords of Tram, it's the GKA Kite World Tour, it's Big Air and it's the first competition of the year for the twin tip riders here. We're under a bit of a wind delay here but we can guarantee you this wind will come up strong as the day goes on. Michaela Pilkington, Francesca Mani and Johanna Dissier are here in this third heat of the day and it's tricky conditions for them and there is a contra loop from... Francesca Miani, how high was that? 4.6, so not super high. And here's the replay of this contra loop. We should be pulling the left hand of the bar, and it's a front roll contra loop. Is that a difficult one, Julian? Um, I wouldn't say it's difficult, but it's a tricky one. Uh, you really have to get your timing right, uh, otherwise you kite end up in the wrong position, and then you're gonna fall quite hard. Um, I feel like the contra loop, but not technically difficult 
Um, but they are a little bit scary in the way that you just basically fall down instead of a loop where you actually go more forward. Um, we've seen, obviously, contra loops pulling a lot. But yeah, contra loops is, is quite recent. Uh, it's like, what, three, four years old. People have been doing contra loops like Yannick and all of them. And now we can see it's just a trick. It's crazy how the, the sport is evolving. And kite loop, one footer here from Michaela. Um, nicely done. Not a lot of heights, I think. The wind is a little bit playing with them now, um, but they're still they're still out and they're still in the conditions. So yeah. And more importantly, they are still competing. So we know we don't have the scores up there at the moment, but I can see on the back end here they are scoring, and we will be bringing you those scores just verbally for now. So I can tell you, Francesca Miani at the moment with the highest trick score at the moment with a 5.80 with a kite loop back roll. All the other scores have been very low and very much so because the wind has just died. So they are still pushing on with this heat right now. And it looks to me like the next rider that's about to form her move will be coming in left foot forwards here. And uh, they're all waiting on the left foot forward. So this is just waiting here just to see Just to see any form of indication that they're about to perform a move. Working her kite up and down then is Francesca Miani, but she's just second in this queue here. And now she gets to the front. Jostling position, I'd like to say, but I don't feel that they are. So the judges are giving them a lot of flexibility on the time here. And uh, it's just for the light wind here. So cool kite coming into the box then. So this must be Johanna Distier. Here she comes then. A bit of power now. She rides towards the camera, left foot forwards, takes off. Goes for a big boogie loop call. He had a hard time get capturing that one, didn't he? No, she had a hard time and so did the filmmaker. Yeah, for sure. That looked like a hard landing for sure. Uh, she's now going to get her board back. Um, yeah, but uh, they're supposed to have 40 seconds to jump. I think the judges are being a little flexible for them um, as the wind is quite tricky now. Um, so, yeah, I think they must take their time, just wait for the gusts and then... Just, just, just send it when the wind's here, because that's all big air is about. And yeah, sick, sick to see those chicks still competing, still here, not complaining, just doing their job and being here. So yeah, let go. All right then, coming in left foot forwards now. Then it's Francesca Miani boosting out the top there. It's a mega loop. Doesn't quite get the heights that she'd like either. So I don't think that's going to be one of her highest scorers. Yeah, for sure we can now. Uh, uh, we've seen Francesca going for a loop only four meter high. Um, that's the thing. The wind is not really here yet. Um, it was here this morning. We saw Natalie and we saw a couple of big tricks from the women's. Um, but unfortunately, it looks like we have a little bit of a of a downside now um, here at the Lord of Tram. I'm super stoked to be here and. Yeah. Et pour tous mes Français euh, qui m'écoutent, on est là, on parle un peu français aussi, hein, mais euh, vous comprenez bien qu'il y, y, y a plus de personnes qui parlent anglais. Mais euh, à ce moment-là, on est au Lord of Tram, au GK. Euh, on est au troisième hit de chez les filles. Et euh, on a Johanna, une Frenchie, qui, euh, qui est là pour faire, euh, pour faire son petit show. Donc on est content. Et, euh, et voilà, donc un, un big up à tous les Français et euh, on revient en français dans pas longtemps. Je ne comprends pas. <laughs> nice. Nice. That's, that's about the best way to react to hearing. Just coming back here after I've grabbed my apple to hear you in free flow with a nice bit of French. But uh, back to the action then here. A right foot forwards then. Um, that must be Michaela Pilkington. And we just got the end of that. Oh, she'd have done well to somehow nearly ridden through that. Just over rotated a bit on a boogie loop. But this is this is a real tense heat for these riders. They've just seen two heats before this where everything looked hunky-dory. And uh, I can see our current world champion on the beach just down here, Michaeli Sol, with a seven-meter kite. And I wonder if that's going to be enough. Like, you could be on eight and nine now, do you think, Julian? I think she can definitely hold the eight. Uh, no problem. Uh, she definitely has the 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 skill, uh, the skill to hold it. Uh, but also looping a seven is a little bit more safe. 
it turns quicker, uh, catch you earlier. So uh, yeah, sometimes when the wind's a little bit uh, lighter, you w you would rather have a real smaller kite if you really want to loop. Um, so yeah, I think that's why she's going on a seven now. Um, I think uh, we just had the info now that the heat might be cancelled and that they might start it again when the wind picks up. I uh. think that's the best thing they could have done here. I think that, that we ne it needed to be done. It was too up and down. You've got some riders that managed to hit them gusts already, but I think that was the right thing to do in this heat. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, I think even the three riders are going to be happy that the heat is cancelled and uh, wait for a little bit more wind. Uh, so they can send some uh, everything they've been ready for and been training for. Um, so yeah, very nice. There it is. It must be official because it's on our screens now, and that gives us a nice clear indication that that heat was cancelled. And I wonder if they go up to up to you know maybe the first or second round of those tricks. They already seem to be in place. Lords of Tram is more than a competition. I was ready to catch you in the spot. <laughs> From the beginning, the desire has been to bring together the best riders in the world to develop the big air kite discipline. To make an event, you need a lot of things. A team, organization, authorizations, budgets, and more. We are very grateful to our volunteers, our media team, and our judges. Everyone takes part in and is passionate about extreme sports. You will find them in the air or on the water. Partners are also a big part of the event. We are committed to creating meaningful links and building long-term relationships with them.
Wherever you go in the world, one airline goes further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents. L'économie. with heat number three uh, with the ladies Francesca Marni, Michaela Pilkington and Johanna Distier. Now that heat has been abandoned but I'm pretty sure they're going to start off again on their third um, third row of moves because there were two sets of tricks which were complete and uh, Francesca Maiani she was dominating that heat so far so we are competition on standby at this moment if you have just tuned in but the wind is just around the corner because this forecast is set to pick up all the way to 30 40 knots maybe even more and the evenings is really where the wind does pick up here in uh, Bacares Difficult position to be in then for the current Big Air World Champion, Michaeli Sol, who was just about to go out on the water before it drastically changed uh, to much more. It's almost gone dead west now, the wind. So the wind is really changing between north and west. It barely looks like it's 10 knots on the water. We had 35, about 30, 35 for a little bit today, and then it's just dropped. And everybody on the beach looks a bit confused by this now. Trying to see who I can see. Aaron Hadlow walking up and down the beach, who's uh, got a massive coat on in this boiling sun. As when the wind drops, it really does feel like spring. I can see uh, Jeremy Bolando out there as well. But difficult times for these riders here. You've got this rare chance to relax 
with almost no wind on the water. So very unexpected, this drop in the wind was expected. So competition on standby for now. We'll keep you updated, but I think we're going to be getting going here definitely in the next 15 minutes or more. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents.
Lords of Tram was the first real big air contest in France and started in 2019 in Goisson. After our third edition, the city of Barcares saw the potential of the event to develop their water sport appeal to the world. Barcares is a dynamic city, committed to events promoting their territory. Thanks to Barcares for their trust. de crise et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple... Lords of Tram was the first real big air contest in France and started in 2019 in Goisson. After our third edition, the city of Barcares saw the potential of the event to develop their water sport appeal to the world. Barcares is a dynamic city, committed to events promoting their territory. Thanks to Barcares for their trust.
L'économie, c'est comme le climat, grosse vague et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Pour attirer les nouveaux clients et les nouveaux talents. L'économie, c'est comme le climat, ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents. Lords of Tram was the first real big air contest in France and started in 2019 in Croissant. After our third edition, the city of Barcares saw the potential of the event to develop their water sport appeal to the world. Barcares is a dynamic city, committed to events promoting their territory. Thanks to Barcares for their trust.
L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents.
L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents. Lords of Tram was the first real big air contest in France and started in 2019 in Croissant. After our third edition, the city of Barcares saw the potential of the event to develop their water sport appeal to the world. Barcares is a dynamic city, committed to events promoting their territory. Thanks to Barcares for their trust. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer 
et d'attirer les nouveaux clients et les nouveaux talents. Lords of Tram was the first real big air contest in France and started in 2019 in Croissant. After our third edition, the city of Barcarès saw the potential of the event to develop their water sport appeal to the world. Barcarès is a dynamic city, committed to events promoting their territory. Thanks to Barcarès for their trust. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents.
Worlds of Tram was the first real big air contest in France and started in 2019 in Goisson. After our third edition, the city of Barcares saw the potential of the event to develop their water sport appeal to the world. Barcares is a dynamic city, committed to events promoting their territory. Thanks to Barcares for their trust. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents.
Welcome to the Lords of Tram. It's the GKA Big Air Kite World Cup here in Bacares. Sounds good. Ruben Lenten's just joined us in here. How are you doing, Ruben Lenten? I don't think we're live yet. <laughs> 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 Welcome back here then to the Lords of Tram at the GK Big Air Kite World Cup. We can see coming up in the next heat shortly, which was put on hold already. They've done a few moves already. Michaela Pilkington, Joanna Distier and Francesca Miani, who've had to really wait for a couple of hours now in their wetsuits down here. That's quite challenging to do that, but they're all ready to go and we're going to get the announcement very shortly. In fact, we're so confident they're going to get going with this, we decided to go live nice and early but joining me in the live stream booth we have none other than the famous Ruben Lenton how's it going Ruben oh so famous thank you Lewis That's all <laughs> so, right. so good to see you here in your element rocking out the beach here from the live streaming tower uh, it's, a, it's a great view uh, thanks for tuning in everyone um, you are on standby for some epic action the ladies are gonna get underway rerunning heat number three so uh, yeah looking forward to see uh, what it's going to be well yeah, it's been a difficult day with wind today and we've been talking about why this wind has been coming and going and it's just a bit warmer than usual here it's usually zero or five degrees and it's about 15 uh, it's definitely over 10 degrees and we feel like we feel like that's really played a part in the way the winds work today but it's strong now it's in now and we expect that ap flag to go down shortly I see a seven meter just went airborne and uh, she's just going to test the waters and to see how the power is working out. But it uh, looks a little bit gusty, but I think that is uh, yeah, the characteristics of this spot. 
but there is definitely some powerful gusts as well, so we should be able to see some good airtime coming up. Yes, yeah, so that was Michaela Bilkington, sorry, Pilkington, heading out there, right foot forwards. And she was just going past those trees. It's a bit gusty until you get to the main point here. But you can see here, eight meter and a six meter north kite in front of us. And generally, that's just really what big air kite is on these days. Eight meters, six meters, seven meters, eight meters. There were even five meter kites here yesterday. Yeah, these little kites are very playful, easier to, uh, to spin around. The really small kites, like a five meter, they're uh, quite nice to jump, but very hard to land. You have to be very precise with your steering. So it's going to be uh, yeah, very interesting to see what kind of equipment choices uh, we're going to see. Of course, it's uh, also dependent on the wind, how strong it will get. I think we're in for a treat and uh, the wind is picking up, so it's going to be beautiful. Uh, Ruben, tell me, what do you think about the way that Big Air's gone now? I mean, we never would have imagined that you'd have seen girls and guys turning up with five meter kites you know like the way that, that the big airs evolved with these double loops and the speed of the kites like this is this is exciting though no? yeah 100 percent. i mean the development and the progression that we're seeing now and uh, all the young guys pulling some epic moves from s loops double mega loops and uh yeah even double contra loops now combined with four rotations and board offs and board flips it's absolutely mind-blowing to see sometimes covering even 150 meters of distance and jumping like close to 30 meters high and yeah it's just absolutely incredible to see everybody pushing it and uh, also the ladies have definitely been getting more and more comfortable in the yeah the strong conditions it uh, takes some time to score a lot of strong wind days, but everybody's so focused on bigger now that uh, yeah, the progression is just uh, right here, right now. Do you know there was a bloke here yesterday that from your country that got 35 meters in the sky, almost the world record? Is that a Dutchman Jamie Overbeek? Or Overbeek, what? yeah, he was out there as usual, going absolutely massive. It was pretty impressive. Current world record holder at uh, 35.4, I think, on the Wu. And, uh, yeah, absolutely incredible how he gets so high off the flat water. And, uh, yeah, see him push all the moves. So I think we're going to see an increase in height. And uh, yeah, the guys keep adding style and tricks to this. So uh, it's an interesting time for big air kite surfing. So thanks for tuning in. We will get on the way very soon with uh, heat number three of the ladies. And uh, yeah, a bit in the dark here again as uh, someone goes for a big... I can see the AP flag on the beach. Um, I'm not sure what you can see right now. Maybe you see a black screen just like me. But if you do, you can still hear my voice. Uh, we're going to get through that. We're going to work through this. That's what as life's about. As we always do. Some slight technical issues, but uh, we're here to solve them. The team is working on it, so definitely stay tuned. But we'll talk you through it. And I can see right now on the water, Francesca Miani looks super powered now on her F1 kite. It's a yellow flag on the water, which has been raised nice and strong. I could have done with seeing that earlier, actually. I didn't know what was going on, but all I had to do was just bend my head around a little bit further as I look out to the west of those big mountains in the background. This lovely backdrop here in Bacares. It really is a wild place and it uh, looks like everyone's woken up now 331 the crowd are just turning up down the beach now was there was there a party last night maybe i just rolled in i don't have anything to do with that lewis but uh yeah this spot does look very interesting and uh i also see i've seen some videos of uh, of riders they do a massive jump and then after they completed their trick they're still like 10 meters up in the air and they get their second second loft of wind and yeah you just see them adding some more rotations and uh, and getting very creative with that second second lift so uh once more i'm sorry if you can't see anything i'd like to almost say neither can i but i can because i can look out the window so i can see out the window there's some action going on here and the crowd are definitely uh, gravitating down towards the beach and francesca miani is coming flying into the beach now she's definitely warming up and she's going pretty big yeah the more wind these riders can uh, can handle the bigger they can go so it's going to be very interesting to uh, to see who comes out on top in this heat and it's not all about having a massive big kite it's about what you do with it that they say is important exactly the moves matter and also the landing like if you don't land it you won't get scored so it's going to be interesting who can really stick it in these uh, yeah, challenging, strong, gusty conditions and really outperform the rest. All right. Looks like Francesca Miani then is uh, coming left foot forwards into the box. 
and turning around. Uh, she's not going to perform this move right now. It's the first round of the Lords of Tram. Sorry, the first round of the GK Big Air Kite World Cup here at the Lords of Tram. And uh, this year, interestingly, there won't just be a once-off Big Air World Championships because this event's going to count towards that as well. It won't be a winner-takes-all in Tarifa. Yeah, this year we see a lot of uh, big air kite surfing events popping up and uh, everybody's hungry for the world title. So they're going to calm down and uh, throw it, give it all their gut for uh, for coming out on top and take home the world world title this year. It's a strong field of uh, competitors from all over the world and it's uh, great to be a part of and great to see unfold in front of our eyes. Apologies for the technical difficulties we're having right now. Oh, the screen's popped back on here so we can uh, deliver some information to you. We're, uh, sounds like, looks like a dodgy cable, you know, you get dodgy cable sometimes. That's so back again. So um, I think that's just on our display here. So uh, we think you're okay at, back at home. So uh, we're going to talk to you about what we can see here in and outside the window. And what we can see right now is riders uh, jumping near and around the 9 to 10 meters mark again. So it's not absolutely ballistic out there. It's really playing silly buggers this wind today. And it's switching from a northern. As we face south from our window out here, the wind is switching between sort of a northerly and a westerly or something in between. Right now, looks about bang in the middle. But coming in left foot forwards now, Oh, just wiping out on that kite loop double back roll, not uh, not keeping it together. You saw that she was struggling uh, a little bit to find the right speed and the right wind, but uh, yeah, that's you have to to find it for the right attempt. Unfortunately, I think that's going to score as a zero that one, Ruben. She sort of had the technique, but it didn't quite work out for her. So Francesca Miani from the UK is currently in the lead. And our cable assistant here looks like he's just going to hold the cable in the whole time. It's Liam Dredge. Guess what he does everything? Cable assistant as well as part of his <laughs> <laughs> part of his duty. You can't stand there all day, Liam, can you? Like, <laughs> Surely you can get like an AI or something to, to do that role. The cable park is just to our left, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice shot here then. Just actually is quite a flat spot. It's not the choppiest. It's certainly the closer you can get to the sandbar. But in this case here, it's Johanna Distier. He's riding left foot forwards that's choosing to get nice and close. A seven-meter core kite here. What's she got for us, Ruben? A nice takeoff. Oh, and there goes a boogie loop. Oh, sticking it clean and keeping it together. Very nice. Cool. For a second there, Ruben, I thought she was going to carry on rotating to a backside block side. It was really trying to pull her, but she fought that really well. And perhaps that's the move she needs to try and take her out of this third place here. We've joined this third heat then a couple of moves into it as it was put on hold earlier due to the wind dying. But here we are then. A big welcome to you. It is the women's round number one here. We haven't run the men yet at all. It's heat number three. And it's the Lords of Tram GK Big Air Kite World Cup. I'm Lewis Crathen and standing next to me is Ruben Lenton and things are about to get going here. As this wind typically, Ruben, comes up in the afternoon and the evenings, I'm sure you know. So we're about to see some action time here. So this lady here needs no introduction. Francesca Miani. In she comes, Ruben. Nice takeoff. Uh, big loop. Keeping it together and sticking it clean. That's good. Not too much variety on there, not too much technicality, just a straight loop. Let's see what the judges think about that. Whopping in there with a big straighty. First one really for a while in this heat to go over 10 meters. 11.6 meters here from our surfer, 
app data, which all the riders uh, have got a phone on them, and it's their choice. They don't have to. No one's forcing them to take this thing out here. And the surfer app giving us this lovely data. Over 50 meters she traveled through the air, and importantly for me, she was actually in the air over five seconds, which is a good sign uh, of a nice big mega loop. So Francesca is looking like she's going to be hard to, to beat here. Yeah, she's well in the lead with some good scores on the board already. Michaela also with a nice trade loop and a nice grab there, sticking it clean, a little bit less high than the previous one that we saw. Yeah, Michaela Pilkington looking to try and upgrade one of her moves here. They can't do all the same moves, as we know, Ruben. They're getting scored for their three best tricks out of ten. And there you can clearly see Francesca is getting higher scores up in the five points and above range. So it's hard to get up near the tens when the wind isn't totally, totally nuking. They have to leave some space, some judges. But what can Johanna Distier do here? I think she's going to come back right foot forwards now as we get this lovely shot of the crowd Coming down to the action, the sun's gone in for a bit now. Aaron Hadlow complaining of a bake-out down there earlier. It was really warm with the sun, but it's now... Whoa, whoa, look at that power of that yank of that kite, Ruben. What happened there? What a yank, yes. She just caught a gust uh, mid-loop and uh, just got uh, thrown off balance there. Couldn't keep it together and unfortunately uh, crashed on the landing. But uh, it's my first time here on this spot with some wind. And uh, yeah, it looks uh, pretty proper. And it's uh, fun to see how all the riders have their own strategy of uh, yeah, getting their attempt and their first, yeah, their highest scoring tricks on the board. A New York Yankee there from <laughs> Johanna Distier, which isn't going to score massively for her. Ruben, you mentioned that you've been here before when there wasn't wind. I'm interested. What were you doing here? I was on a road trip just uh, cruising down the coast uh, in, our, in the camper van. And uh, yeah, we came by here, but there was no wind. So we just checked it out. Big, nice. nice bill on the beach and um, yeah good times beautiful spot but good to be back with some wind nice on that sort of trip where you go looking for no wind at spots i know those ones here we go oh, this is a lady that's finding the wind wonderfully in this heat francesca mani looks up for this one here she's got the italian surname but she flies under the english flag she very much is a brit and we're very proud of her back at home i think she's taken this heat no problem Oh, look at that speed of the jet skis on there. Well, speeder, she get him, get him a fine. Well, his first fine. He had a clean license. I was, spoke to him this morning down on the beach. Of course, more and more of the crowd now starting to turn up down here. Oh, God, they just have a good timing here. 341. Maybe they just know when it's windy, like those people in Tarifa. They're all crazy down there in Tarifa, aren't they? The wind really starts to mess with you if it's so windy for so long, but... Our lovely public coming down to the beach now, but flying into the zone here now. Michaela Pilkington, can she upgrade a 2.87, which is her third best trick score? Here she goes. Nice, nice. takeoff. And the loop, can she control the landing? Maybe yeah. to blind. You saw her landing tilt first, absorbing the power from the impact, and uh, yeah, dealing with that nicely. Yeah, she'd be happy for that. It looks to me like she's just trying to solidify that second place in this heat. Yeah, you see Francesca is, uh, is well ahead here, just getting some more height and more uh, technicality in her tricks. So the judges are loving that. And uh, I think a good strategy to go for is uh, trying to get three good scores on the board and then trying to increase the technicality in the height. But it is uh, yeah, it's very hard to stick to that strategy with such a gust. Here you see her time riding on the rail. She's probably going to turn around. Oh no, she does the back roll, kite loop. Yeah, that was nice. Very well controlled then for Johanna Distier there. Just really was concentrating on that nice takeoff. That was where the focus point was there. Not super fast and aggressive. That back roll, you have to get so right or it ends up, where, as so many of you know, I'm sure, into the back roll one and a half where you get the big back break. We've all been there at some point in our kiteboarding career. So you have to control that, that back roll, which she's done there. Is that enough to push her into second? Yes, it is, Ruben. Oh, wow, she got that. But yeah, with this uh, kite loop back roll, you have to initiate that back roll from the start. And if your timing is off, you can get yeah pulled out of balance and go for a nice wipeout or get thrown into another rotation or a half, ending in a nice crash. So uh, 
yeah, definitely good to see the girls stepping it up with some nice rotations in the kite loop as well. Here comes your heat leader then in total control of this heat. It's usually six tricks, but they've been given seven and three of their best seven will count due to their tough deal later. Wow, that's lovely, Ruben. Talk me through this. Wow, that was a nice double back roll kite loop. So she initiated that first back roll right from the start. Then she looped that kite and at the same time she did her second back roll. Very well controlled, nicely styled out. And uh, I think she's going to get some proper points for that. Looks a bit closer uh, than one might have presumed this heat so far. There's um, pretty much 1.9 separating Johanna versus Francesca. So this one got quite close down there. And that must have been due to Johanna's 6.67 that she managed to, to put on the score then. On your screens right now is Michaela Pilkington. One feels she needs a biggie, Ruben, to get into this. Trying to build up that speed. Riding on the back foot, on the rail, letting the kite climb. Or is she going to turn around? No, she's going to take off in the corner. It looks like the sweet spot. Also going for the double back row kite loop. And that's what we we're talking about. That over rotate. Because of the yank of the loop, she couldn't keep it together. And uh, yeah, nice wipeout as a result. Yeah, unfortunate that for Michaela. She looked pretty good. The timing of that delayed back roll was pretty good there. But as we saw, she got thrown into that backside block side position. It, it's pretty much only, only one or two people in the world can ride out of that. That's a tough position to go in backwards on. Um, I think Az has got comfortable with that Liam. position. Liam, yeah, yeah, springs to mind, was able to ride blind. So famously, uh, king of the air that time with incredible uh, cat-like reactions to spin around. It is the most... Uh, feared position for any rider to land in whereas frontwards block side at least you see it come in heel side block side devastating on the back end anyway back to johanna this year can she make a push for the top position in this heat it would really help for her progress up the ladder everyone wants to win that first heat. What can she do here? She's got 3.57 on the board. Uh, that's what she's going to be looking. And that was just a straight kite loop, actually. Jumping to the other side. Oh, nice kite loop with a nose grab. That's what she's tried to re to replace there, big time. So it looks like our cable guy must be running out of energy here. He's kept that power cable in our screen here for about 30 seconds. Uh, sorry, 30, 30 minutes, I'd say. 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds wouldn't be a very um, pleasurable experience for that TV screen, but 30 minutes is a good effort. Slotting and riding. And it's been great for us because we've got all the action here. We've got outside the screen. And to remind you then, so the timer really is there just to, you know, just to be there. It's actually not timed this. All the riders getting 40 seconds to perform their move and they're taking it in, in turns. But look how powered she is here, Francesca Maini. Can she put this beyond doubt now well just losing her edge there and uh, couldn't go for a proper takeoff so does Will this that count i was or just going to ask you I lewis don't i don't think so i don't think she left the water so, so so that's what i was saying so ignore that 18 minute timer on the top up there there is a timer on the beach here which is saying to her she's got about 40 seconds she must be near the end of it one second left to oh. take off and that foot strap looked like it caused her a problem uh, in the first place and this uh, this could be really interesting then if uh, Johanna Dissier can uh, just find something extra than a 4.70 let's take a look what she actually has there. the wind is totally picking up now sand is going everywhere yeah we're definitely going to see an increase in height and uh, and power so get ready to see the ladies fly it's just the kite loop category then that Johanna Dissier has scored her lowest scoring uh, move of the three that are counted it's a 4.70, so I'm expecting her to come in and maybe go right for forwards, although that may well be the end of this heat, actually. They may well have all performed their moves, yeah, which I think they have. It's heat over, and uh, Francesco Mani is going to take that one, Ruben. So seven attempts? It was Yes, it was originally six, but they gave the girls seven, an extra one there, due to the difficulties with their heat earlier on was a fair way to do it, actually. I think that was very clever of head judge Mallory that... Exactly. Be, but, but before you said 10 attempts, where did that come from? No, I don't think I ever said that. Oh, okay. Sorry. No. I'll, I'll watch it back tomorrow, mate. 
It's Lewis Crathen here and Ruben Lenton is joining me in the live stream booth. It's Lords of Tram. It's the GKA Big Air Kite World Cup. It's the first stop of the year. We can say that now. There isn't just one event of Big Air. This is the first stop. Did you hear earlier, Ruben, perhaps? Maybe you didn't hear this. There may be a third one. It's becoming a bit of a tour, this big air Ooh. thing now. Ooh, it's so exciting to see all the action burst loose and everybody focusing on it. And each event, we just see the level increase. And the, these events are actually run with a waiting period. And this is the first day of the waiting period. And Barcares is delivering already some great conditions. I saw the forecast pop up and uh, I just knew that I needed to, uh, to come down. Flew to Barcelona, drove up to Barcares two and a half hours. And now here on the spot looking at all this incredible action here at the GKA World Tour. And uh, yeah, stoked to be here, Lewis. Yeah, I, I'm stoked too, Ruben. And it's been a bit of an interesting start to the day with the wind dropping and coming back up. There is your big air world champion, though, and freestyle world champion and probably loads of other things world champion. That is Michaeli Sol, who was just on your screen there, who was um, heading out here hoping to defend her championship this year in big air freestyle and all the other disciplines she might do in everything else in life she's a real champion but this wind Ruben is now picking up this guy's the one that needs to get his focus sorted for me he's still on the trees yeah her skills and uh, and talent are uh, unparalleled from uh, the windy Brazil always uh, training on her home stomping grounds there and uh, progressing every session uh, Michele Sol is definitely one to look out for and uh, title defender so expect a lot of big tricks from her was she in the heat with? Uh, let's take a look. That's a very good question. She's in the heat with two other ladies. Yeah, that's a good start. What there. a surprise. Yeah, you never know these days. <laughs> but yeah, the, the wind is still picking up. What is uh, Michaeli riding? Six? Is she on the six meter? The wide caps are done. <laughs> here we go. Here's the... Here is the heat in front of us. Michaeli Sol from the USA. Come on. She's from Brazil anyway. They've just got rid Whoa. straight of that. Wow. And there she goes. From space, actually. Look at that for a start. That, I think that's a six-meter dice that she's on. She's reading. How far has she gone there, Ruben? Michaeli Sol. It says 54 meters. I thought it was a lot further than it, that. And I thought it was way higher than that, but it was uh, 12 meters. The screen is actually working without holding the cable in it. So that's a bonus on this side. That's a great job from Liam there. That's an hour's job. He's been holding this cable and fighting to stick the power cable into the back of the TV and keep it stuck in there, you know. It's been wanting to come out, but it's in there now for good. And we got the real action coming in now. Like, this is really picking up the wind now. If I had to guess, I'd say that's at least 35 knots minimum. And this is a lady you want to keep checks on. It's Anjali Bua. Another big air trooper. Angie has been part of... Uh, Big Air uh, for, for a decade, I'd say. She's always been the one pushing it, even riding in the big competitions against the guys and kicking some ass. So always good to see her performing. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to see her step it up throughout this heat. Cute. Up next, we got the Lana Hermann with her attempt. So they get seven attempts, and uh, the three highest scoring tricks will count. Is there a variety score, Lewis? There is not a variety score, which is wonderful. We don't have to get confused. And this format really lending itself to just getting straight on with it with these three big tricks. 8.03 coming in then from Mika Sol. That is the highest score of the year in any big big air twin tip event by the GKA. Wow, that's a, a good score to put on the board as a first move. I'll take that any day. Yeah, that's a good stat, that. This is the first event, though. And now it's really pumping here now. Sand is going flying all over the beach. Someone just got slammed onto the water trying to get out on a board. This is picking up extreme now. This is over 40 knots to me. And uh, where has this come from? Really, where has this come from? This was uh, messing around with us earlier. The temperature just wasn't right. She's just getting oh. absolutely lit out to the water there. <laughs> on a, what, on a five? This is, um, this could get serious. Is that Lana? Or who is this? Is she in this heat? Someone not even in this heat. Oh, wow. Yeah, the gust can just come through like that. The sand is flying. The white caps are absolutely going crazy. And uh, the ladies will have to hold on to all the power the kite is producing. It's always better to keep the kite really low so you have a lot of control and weight on the board instead of putting the kite high and then being very light on the board and actually being uh, dragged after the kite.
we're uh, here. Right, we're this, sorry to interrupt you, Ruben. With this real interesting stage here in a heat like this, where the wind is, there's no other way to put it lightly, it's gone berserk mm -hmm. here, as Michaeli Soul just opting for a big boost. It got that windy there that our race director here would have been thinking, you know, is it right that I keep this heat going so far? This has picked up well over 40 knots. Riders might need to change their, their kites down. And Michele Sol, they're just going from, bear this in mind, 8.03 to a 0 0.80, you know. She had to just go for a big boost there um, because the wind just really was violent. I mean, one of the riders barely just got off the beach in front of us, Ruben, and lost her board 10 metres from the beach. That's how windy that just got. It's wild. This part is definitely like uh, the Wild West, man, or the Wild South, as you call it. She, uh, NG riding, thinks she's going to perform a trick going left, so she's just uh, going to turn around. These girls will be uh, performing tricks going to the right and to the left, and um, I'm curious to see who is going to pull off the biggest jump in this heat with the biggest loop. Because Big Air is basically mostly all about kite loops, right? Well, it depends who you ask. I guess. It's, I'm uh, asking I you, Lewis. If that's okay. You don't ask anyone. You just don't, <laughs> you just don't ask anyone. <laughs> just keep it loopy. Yeah, yeah well. It would be, so, sorry again to interrupt you, Ruben. I think the answer to that is it would take something phenomenal to win this competition with just big air without a kite loop. But it probably is possible. Oh, that's a, that's a challenge there. But yeah, the kite loop is definitely one of the most exciting tricks in kiteboarding. And there we see Angie going with a massive kite loop, laid back, getting very inverted, but checking that landing there. So there will be some points deducted, but she was going massive, nice power, good rotation. I wonder if we're going to get a replay on this one. Because um, I re really... No, we're not. That wasn't a, a question. It was really, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the director just says, no, we're not getting a replay. We can't, we can't even see it on the screen. But really inverted then. That was quite a unique a unique technique. I'm not sure those two words should go one after the other. A unique technique from Angelie Bouard then. That she goes very inverted, almost backside, blockside in the air, looped it, and then went for her delayed back roll so here we are then it's Lana Herman on the what is she flying out there she's flying a slingshot nice shot here of her that's a nice mega loop from her can she stick it oh she doesn't she ended up again trying to get on the edge a bit too quick for me there Ruben and actually forcing a front side block side here's the replay on that like nice takeoff loop Oh, just couldn't keep her balance uh, to ride out of that clean and uh, fell off her board. So that means a zero, zero score. Ruben, you know what it's like to score a zero. How does it feel? It feels amazing when you just bomb out. <laughs> now, in a heat, you definitely don't want to score a zero. It can definitely be very frustrating because you just want to land your best tricks and, and win the heat. So, uh, yeah, whenever you keep crashing, you just want to do better and better, and you have to keep your head cool. Here goes Michaeli Sol then, really testing the filmmaker there. Well, that's big. Whoa. Massive mega loop with a bar spin, Ruben, a move that you brought into the sport. You think that's going to score well? Nice. Yeah, I mean, there was no rotation in there, but the height was there. Definitely a lot of distance covered, and she, uh, she did the bar spin, which is definitely uh, upping it. She was traveling 88 meters far and then being in the air for 7.7 .7 seconds. So there was plenty of airtime there for Mika. Let's see what the judges think about that. Yeah, lovely to get that data from the Surfer app that all riders are carrying on phones voluntarily. Ruben, they're not forced to go out there with this. They That's like new. It. Yeah, well, <laughs> what were you forced to go out there with? Mother Nature, whenever she's blowing, I need to get out there. When the wind is pumping, my heart starts pumping faster and you just have to, to ride hard and fly high. That's what these riders are doing, feeling Mother Nature, seeing where the gust is at. It seems like the sweet spot is right in the corner there. It's nice to take off on the flat water, but you still have to time that gust and really kick on that back leg off the edge. And here you see Angie fly huge with that mega loop laid back row again. And this time she sticks it clean. She laid that down absolutely perfectly there. We're going to get a lovely replay. And look at this unique technique here. She gets first really in this upside down position that's really well controlled i think that's going to score high into the high sixes maybe even reach the the low sevens let's see but she's going to have to score right yeah 7.67 actually a medium 
Seven for her. They like that, the judges. The kite had a good position. She needs these scores now to maybe answer back to, to Mika, who's starting to find her groove. Definitely. She was getting very well inverted there. And uh, I think what will score better is if she starts doing multiple rotations, which definitely ups the risk. And, uh, yeah, you need to be feeling very confident on the water to pull such a trick. So let's see if they are going to get more confident throughout the heat because that's what uh, normally happens. And then uh, they will start pushing it. You've just joined us in the last heat of round one. It's the ladies here we're starting off with. It's the Lords of Tram. It is the GKA Big Air Kite World Cup here in France starting off the year. And we've had a day of uh, a tough day. But now we feel very much that we're in our element now. The wind has arrived. And things just seem to work so much easier, Ruben. I can see the it's almost it's actually quiet in our live stream booth for the first time today. There's been all people running around and fixing things and doing things, but now we can just focus on the action. And it's Lara Herman who's really got to open her account here. That's a big mega loop, Ruben. Can she stick it? I think she's got it. Oh, just a nice big butt check on there. Uh, too much speed and uh, just couldn't hold it together. But it was a nice straight loop, nice distance covered. Yeah, and I'm going to talk you through this one now then. She gets really good height on takeoff here. It's actually over 10 meters on the data that I can see. But I think she needs to ride this a bit more downwind, point that board heavily downwind and just take that energy a bit further. She's quite keen to get on the edge there, which is possible to do sometimes. But in, in that case, unfortunately, she couldn't get on it. But she got rewarded with a, a 2.53. Yeah, after the, the kite loop, it's uh, very important to to manage your kite at the right time, at the right speed, the right angle, so that you can come in for a clean landing. And this was a very hard landing for Mika, but she was taking it. Was that a boogie loop? I couldn't quite see it. I saw two rotations and a loop. Okay, so has Angie. I mean, this really falls into Angie's uh, skill set to me. The more this wind picks up, I think she's going to be the one in a home country now that knows this spot so well is just going to get into this thing and be up for it. So she's currently in second to Mika, but she hasn't really got uh, two big moves on the cards. It's their three best tricks that are counting here. And uh, in she comes then. Anjali, Bulua, take off. That's massive. That's a double back roll mega loop. This one's big room. If she can oh, stick this, it's in the nines yes. for me. Yes. Oh, oh don't off. blow out. The board might be broken. Oh, wow. So unfortunate, but she was pushing it with a double rotation here. And uh, she was absolutely going massive. Nice takeoff with that back roll, pulling the second rotation during the loop. And then just like couldn't keep it together on. Oh, the kite just didn't catch her on time. And uh, the board just blew away. It did. 13.7 meters, 70 meters distance and over six seconds in the air with our surfer app data. That was a biggie, Ruben. I think that would have scored very, very high. That looked exactly what the judges uh, have been asking for. Commitment, kite angle, extremity. That was big from her. So can Angeli maybe land a couple more of these big ones? I wonder how many attempts she's got left. She's only got three trick scores counting. But back to, to Lana here, who needs something. Exactly. Looking for the gust. Riding a little bit slow, not too much speed. And then going for the boogie loop, holding back a little bit, but putting a... Oh, no, just over-rotating there and even a cartwheel without the board. She didn't need that extra gust at the end. I, I like the position that she found herself in here, Ruben. I thought this was great technique. Really came around nicely. I like that toe side block position it helps you stop over rotating but i don't know what happened at the end there but she got uh, she got a new york yankee straight out of it and ended up going around another 360 degrees or more so unfortunately lana couldn't land that but what i like about that she wasn't scared to throw that move down in more than 35 knots out there now maybe even 40 she completely committed to that that was nice to see she did commit i found her riding a little bit slow into it though so just being a little bit careful there uh, and also what the riders do to stop their rotation is actually to try and make yourself small to rotate, but then you can actually stretch out your legs to stop your rotation. I think she, she was stretched out a bit too early there and uh, just over-rotated. Mika not really feeling it there. She's not really in the zone so much there. She's got a uh, score of 18 so far as her total score. That will be her fifth trick. So she's going to have one more after this. Now, Ruben, we have to go back to what you were saying about increasing your speed if you stay tucked and opening out. 
And straight away, my mind just thinks of a squirrel falling through the air, small, and then it opens itself out to try and slow down. Am I? You and right you and your squirrels, but yeah, that's what they do, man. Uh, in order to rotate, you also see the riders. They use their head. As soon as you spin your head and you keep looking, your body will follow. So that's how they rotate. If they want to speed up, they're actually making themselves smaller to spin faster, and then they extend their body to just stop the rotation and it time that landing. Just like a diver on a springboard, really. That's probably a better analogy, actually, than a, no, I like than a squirrel. squirrel. You like this? You uh, can yeah. imagine it. Can't, you know, when they open up and they slow themselves down. That that drag is actually what would slow your so your rotation down. Um, but back to the action anyway here. We've got a very interesting last heat of round one, heat number four. It's your current big air world champion, Michaeli Sol, who is, I think, uh, Angeli Boulois is going to... Is going to deal with this here now. Angeli Boulard, can she stick this move? She's got one big score on there so far. She's got two attempts left, so she's got to land this move. Wow. Oh, oh massive. baby. Oh, wow. Well, please land this. Yes, she's got it. Oh, no. Again, wiping out on that landing. Ah, Devastating there. She was giving it her all in this jump. Taking off, going absolutely massive. Look at this. <laughs> this is so oh, big. Oh, 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 oh. This would have been a big score. I can't wait to see our data coming through. What just happened? She just, oh, just got a bit unlucky on the landing. Too there. much speed. Oh, what a bummer there for Angie. But she was not holding back. She's feeling confident. And hopefully she gets it together in the next attempt. 90 meters she traveled there, Ruben. I mean, she's up in the nines here if she can stick some of this stuff. She's got to collect herself now. And stay calm, you know. Like, if she could land what, that move again and Michaeli doesn't improve her score, she could still take this heat. She just needs less than a... Well, How just, many attempts does she have left? She's got one left, so she ah. basically needs a, a 9.5, I think, to equal her. 9.5 will take her through. So here goes Lana Hermann riding. Is she going to go for that boogie loop again, which is a kite loop with a front roll? I think she's going to... Oh, no, just a straight kite loop. And just getting the scores on the board. And I think that's very important. Like, if you look at Angie's score, she just has a, a score uh, of one on there. So if you first land three tricks, that you have decent three decent scoring tricks on the board, that totally makes sense. And then start pushing it. But, uh, yeah, it is very challenging conditions with the chop, with the gusts. And uh, we are seeing the best riders in the world take it to the skies. So I hope you're tuned in well. I hope you're feeling good and enjoying the show here. Can she take this out of reach then, Michaeli? At the moment, there's still a chance that Angeli could oust her. But if Michaeli Sol could upgrade this 4.83 to around a 4.9, she would take it out of reach. I think if she lands this, it's out of reach, Ruben. Oh, boogie loop with an added rotation. Landed, stomped it like a boss, as she does, feeling very confident in this heat and well in the lead. And she's so intelligent as well, Michaeli. So the wind really nuked it here. The the door's just blown open here and something blew. Was that a person or something? A dog or something? Something just blown squirrel. into the... That's probably a squirrel. Slowing itself down or was it uh, further rotating? Spinning in full speed. <laughs> <laughs> like Sonic the Hedgehog. Sort of, That's sort of one, exactly. Yeah, maybe we should have used him. Um, yeah, Michaeli taking this out of reach, I think, now because she's so intelligent. She knew the family. Because we need to talk about that, about that can't just do the same moves here, Ruben. She ch she had to recognize the 4.83 that she had was actually in the front roll kite loop category, and that's what she looked to upgraded. She got a double front roll in there with a kite loop as well. She's got a big score on the board for it, and she can't be caught up now from Angeli now. I think the, the main thing with Angeli here is, now I think, Ruben, just don't get injured. Don't do anything crazy. You can't win this oh, heat. She's no. going so big. She caught, look at that. That's her... Uh, that's a bear off and a half. Yeah, she was uh, catching the gust and was not able to hold her edge to go for a proper takeoff. So she abandoned this attempt and uh, she's saving it and hopefully uh, riding back and forth to go properly. And sometimes you've got to do that. Or is she going right foot forward? She's really confusing me. No, she's just setting herself up. You can't always win the battles with a wind. We like to win the battles and edge that kite out. But on extreme situations, just ride off downwind. It's okay. The, the power will go away. No one wants to be stuck in turbo mode. Yeah, because the judges will score you as soon as you leave the water. So it's good to save your attempt for a proper one. Ooh, Angie with a massive mega loop. And this one she lands clean. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't think this is going to up her score. To, uh, to beat Michaeli. Mm -hmm. 
So the last trick of this heat will fall to the rider on the slingshot. It will be Lana Herman that uh, I don't think she's going to be able to take any different position now. Nope, even a, even a 10, she'll still be in third place, unfortunately. So what's she got? Can she use this as a time to prepare? Because she won't be out of the competition, of course, Ruben. She will get a second chance. And uh, of course, that wins, that wins in out there now, Ruben. It makes you want to go kind, doesn't it? 100%. Like I say, as soon as the wind starts pumping faster, my heartbeat starts upping as well, and uh, the energy starts flowing. But it's uh, super nice being here with you, Lewis, looking out over the spot, Barcades, seeing all the ladies throw down big time. And uh, this heat is finished. So. And that's a. Uh that's a bit of a crash, actually, so that's going to score a zero from Lana. That was a wonderful heat of the ladies there, wrapping up that round one of the ladies. Look how windy that is with Bacares in the background. There is the crowd. Everything is shaking. The container is shaking. You see all the sand fly. You see all the spectators just uh, cover themselves up. Awesome to be here live at the Lords of Tram here in Barcarès in France. L'économie c'est comme le climat, ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale, ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents. Welcome back then. L'économie, c'est comme le cri. Oh, yeah. Um, I guess my heat was definitely the strongest of the day, for sure. Uh, I felt a little intimidated out there, but I think once I got the first two tricks out of the way, I kind of realized it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. But yeah, I had fun out there, and yeah, just super stoked, and can't wait for the next round. Nice, congrats, and yeah, the condition definitely uh, nuking out there, it's picking up. Oh, yeah. So yeah, it's going to be extreme. Yeah. Congrats, yeah. and... Uh, one of five maybe, but I don't have one. <laughs> yeah, okay, so yeah, you see the conditions are increasing. It's already strong out there. Mika was killing it on a six already lit. So oh, yeah, yeah can wait for the, for the rest for and sure. good luck for the rest. Thank you. Thanks very much, Val. Thank you. And uh, just for the record there, Mikaeli Sol is from Brazil. She is not from America. And Ruben, that microphone that Val had, I think you could do with a bigger one, right? That didn't seem like it was a good enough quality or big enough furry microphone. Well, you don't need a fluffer for that thing. Wow, that was your mangus. I hope you're enjoying the show. Um, it's definitely uh, building action here as everybody's getting more and more confident with the conditions which are actually building. It's uh, topping up some uh, yeah, 35, 40 knots. And uh, yeah, we're in for, uh, for some more action. In round two of the ladies here at the World Cup in Barcades. So 30 seconds left then, 30 seconds left until uh, the start of heat number five. And this is really the, the chance for these riders to, to make their way through. So ignore those names at the top of your screen. We will bring you the next riders in this heat. Oh, look. God, they booted them straight out when I asked. And now we're going to bring in the next two riders on the screen. That was too good to be true, wasn't it, Ruben? Elzin is on the water from the Netherlands. Loves a good competition and just finding her groove to perform her best big air tricks. Who is she riding against? Someone on the north out there that looks like they're on at least a five. Might even be a four now. This really is pumping here now. 
She's riding with someone against herself because it's always a nice battle against yourself. Can you keep your head cool? Can you really land your tricks and pull it together? That's always the question in every heat. Do you know, I could never ride against myself, Ruben. Do you know why? Because you're a prep. No, good guess, but actually because it was just too easy to win. Too easy to win. Just be the best version of yourself, Lewis. That's what it's myself. all about. Yeah, definitely. Well, Keep is, that, is that a bad thing? I wasn't good enough that I could always... My, my previous version of myself wasn't good enough. I don't know. Let's, let's go back to the action. <laughs> that got a bit confusing there. Um, so it's last chance saloon then for these two ladies hoping to make their way through into round three. They have to win. They have to win this heat. It's Elsian. Who's, uh, actually, Elsian's here with our live data. She might have just been around there somewhere jumping, but I think it must be Elsian versus Johanna. But we only have one person on the scores. Um, and just as we were saying, or I was saying, she's going to have no problems winning this heat. It is just her. Oh, no, there we go. There is uh, somebody else. So it's Johanna this year versus Elsian. Both these riders are actually pretty handy, so tough draw. They're both wearing the surfer app, so we can see the data coming in as they jump. They've got seven attempts to put three high scoring trick on the map. And it's Johanna. You like that speed, that board speed is good, Ruben. Nicely over the horizon, starts off with a straight mega loop and a clean landing, good nice. start. Very important to get that first score on the board. And then uh, slowly start adding rotations and upping the technicality of the trick and the extremity, of course, very important. The judges love seeing that. And look at all the spectators right here, looking at all the action live. Even better than watching it on the live stream, trust me. When you see this is in real life, it's just mind-blowing. I think the real best way to watch it is live on the beach, but with your phone out as well, you know, like double whammy, maybe a screen strapped to the forehead. I don't know. Lots of different options. Back roll. Uh, was that a contra loop? I don't know. Oh, oh the, you can't ride out of that. You can't oh. ride out of that, Ruben. How has she ridden out of this? Can Please, can we get a replay on that? One, oh, I, here it is, Ruben. I think one foot even slipped out, so she went for a back roll, kite loop, didn't time it too well, and then, yeah, one foot <laughs> slipped out. A can-can. She's gone for the the can-can. The, the lay-down <laughs> can-can. That's got to be a 10. Oh, wow. Now, this will be uh, calculated as a butt check. Yeah, she's what? getting a 1.2 for Come that. On, that's a bit, at least double it or something. She got robbed. That was pretty impressive. <laughs> uh, so, Johanna Distier to the left-hand side against Elsian. And uh, there's just two ladies in this heat then fighting to stay in the competition here. It's become much more overcast now as we go back to Johanna or Johanna. Nice progressive edge. Oh. Big height on this one, Ruben. This is a high one. Massive loop, getting some nice height. No uh, rotations, but uh, definitely upping uh, her previous uh, kite loop. Here she goes, shooting straight up in the air, taking off right in the corner, going very straight up, very vertical. And then a nice loop with a speedy landing. Yeah, that was textbook. That was really nice of her. She's going to be happy with that. It's a nice score. Landed clean. It's exactly what she would have wanted. Anything over 10 meters, I think, is what, the, what everybody kind of wants there. Oh, also catching some nice... Oh, that's, that's with the small kites. They loop fast. But then after the loop, it's very hard to catch yourself again and really time it well with your landing and the height that you have. Like she's going massive, the kite loops quick, but now the kite just flies over her head too much and she didn't time it well for the second loop to save herself. But again, riding away and uh, getting ready for her next attempt. Yeah, a bit unfortunate that. That's going to be really 12.9 uh, that uh, measured. Unfortunately, we don't have the G-force data to bring you, but that is what we would, uh, what is known in the trade as a bomb out, I guess. We call that a bomb out, that one. Sounds, not, sounds nice. It's not nice. Trust me, you don't want a bomb out. And that was a bit unfortunate for her. So we switch our attention now to very much looking like the starboard tack for... Uh, oh no, that's just, oh no, I think she's lining up for that, the other riders. This is Johanna Distia is coming in left foot forwards, but uh, Elsian's parked herself on the beach, ready perhaps for a right foot forward. So coming in towards the crowd now in this winner takes all heat, it's a boogie. Oh, going for a massive boogie loop here, which is a mega loop with a front roll edge. Oh no, too much speed on the landing, just off balance. Damn it. I didn't think this was odds on this one, Ruben. I'm going to talk you through why I think that on this replay. Just here, she mega loops quite early. I don't think she got round enough of that front roll to, to deal with that 
position so well. She did actually very well adapt to that, but unfortunately she just couldn't take the speed on the landing. But I just thought straight away, she's very early on putting that loop. You've got to wait till you're round, in my opinion, halfway round, at least with a boogie loop. But that was some commitment. 12.4 meters over six seconds in the air on our surfer app data. These girls are up in it. Yeah, 100%, Lewis, and I think that's exactly what happened. And I think it is also because the kites they're riding in these strong winds are very small and very fast, so she just mistimed that boogie loop where in the loop the yank gets produced, and if it comes at the wrong time during your rotation, you just get pulled off balance a little bit, and then it's just very tricky to uh, to get a clean landing in. But uh, ver very nice uh, mega loop back roll here. And is she sticking that? Yes, oh, full wow. speed. What a clean landing that was. Very good move then. Elsian uh, is most likely going to go, well, she's definitely going to go into first, I would have thought, with that move, Ruben. So just a reminder to you then, they're getting six trick attempts, and they're going to get their three best scores out of those six big tri trick attempts. So you could crash through them and get a zero, but three big scores are going to count. They have to be in different families, and we'll talk you through that as the, the competition evolves here. You can't just do the same trick three times. Ideally, what the judges are looking for is some sort of back roll mega loop, a front roll mega loop, a contra loop, some sort of mixture like that. But we're getting into a... Johanna goes for a nice big boost. Unfortunately, won't be scoring that well. But knowing that she has the boogie loop in her trick bag as well is uh, is something that she has up her sleeve and hopefully gets uh, pulling it out uh, later in this heat. Why did she just do a jump there, Ruben? I think she just uh, yeah wasn't confident on the takeoff and she just had to abort the loop that she was intended to go for. But uh, yeah, if your takeoff is not uh, not correct, then it's very dangerous to go for the move anyway. It's better to abort and save yourself for the next attempt. Yeah, you can sit here thinking, why would you bother just doing a big jump? That's a great thing to say with, with any Megaloo. If you don't feel right on the way up, you don't send it. She felt right on the way up there, Ruben. And Elsian has landed a nice big Megaloo to the right-hand side to answer back. This is a tight heat. Yeah, I think she added a little grab in there as well. Here you see, oh, she just got a gust before the takeoff. But here, her kite loops, and now she was handling it a little bit better. Still a hard landing, but she took it. So, uh, yeah, I think that's another nice score on the board. It's Lewis Crathen here and Ruben Lenton talking you through everything at the Lords of Tram 2023. We're here at the GKA Big Air Kite World World Tour, and the action here is because it's a tour. It's a tour now. We've got the Tarifa Big Air World Championships as well, and there may even be talk of a third one, but this is really Coming along uh, nicely now as the day progresses. You've just joined us here in our fifth heat of the day. We've started with the women. We've been late to start today with this funny wind, but on our screens is Johanna Distier. She finds herself now in second place here, going out of the competition unless she can drastically land some moves. This she needs a boogie loop. Yeah, and she's going for the front for all mega loop. And oh, another rotation and just crashing super hard. Almost with her kite landing on top of her head. Wow. All so right. she's throwing herself into a front roll, looping that kite a bit too fast. And now she's just losing her balance and didn't know where she was anymore, looking the wrong way to spin and then just bombing out on the landing. Yeah, she got thrown into, I think she fought it off the second rotation. And so often we see with many of the riders just go into a second rotation. She fought it and fought it and fought it. Couldn't fight it right till the end of landing. And it threw her into what looked to me is quite an uncomfortable landing. So often landing on the board causes the injuries to these riders. So she appears to me out the window that she's okay. And I can see in the background on your screens there, she is okay. But that was... Uh, it was a biggie, 13 meters up in the sky. Just to give you an idea of how high that is, these kites are about 20, 20, 20 to 24 meters up in the sky. It's over halfway up, and these ladies are starting to push it. She couldn't grab yeah. it. She didn't find the grab, Ruben. She was looking for her board there. Adding a grab during the loop is uh, definitely uh, adding some, uh, some style, and the judges love that. But this was not performed too well, but it will put a score on the board. Very difficult skill to mega loop the kite with one hand. It goes against everything you've ever learned about control and keeping the body tight to release the hand. It's a very modern way of mega looping a kite, which has led to board offs and all these other types of tricks. Um, but it's, it's a difficult skill to do. I think the longer you've got used to two hands on the bar, it's not an easy thing to do. So sometimes you don't find the board or the kite whips you out in a bit of a Yankinstein. 
But um, unfortunately, she doesn't get what she wanted there. But we turn our attention back to Johanna. She needs something here, really, Ruby. She's going again for the boogie loop here. Throw no, no, she's going backwards. So back roll kite loop and landing that. Not too high, not too crazy. I think uh, after two of those massive crashes, uh, she's uh, quite done for this heat. No, I think this is sensible riding here. She's realized she's got to get something on the score. She's literally put everything in place to make it about her last move. She's got one more trick attempt coming up after this. Um, so she had to get something on the board there. I think that it's going to replace the 1.60. It may well have been in a different category, but let's see what that score uh, comes up as. But Elzine is in the lead, and uh, she has uh, one more trick attempt left. And she's going for a boogie loop as well. So she did the front roll, looped her kite, and landed it clean. Nice. That was a difficult one to see. So we didn't actually get to see so much of her kite. I just think the distance she went there. I'm not sure she loops the kite here, Ruben. I'm not sure. I think she didn't feel it, maybe. I know she does loop the kite. I know she what a boogie loop the, is, mate. She just didn't get the distance. It know? wasn't the height. It wasn't the distance. But she performed the move. And, uh, yeah, I'm curious to see what the judges will score this. She's opened the door up here for Johanna, perhaps, but she needs quite a big score. She needs uh, she needs about 5.8 here. She's going for the boogie. Again, go do it. Yeah, right, 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 right. Chuck yourself forward. And yeah, there yeah, she goes. Boogie, very inverted, dealing with the yank. And finally landing that boogie loop with some nice height, 7 meters. Is it going to be enough, though, Ruben? That was a very rough estimate. I think she needed roughly around a 5.8 for this big on this screen here, Ruben. It could be enough for a devastator here. What a devastating way. She, she was happy with herself as she landed. Has she caused the devastator? Are we going to see her oust Elsie in for first place? 14.66 to 8.8. No, nah, she won't make it. You don't think she'll make no. it? I think she needs... We're about to find out. Maybe it was an 8.5. And... Uh, but yeah, I saw her to building up her confidence and pulling that boogie loop in this kind of wind, these challenging conditions in front of the crowd at the Kitesurf World Cup here in Barcares, the GKA, where the world title is on the line for this uh, year in the tour. Everybody wants to become big air world champion. So then you will have to win this event. Classic example where it would probably been worth going into a second rotation there. And really, unfortunately for Johanna, is that it was the same trick category. So that's why she hasn't been given her third trick score. She's replaced ah. one of her other tricks there because I think that move was big enough. I think she scored a 6.07 for it. So it would have been big enough if it was in a different category. So unfortunately for her, maybe she just thought, I want to go big with this move anyway. But I think Elsie in there has uh, escaped a bit of a devastator. But she rode yep. more consistently, Ruben. Yeah, uh, a little bit of a... Uh more basic tricks, I'd say, but uh, yeah, getting the scores on the board and uh, still adding some nice rotations there. So very well done with the strategy from Elzine there. And uh, let's see how she builds her confidence throughout the event in the next heat. This was round two of the ladies and uh, we're going to continue with the next heat, heat number two of round two. The wind definitely came through for us, so uh, we're uh, seeing an exciting show unfold. It's nuking out there, Ruben. I'm watching the beach here now, Ruben, in front of us, and I'm expecting one of these kites to go any second now. You know when you look... Oh, there's the dice. There's a red dice over there. I think the yellow one is going. Going. You echo what? The yellow the yellow one is going. The, the yellow one's going as well. So the beach. If somebody sees it. Who's going to see it? There are yeah. kites that haven't been weighed down enough on the beach. You can't see that where you're looking right now. Coming up next, by the way, is Anjali Buo and Mikhail Pilkington. But that red dice on the beach looks... Uh, that must be Michaela's as well. But um, the wind is pumping now. It's what these big air riders want and need. And uh, Ruben's pointing. And it's the red dice that's ended up in the war today. I, I win. I win. I, I no, won. You're I, such a win, I, bro. I finally, I finally won something. It's just they're so light, you know, those kites, the way they're built and everything. It wasn't really fair on the other kites, which may have been heavier. I mean, as the sport progresses, uh, also the equipment sees a massive uh, yeah, change and um, keeping up with the performance and allowing riders to jump bigger and bigger, handling more wind, uh, feeling more direct control over the kite. And uh, I hope we're going to beat the 40 meters soon. What do you think about that? How do you think this would be going down out there now if we forced everyone to go out and see kites? 
Yeah, that will just be uh, heavy. Back to the old days. I don't think uh, many riders will be able to deal with that. I don't even know how I pulled all those moves on the on the sea kites back in the day, because they're pretty powerful, not much deep power. I don't know if there's even that much lift in them, but we made it work. So. <laughs> I feel like there's sort of just only been one option with them, and it all was about um, that era, just who could go the biggest and get the kite the lowest. Okay, on your screen, then back to the action, because it's about today and what we're doing now, and this is very much about these two riders, Angelie Boulard from France and Michaela Pilkington, or Pilks as she's known, from the USA. This is quite a tough heat to find yourself in uh, round two. One of these riders will be going home, e either via Barcelona or Montpellier or one of the other very Toulouse, easily maybe. accessible airports around this region. The other one will be staying in one of the very high quality hotels that you can see all around here. So who will it be? Beautiful. Yeah, it was quite easy to get here. Two and a half hour drive from Barcelona. And uh... my sat nav said three hours. Were you driving safely? Of course, always Lewis. Safety third, you know me. But uh, this heat is uh, going to be on the way soon. Thanks for tuning in to the GKA live stream. You're here with me, Ruben Lenton and Lewis Crathern. And coming up is Angie against Michaela. It's going to be an uh, exciting heat. We just saw Angie throw down some massive moves, but unfortunately not uh, getting together her landings and all those tricks. So hopefully uh, she knows how to handle herself now and uh, really land some proper proper moves. So that was a bit closer than we thought. Those scores didn't really reflect the categories as well as we would have liked on the screen. It was only by about point, uh, point two one that she took that Johanna Distier. So, um, oh, so she, she, oh, did, she did she did it. She did get a so third score. So in yeah. the previous heat, we actually saw Johanna overtake Elsine. Um, and there was a devastator. There was a devastating uh, heat for Elsine then. Unfortunately, out of this event from the Netherlands. So we apologize that we couldn't bring you that live devastation emotion to the screen. We felt that the, or what we were shown on the screen was the trick category was copied. Now, Ruben, let's talk about trick categories quickly while we have a very small moment here. You know, what is a different move from a mega loop? The rotations you can add, you can rotate backwards, you can rotate forward, you can jump to the left, you can jump to the right. So there's different ways of pulling a loop like this. This was uh, Angie with her signature mega loop uh, back roll. Uh, absolutely nice style, getting super inverted and landing this one clean. So getting a nice score on the board for her first trick attempt out of seven. And she only needs three high scoring tricks in this heat. And uh, let's see what uh, Michaela is going to answer with. That wasn't as big as Angie can go. 9.3 meters there. Perhaps uh, she was keeping it keeping it for the end. She can't afford to blow this heat now if she wants to get through. She know We know she's got the big moves, you know, Ruben, but she's up against it. Jasmine Cho. That's Mike's, that's Mike's other half. But what happened there? There was a different name on the screen earlier. Uh, no, this, uh, no, so it didn't... No, it was... Uh, this is Jasmine... Wow. Uh, but we've got, I oh know, so Angelie's score was just coming in. That happens with the surf app sometimes. You can jump around anywhere on the water and it's going to give us that information. So 6.5 meters for the American. There seems to be loads of Americans here. Even Michaela Pilkington. Uh, sorry, Michaela flying under. Michaela Pilkington, that would be a good American name. But lots of people here from the States and Jasmine looking to progress further here. She had a wonderful event over in Cape Town at the Big Air Kite League out there. Let's see if she can continue it, but she's up against it. Nobody wants to draw Anjali Bua, who's on your screen now. Hand off the bar. Couldn't do that on the sea kites. There's the second hand on the bar as she searches for somewhere to take off Ruben. Riding full speed on her rail. You see her kicking that back leg during the takeoff, going for a double back roll kite loop and sticking it. Yep, oh, she, wow. she's hungry for the win. Blow me sideways and call me Steven. That was an unbelievable trick then from Angeli. That is going to score up in the high sevens, I think. All right, Ruben. Steven. It's just a phrase of speech. Okay. Blew me away, English. mate. <laughs> it blew me away, <laughs> that, that move. Angie there. But also Jasmine, she's been training hard, spending all her winter in Cape Town where the wind is pumping, the waves are rolling in, and she's, she's been training her big air tricks. So let's see... Uh, what she's going to throw down right now for us. 
Left foot forwards then. She's got 5.77 on the board so far. She's got to have the heat of her life here, I think. She's going to take on Angeli. That's a nice take off. Oh, maybe they didn't get the height that she wanted. And uh, she's bailed out of that one. Yep. It looked like the, the wind wasn't there for her. So not a good take off. She didn't time the gust well. So unfortunately, one attempt goes missing. Big shout out to our sponsors here. Anio, Duotone. Eye on the port of Bacares, who are just so wonderful at facilitating this event, which they put everything into. It's not just the beach they're helping with here and the access, it's the accommodations for the riders. It's a wonderful town to work with down here. In the Merci very, beaucoup. South, Merci very beaucoup. south of France. Je ne comprends pas. Nice one, Lewis. And we got uh, Angie going for another belter of a move. We're going super big, but just a straight boost off. Unfortunately, no loop. So no real extremity in this trick. That cameraman had to zoom out so far then, he ended up in the car park. Here, she wanted to go for a loop. Oh no, this is a boogie loop from... That was the move that actually has got Johanna Distier into the next heat. No, that replay is fine. That was a crucial... That's okay. No, no, no problem. Um, because that was the move that sneaked Johanna Distiane from the previous heat, and she got through by 0.21 over Elsian. We were talking about a devastator. It did happen, and that was the replay. So this guy's just miles ahead of us here, bringing us the replays. But on your screen now, then, is women around two. Heat number two of the Lords of Tram GKA Big Air Kite World Cup. It must be 40 knots out there, Ruben, now. This live stream booth is shaking. Rocking. That's it. That's what we like. We like it rocking. I think it's going to look good for tomorrow as well. So definitely keep watching as the action keeps unfolding and building throughout this event. Absolutely awesome to be here with you, Lewis. And uh, yeah, curious to see who's going to take the win in this ladies' heat number two in round number two. You know my van rocks like this when it's really windy. Yeah, it makes weird sounds as well. Nice, yeah, I like it. No reaction from the two of us as we were looking carefully out the window here because the contrast now is difficult. This cloud starting to come over the mountains behind us and the weather very much feels like it might be changing soon. We've got a little bit of clear sky above us. And I wonder if this is one of those weird places where the clouds go the opposite direction to the wind. You know, are these clouds moving to the west but the wind is, uh, you know, coming a different way? Yeah, the conditions are definitely wild and uh, very challenging for the riders to uh, to find the right gust and keep uh, keep control throughout the move and then going for a clean landing. It's not a it's not a given, and we see the best uh, female riders in the world competing here at the GKA Kite World Cup here in Barcarès, France. The Lords of Tram. Ruben, did you know this was a world sailing special event? Of course, I knew it. It uh, says on the screen, mate. Yeah, that's a good answer, I guess. But meanwhile, back to the action. It's a big mega. It's going to be about 11 meters, I think, here um, from Angeli Boulois. Just trying. She's building this heat really nicely. And maybe this is the change in her riding, Ruben, that we're seeing now. Maybe that was over 11 meters, even. That maybe it was even 12. I don't know. That's what it looked like to me. Um, I'm not the surfer app. I'm just somebody that reads it out. And so maybe she doesn't have it out there with her. I don't know, but. Jasmine Cho is up against it because this is a revitalized Angeli Boulois. I haven't seen her construct a heat like this for a while, Ruben. She really is going easy, not going crazy. She can't afford to lose this seat. She wants to keep in this battle for, you know, she wants to get some good points here. Well, nice kite loop with a laid back roll and sticking it. Very yeah, well nice composed. That. Nice that for Jasmine. Good reply. What do you think this is going to score, Ruben? So she goes for the kite loop and she just gets yanked into that back roll because as soon as the kite gives you a yank and you look over your shoulder, your body is just going to fly backwards as well. And it just feels really good, especially if you land it. And uh, yeah, what are the scores going to do? That's Five, up to the judges. Maybe. Oh, it's bigger than that. Oh, no. Yeah, so Jasmine going into the lead now. Um, it's just a 1.6 that Angie needs to kick out here. And uh, that scored reasonably well then. For Jasmine, doesn't look like it's in the right category for me here. So if I was a kite loop back roll, we're waiting for to come in from Jasmine. And now is a critical stage here for these riders. They want, they really have to be smart about what trick, 
We're staring at these scores here from Anjani, looking at her three best tricks, which are a 7.20, 1.60, and a 4.00. You can go online, gkakiteworldtour.com forward slash events, click the live button. You can see what those tricks are. She's got to replace the 1.60 trick family. It's no point replacing the others. She's got to push this one out if she wants to climb. Whoa. The Megaloop board off. Yeah, she's sticking the Megaloop board off. I First thought she one. was going for that in the previous uh, move because she was reaching for a board but just couldn't find the timing and now she just nailed it. So while she was jumping, looping that kite, absorbing that yank and taking the board off at the same time and going for a clean landing. I think this is going to score well for Angie and uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, that was a really cool move from her. So Angeli was it an 8.07? Yeah, she kicks out that low one number now. This is going to be very difficult to reply. Jasmine can do that move. I know, I know she can do that move as well. I wonder what she's thinking here. Her lowest score of a 3.23 is currently just a standard kite loop. She's got a high score for a back roll variation. That's her highest score, the 6.93. Her front roll is pretty well. decent as well. She's still got time. She's trying to upgrade her front roll. So I'm not sure that's going to be the right tactic now. She's already got a 5.77 scoring with her front roll kite loop. I'm not sure that's going to maybe beat it. She's got to go for that uh, other category, I think, now. And uh, Anjali, I mean, that was genius just to go for, you know, she didn't upgrade the category with the low score. She just went for a whole new category altogether, Ruben. She's really impressed me how she's building this heat here. There is the scene here in uh, Bacares. For this first round of the Big Air World Tour, it is Lords of Tram. It's the GKA Big Air Kite World Cup in France. The crowds are here, and on your screen is Angeline Boulois, who is the French rider who's uh, doing a few left and rights here. Angelie is parking herself right in the block zone here. Let's see, how long has she got for the time? Zero. What do you mean with getting timed out? Oh, well, what I mean by that, Rubens, is we've got this big screen over here which gives them 40 seconds. All right, so the judges and the race director, they want them to perform their trick in 40 seconds. They feel that's adequate time for the rider to ride around a little bit and then decide when to jump. But Anjali here is sitting in there as if to say, look, the wind's gusty. She's, she's purposely sat down there as, as a protest to say, look, the wind went funny. Um, so her timer was on zero, but uh, she's going to go flying into this anyway. Jumping right foot forward now and going for a boogie loop that side. Oh, landing it clean. Very, very nice. She's uh, getting into the groove of this competition rhythm and really sticking her moves now. Yeah, that shows some class there from Anjali. She really has had a dream heat here. Lovely takeoff. Exactly the same way that she would perform that in the other direction. We call that a switch, really. And um, I think she's got the nails in the door here for Jasmine. But Jasmine, Jasmine needs something big. She needs a big one. You know, that's the third trick in a row that's over six for Anjali that we can see in her top scores. Jasmine is... Uh, Almost at a stage now where I don't think she can do anything about this now. She's Even with a 10, it's uh, not going to happen, is it? But yeah, the judges are looking closely and uh, scoring each trick family as uh, as they perform. And Jasmine can better than the 3.2 that she has on the scoring board. She can do it, but she needs a 10 in that category at least, Ruben. So if you if you knocked off her 3.23 here now. You'd put her on around 12 and a half, something like that. So with a 10 added on top of that. She could do it. She could do it. And as we've seen with Devastators here, as the wind has calmed down now, Ruben. It's gone quiet here in this live stream. But it's probably not what Jasmine wanted to, to, to happen, right? She may have needed the wind to go berserk out there to give her their chance. There looks like that change of wind direction to me now, where I feel that the wind's coming much more from the north now. We can see that aggressive angle back to the beach, right foot forwards, from Jasmine here. Before they were staying sort of perpendicular with that sandbar, which was a bit more west. So this wind is forever flicking between north and northwest today and maybe a bit of west in it. So that's what the riders are given this flexibility with their 40 seconds for because sometimes this changing of uh, the wind direction 
It's strange what it's it's gone absolutely dead silent in here now. There's no sign of any kites being blown around on the beach. I'd say, Ruben, that dropped temporarily down to the low 20 knots for a bit. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit up and down. And uh, yeah, like you say, Lewis, when the wind is shifting direction a little bit, it can create some lulls and definitely a lot of gusts in the wind. So hopefully it will switch back and, uh, and kick back in for, for some more action. And as kiteboarders, we tend to look at the water. I mean, obviously, we can't see the wind, but we can see the signs of the wind. And one great way that you can look for the signs of the wind is actually the, the rough patches on the water. We're looking at big signs of patterns and strong, dark areas. And it looks a bit more like the wind's come up now. But just the other thing you can look at is someone's body language. Does it look to you like uh, Angelie's totally overpowered there? No, not to me, Ruben. No, she's uh, stood very relaxed on that board, quite up straight. She doesn't need to put a lot of pressure and power against it to hold this kite down. So, uh, yeah, the wind is definitely in a little bit of a lull. And uh, also the things that we look at is, uh, is the sky and uh, the flags, the trees. Every sign of wind, we can read it. And uh, you can use heat is cancelled, unfortunately. The news just came in due to uh, a lull in the wind. Um, so, do you know what I'm going to say, Ruben? I think this, is, this isn't as far as heat cancelled. It's just on, um, it, the flag is up at the moment, the black and white flag, I believe, which is just postponement. Because we've got, what have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six. I think Angelis perform all of her moves. I think perhaps they're getting seven trick attempts or Angela may well have got out already. So they're just currently postponing this one just until they can get that. Their scores already will stand. There's no way on a 22.0 Angela's going to come in and expect uh, the heat ca cancelled. So this heat is a cancelled, it's postponed. So she will keep her scores and it's likely that they're going to just get a couple more trick attempts at some point. But you can clearly see there the wind has pulled back and it's been doing that a little bit today. Yeah, exactly. They'll be. further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together.
So Carl, for the from this uh, from this competition, how was it out there? And uh, congratulations on a really nice hit. Yeah, it was quite nice. I'm happy finally we have a strong win, so I'm really happy to be back in Le Cat and uh, uh, send it again on my spot. Yeah, you like strong win, you like big tricks, so yeah, congratulations. And uh, what's going to be next? Can you board off right back? I, I learned, uh, yeah, the double uh, board off, but I don't try here. I think it doesn't mean to try because uh, I need to uh, focus, land it more often before to try in comp. Okay, perfect. Excited yeah. to see the rest. Uh, bye. Bye. <laughs> right. Nice to hear Angelie's uh, feelings about that heat, which she really done well. Liam, you've just jumped in for a while. Uh, how's things going down on the beach? Lewis, it's windy. It is windy out there. Um, it's... Yeah, just building and building some strong, super strong gusts. I was actually down on the point as well, right down on the screens where you can see and big display there from Angeli. She was looking very, very strong out there. But, you know, this is the aim of the game and the wind is booting and this is what we want to see. So often with Angeli, we see her just going massive, but she constructed that heat so well, Liam. That was a different Angeli that I saw out there. But bringing you next, uh, who's in our next heat, is Carly Toma from the United States against... Lana Herman from Slovenia. She's got some support down there. I've seen that flag being waved around out there. It looks like the wind has come back a bit cleaner. It really has been. I mean, we're not just talking like a bit of gust. We're talking like from 35, 40 knots and then dropping down to low 20s where we've just had to be flexible here, Liam. And you're very involved behind the scenes here at the GKA. Is it important that the race director, the judges, etc., really are flexible on trying to push this through? Yeah, 100%. Obviously, we want a result, but we want a result in the right way. And uh, the race director and head judge, you know, they are in regular contact. I see them all the time, you know, communicating through the judge tower on the walkie-talkies, just making sure that every heat is, you know, good for our riders and it's suitable conditions. You know, we obviously want it to be super strong out there. We want, you know, this is what Big Air is all about, strong winds in locations like this. But at the same time, you know, it's all got to be on the right sort of playing field and, Judges and head, head judge Mallory, Cedric, the race director, they're all working really well together. And, uh, you know, I think so far is so good. The riders are happy. There's a good vibe down on the beach between caddies and crew and riders. So everyone's happy. Yeah, and uh, we talk about the good vibe down there because with this format, you know, we already heard at, at the meeting this morning some of the riders saying, well, is that fair if someone else gets a good gas and then I'm next in line? Because to remind you, viewers at home or wherever you're tuning in from around the world, the riders aren't on the water at the same time together like many other events, but you only have to think of the freestyle where it became easier to judge, safer and better to deliver deliver the live stream to you back at home to just watch one rider. That's what we're doing here in Big Air and this may well be the way it follows on throughout the year. We don't know 100%, but this is the way it's being run here. And it's also down to the spot. It's a very small spot. It might look big on your screens there but with two riders going massive in that small zone there they could easily come into contact with each other so one rider at a time and so far so good the riders are happy with when the judges have decided that it's not windy enough and they've they've, they've abandoned the heat for temporarily so all the riders seem to be happy the crowds have turned up here now Liam and I think they're going to be in for a bit of a treat as this evening uh, draws on. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's just getting busier and busier down here. This is exactly what we want to see Saturday afternoon and uh, good vibes down on the beach. But, you know, riders, just as you speak about the spot there, Lewis, as you can see a nice little diagram right now and, and, a, and a picture. We've got this sort of channel that goes in between um, just left of those flags. There's a bit of a channel that goes actually out to the back of the other I would say Lagoon, but I've it looks been, awfully I've been big. Up, I've been up through that little channel and zigzagged. You know, like Austin Powers, where he reverses forever. It takes you about a thousand tacks to get <laughs> up through that channel and out into the sort of the, the, the bigger yeah. Lagoon in the background there. Yeah. What, what about, well, what, 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 um, I was just sort of mentioning, about, you know, we see them going when they're left foot forward. When I was down on the pier, it, it is super, super flat down there in that little pocket. And I think riders are really enjoying taking off on there. You, know, you saw an Angeli there doing most of her tricks left foot forward. But if you were out there, Lewis, do you, find, you think you could tick tick attack along the uh, the channel and then do a nice big uh, kite loop, mega loop over the over the, I don't the know. land? I think that's quite a big bit of land than it uh, <laughs> than it looks. Um, I don't know if I'd want to take that on, especially with this uh, unpredictable wind. But there's the scene right now with you two riders, Johanna Distier 
Uh, oh, no, I don't think that is that. Those two riders, Carly Toma and Lana Herman. Yes, Not correct. sure why those scores. Are, oh. oh no, they've been. Uh, so you're a magician. Yeah. Huh? Oh, Click of the fingers and the uh, and the right names are on the board. Got, and they've got rid of it. So these two are just waiting. Uh, the slingshot on the right hand side is Lana Herman and Carly Toma on the left with the North. Then so it's the USA against Slovenia, and uh, they're just waiting. And what they're looking for here. Is, uh, there goes the AP flag down. In fact, that's what they're looking for. I just saw out the corner of my eye uh, the flag that's just been dropped. And that will be the sign then for uh, the first rider of this heat to perform her move, which I believe to be um, I believe to be Carly, actually. Yeah, Carly Tomer, if, uh, if all is good on our end, will be the first rider that goes in. But here we are, women round two, heat number three on your screens now. Carly Tomer, let's see what she has for us as she goes for her first trick attempt definitely very windy down there now and uh, you can see kite loop there with a late back roll starts to swing under the kite so riders now from when you know we were first in the booth this morning Lewis the, the conditions have very much changed and they're sort of most of their jumps now pushing up towards around that 10 meter mark you see an 8.2 there before it was sort of around the fives and sixes but you know, it's looking good now. Well, in some of those uh, previous heats as well, with the likes of Angie, we saw jumps as high as 15, 16 metres with oh, the surf brilliant. rack record. And they really did start storming back up. But now it almost looks like we're back building again from the start. And this is a really tough time to be competing now. You're in a knockout heat. One of these riders will be leaving this competition now. Uh, as they didn't win their first heat, they've come either second or third, which is how they've been matched up here. You're slightly rewarded if you finish second in that you've got someone potentially in your heat that's come third, but that's not always as straightforward as that. So meanwhile, on your screens, then, Lana Herman with a nice boogie loop on that slingshot. Lovely and controlled. Oh, I so thought she had that, Liam. Yeah, but, lost the Oh, as well. no, here we go. Oh, here we go. Where is that going to end up? Now we're in a little bit of a sticky situation, Lewis, because first time we've seen the kite get lost, as you can see, going for that manoeuvre there. But I thought, you know, look controlled, but then a you know, little unforced error and down she went. Yeah, not sure why that's uh, been released there. Maybe just put her hand on There is your situation now. Oh, okay, so it's actually the chicken loop's been uh, released. So she's really going to have to compose herself now, Liam. Here. And I just think this is such a great example for you, maybe, kiteboarders from around the world now, thinking, when was the last time you put your chicken loop back together? Could you deal with this? You know, could you deal with this in 20, 25 minutes safely if you was offshore? How about if you had to deal with it in the next five minutes because you're in a world tour competition? Because that is the challenge that Lana Herman's going to have to face here. Can she get her kite back together in time here? Or is Carly Tomer going to have a walk in the park? She's got to hope that one of those gusts doesn't come through trying to put that kite back in the air because that can be a little bit nasty. So Lana just, just working it still. I can look out the corner of my eye. That kite is still smiling, still on the water. Yet to be flung back in the air but I'm sure you know Lewis we've got the best in the business here the best riders here and you know experience will soon come into play and show and I'm sure that before we know it Lana will be up and zooming around yeah so interestingly here Carly can't actually go because it's um, almost in her way a little bit there is the boat going to help that kite and I think that to some degree, you've got to make a decision here now, as Lana. You either get rid of all of that and swim back in and try and get another kite, or you've got to deal with it. You know, this may well happen on the water. That kite is taking off and flying around uh, for the moment, it seems. So this is a tricky situation. We've had a lot of drama here on day one of the Lords of Tram. It is the GKO Kite World Tour. It's big air taking place here in the very south of France. And we have some big drama right now with uh, Lana Herman. Really didn't need that. All right, she crashed that move, no problem. But what she didn't need is this situation where she's got to get this kite up and do it pretty quickly. And It's got a bit of a mind of its own at the yeah. moment, that kite out there, Lewis. It's sort of flinging around like it's having a party on the water. But uh, best of luck to her, <laughs> that's all I can say. There's the scene right now then as uh, Carly Tom is just waiting. She hasn't been instructed with any flags that I can see. And I think she has got enough space now. But it's um, one aspect of this right now is that the, the safety team are um, very much involved in this with a jet ski and a boat. And that is one of the reasons why perhaps they're not wanting Carly to jump. Oh, because they've grabbed they, the kite. They have just grabbed the kite. And... Uh, where are they going now, though? They're going straight up oh, wind. Oh, actually, she must have got rid of it. Bagged herself a free kite, Lewis. You know, Surely they're not going to just, just nice seven meter. ride away here. <laughs> Through the channel they go, and off they, off they, they go, go to Le Cat. 
So hopefully on the beach somewhere, Lana's got another kite. Yeah, just... Or have they taken it to the side of the window? Lana yeah. was also on a seven meter, which was quite full on. Here we go. That's a lovely boogie loop, meanwhile, from Kylie Thomas. Wow, that was really amazing composure with all of that going on in the background. Kylie, really, and you just saw how close she was to the boat at the end there. So with all that going on here, we've seen a lovely, I'm not sure comes. what happened with that angle here, but you could see just how easily it would be for these riders to go heavily downwind and you might just see the boat coming at the end here. So Lana, at some point, I'm expecting to see her. Oh, no, she is on the back of the jet ski. So there on your screens at the moment, Carly, that score has dropped to 6.57. And Lana just coming in towards the shore now. Hopefully we can get that shot for you here. She's just come in on the back of the jet ski. Um, that was quite some drama for us to see. And uh, there's a yellow flag up. Where is she? So we're looking for Lana, who is uh, just walked off the beach, actually. Yeah, just come on the beach. Looks like there's no rush. Just going to check with our, our sports team as that might be Lana's final time here. But she needs to get another kite up here. She's got time here for sure. She can make it out there with at least uh, three trick attempts. Perhaps she doesn't have another kite. I think that's the discussion. Meanwhile, Carly Thomas going around her business, but I'd be tempted to grab anything on the beach there and just get out there. So we can't show you her on the beach right now. I think Carly Thomas is going to have a walk in the park here. One of the best feelings you can have in kiteboarding competition when you realise that your competitor's out and you've got to buy into the next heat. Come here. Let's see. Just been brought a coffee. That's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Feel like it's coffee weather now. It was sunny before earlier on in the day, but now it's come overcast. Those clouds are moving towards the east from a westerly direction. There's a uh, Jamie Overbeek downstairs and uh, Ruben Lenton just outside uh, hugging his fellow compadres or compatriots or compatres maybe if you want to go somewhere in the middle there. But uh, this is Carly Tomer then, women at round two, heat number three. I think she doesn't have to do too much here, but can she get another kite up in the sky or has she decided to... Uh, to mug this off, Lana Herman. Well, it looks like the hairband coming off from Car Carly Thomas. A bit unsure about this situation right now, and uh, she's coming left and forward. She's just saying, you know, like, what's going on here? You know, am I really on my own out here? Is this really true? Yeah, I just popped out there, Lewis. One of the things I actually wanted to go and check there with tour manager Tom Hartman was in freestyle. If they get jet ski assistance back, then you know it's a bit of a sanction. So. I wanted to just double check, you know, the reason why maybe Lana wasn't rushing is because, you know, our race director had called, called something like some sort of sanction or, or what, what so. But Big Air, it's a little bit of different. I know one of our race directors that we work with at other events, uh, Juan Antonio, he allows that jet ski assistance if needed. So, you know, we'll, we will get a little bit more confirmation on that from our sports crew very shortly. But going back to Lana... Doesn't look like she's in a rush to necessarily get back out there. No, I think this is done. I can see the other two riders uh, very much going out on the water. In fact, they just put them up on our screens. Justine Avril and Michaela Pilkington are already on your screen. So um, I think they're moving on here. But that's a great point you raise, Liam. And many of the competitions I've done in the past, as soon as you lay a finger on that support, that jet ski or that boat, you, you know, you're risking... Uh, being disqualified yeah, he's sure. having that help but this was a bit of a different situation where so often in the past it's it's often that you've gone downwind and you've lost that advantage of being in position so that doesn't apply here as we've got one rider each and she's gone heavily downwind here it's not like she wouldn't have been there anyway but as long as the communication is there to you when the boat says look you want a hand or you're disqualified that's fine but sometimes you can get a boat grab your kite yeah you haven't even asked for it 
um, and you can be disqualified that way. But I think in this situation, um, especially with Big Air, it is more common to, to be allowed to have some sort of uh, assistance. But um, I, th I think that was the right thing to do, to actually check. Yeah, most definitely. You, we, we, that's whenever we've got a sort of a question marks over the head, we always like to run down and, and try and get the right, right answers from the right people. But nonetheless... You know, we're on to the next heat now, Lewis, and who have we got on the water? And we've just seen another kite release. I don't believe what I've seen. Is I've that just Carly's? Seen a, that's Carly. <laughs> and that, to me, looked like a deliberate release. Now, that must have been just out of your shot to the left-hand side. Now, what What's going on happened out there? there? I, I'd love to see a replay of that, because that, I, I'm convinced I saw both hands come up. Uh, here is the... <laughs> there's Ruben Lenton <laughs> down there. Anyway, how he's been. There's... a. Uh, Ruben, who's uh, been very busy up here today for the last hour. Looks busy down there now so, as well. So, yeah, he's uh, just hidden that beer quite well. Oh, no. Oh, there, he <laughs> <laughs> there he is, keeping busy. <laughs> I've been told that that's the non-alcoholic beer. And there's Yop, there's uh, Tom Hartman, tour manager. It looks very relaxed down there, doesn't it? There yeah, is, uh, well, Tom was actually planning to go to the GWA Lacat and then saw the forecast and the green light got called for this. And he thought, you know what, why not dabble down to... Uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, exactly. He, he loves it. Why not try and break the record of <laughs> so many events in a row where he hasn't been home or something? But like, lovely little shots of the beach there. That's what we really, like to see, though. Sometimes yeah, we like to get a little bit, you know, what's going on down under, really. And the time uh, code here to write down. This is women round two, heat four to pull up later. And I want to show my mates that shot. <laughs> Ruben. Um, it looks like his glass was half full. Maybe he's going back to the bar. Maybe, but uh, I know he's just flown in today for this weekend so i'm sure we can cut him some slack but meanwhile we should get back to t telling you what actually is happening here now so justine avril and michaela pilkington um in heat number four of round two they haven't started yet we've got carly thomas now to the left there you can see the jet ski to the left hand side and carly thomas to the very left hand side after having a walk in the park with that heat she has become the one that's now released the kite there goes the boat with the kite yeah another kite and, for the locker uh, I wonder, has she let go of the bar? Is she asking for a launch? She's in a very fortunate position there, you know, that she can actually relax because had that happened to her, you know, five, seven minutes ago, it would have been her that would have been out of the competition perhaps, but that's the way it goes. I tell you what, this is, you know, grab a, you know, grab a cold one whenever you are, you know, don't move anywhere because it's action left, right and centre. There's all sorts happening down here at the Lord of Trams event. All right, not long left then until the start of this one. So uh, just to kind of wrap that up, Liam. So she was disqualified for 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 the help that she re received with the right. I just hope that she was offered it rather than it was um, given to her without uh, her choice. So, yeah. Yeah. So the name of the game sometimes, but uh, you know these riders, you know, we're all briefed in the morning. We have a big, especially on the first day of competition. This is the first day that we've been able to run comp, and there's always a big riders briefing first thing which is always normally a bit longer than the others we always have a skippers meeting in the morning before the comp starts but today you know we went through every fine detail with these riders but back to the action now lewis after what was uh, quite an exhilarating last 10 minutes it was i've still not finished with it i've got more to talk about it but <laughs> meanwhile it's justine avril with a mega loop one footer what an opener that was she just sneaked her way through in that last heat with that epic last move that we saw which is a boogie loop and she started off like she means to continue here, the uh, duotone rider with a lovely big uh, Megalute one foot. So that's going to score yeah. very well. But I'm still not finished with that conversation about Funny. the boats and everything. Because the last thing you want is some or one of those drivers to be in a bad mood and think, Do you know what, I'm going to go out here and disqualify as many people as I can today. They only need to get <laughs> their fingers happen? up. I think it has happened in the past. <laughs> people just want to touch a kite or grab it or get excited. And it's disqualified people when they haven't wanted to touch the kite but i'm sure that things are a bit clearer than that these days meanwhile michaela pilkington nice height on that mega loop little grab very good landing very heavy yeah, landing nice. but good landing uh nice start from her yeah looks fully loaded here with power as she just popped not necessarily getting the height maybe she was it wanting wasn't there it didn't no. seem like she got the elevator on that no one. it sort of sort of looked like it was a little bit in slow-mo that one but 7.3 metres, I'm pretty sure that uh, Justine before got an 8.2, if I remember rightly. So definitely got a little bit more height. So we're not going to see Michaela beat that 5.33, especially when it was just sort of a, 
you know your standard mega loop which right now you know these riders are going to need to do a little bit more than than just those bad boys oh that's a nice yeah. and aggressive uh like a boogie loop that for me justin avril who's a top rider she is she's used to finishing up there in the top five and uh, we're going to see a nice replay here quite an early commitment to pulling putting the kite but i guess she's not super miles up in the sky she wanted to get that kite round, so nice move from her she was ranked uh, fifth she finished fifth in the in the world last year so she definitely doesn't want to be leaving the event now liam that wouldn't be uh, right up her street but she's drawn against michaela pilkington and she had a pretty good yeah year good result she, this is fifth three fourth currently um, seeded bragging so, rights mm, don't but. want to go out here and uh, do you know what you get for your reward of winning this you get a place in the next round up against the world champion michaela salt Oh, we're going for the one-footer as well. A bit early, though. Justine pulling that one-footer actually after the loop, but Michaela looked like she pulled it sort of maybe just before. Yeah, I, in some ways I think that's harder, but she just lacked on height. She didn't have the bar in the whole way to get that elevator on the way up. So a different technique and actually something I would feel would be a bit harder to control that loop with one hand and one foot out, um, but just lacking the height, which is really what the judges are all about. They've explained yeah. that clearly. Big air's about height, and if you're not getting up there, we can see that was four meters here on the surfer app. The judges don't actually use this data directly, but it's wonderful for us um, here and for you at home to show you just how high these riders are going with these phones that they have. They don't have to be new phones, old phones, just carry the software. It's an app, the surfer app, and uh, yeah, look at the height difference. Uh, a big mega loop with a delayed back roll. Julian Hoon has uh, just popped his head into the live stream booth. Are we going to have you pop on here shortly, Julian? Yeah, you want to come on board for a little bit? All right, Liam, I'm going to release you to some other duties. Yeah, I'm well, sure I'm a busy boy, so yeah. I'm it's, sure you'll uh, find something to do. <laughs> exactly, thanks. you know, it's, uh, it's a world tour event at the end of the day, Lewis, and there's plenty going on at the spot. Thanks very much, Liam, and joining us now in the live stream booth, competing in the men's division and commentating with me last year. It's uh, Julian Huyn. Hey Luis, welcome. Uh, oh, I'm I'm telling myself welcome back. That's okay. That's, that's <laughs> nice. The wind has picked up. It really went windy earlier, didn't it? And then yeah. it's kind of dropped a little bit again. And uh, and here we are, Julian, in this uh, all or nothing heat for these two. Have you been in a heat like this before, where you have to win or you're leaving? What does it feel like? Um, yeah, it's quite stressful, especially now that they're only uh, two competitors and they jump. One at a time. Oh, nice boogie loop here from Michaela. Ooh. Ooh, bad check. But uh, yeah, it's quite stressful, especially now that they jump um, one by one. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's quite uh, very stressful. You've got to have a good heat here if you want to stay in this. Yeah, perfect. I was I was at the beach uh, earlier, um, helping Anjali out, and uh, yeah, the wind was quite strong uh, earlier. We could see they were really powered, and now we can see Justin coming in for an extra attempt. Front roll contra loop. Not really getting the landing here. Here's the replay then of this move. You can see it's not really super nuking now. The riders that's reasonable height there the bar looked quite sheeted out for me is perhaps why she didn't have that connection with the kite so far and one of the delays i've just read up here from uh, the race director messages one of the flags was broken the blue flags was broken i just saw a message there flag broken repaired done so, so that was perhaps why we had one of our delays just earlier but um we are running nice and smoothly now here it is the lords of tram the GKA Kite World Tour. It's the big air here in France, opening up the year. It won't, be, it won't just be a once-off one this year, Julian. It's going to be two events, maybe even three, I've been told, which will count to the overall big air world champion. Big air's just got massive in kiteboarding. We're about to see why this weekend. Looks like Michaela Pilkington. Nice technique, this. Yeah, nice leg back row here from the American. Uh, Hawaiian, I think. American, but yeah, Hawaiian. Um, yeah, definitely getting some good technique. We can now see she's edging hard, waiting a little bit to loop the kite and then going around it. So yeah, that's definitely a nice trick. And it's definitely a move. If you've ever thought of trying that move, one way works a lot easier than the other. The other way seems to be something you have to 
train yourself to do, but maybe in my case anyway. But the one way just feels right. Great technique that of Michaela Pilkington. Finishing the mega loop, spotting it, getting a bit sideways on and the way up, and then really committing to throwing that back roll. So this is going to be an important move in this heat then. So Justine Avril is currently leading this one. She's over about three points. But, oh, she's had to... Oh, she's gone for it. It looked like she aborted that, Julian. She got the mega loop in. Probably won't be as extreme, maybe, as she'd like to have scored, but through it anyway. Yeah, definitely. She, she It's it's her type of, type of riding. I saw her ride a couple times. Uh, she always delayed that loop a little bit, and she obviously gets more height um, than the other competitors, so maybe it's a technique. Uh, but yeah, she's not getting really the, the power into the loop. Uh, but yeah, Justin, the winner of the previous um, Bigger Kite League Tour, um, yeah, she won the tour, so I think she might have a little pressure uh, also um, to be against all those all those crazy girls, Angeli, Mika. We can see now that they're progressing so fast, and we have Michaela going to the right for the next trick. Michaela Pilkington then from uh, Hawaii. Well, from the United States of America there. She's down at the moment on points. She has had one, two, three, four moves. They'll get seven as one-on-one. -on -one, is that correct? Yeah, this is big. that was big. Oh, she just couldn't stick it. She looked so like... I mean, look at the water. It's a lot choppier as the riders get down. When they take off on that nice flat water, you'd bet your money that she's going to land this from here. Nearly all big air riders would fancy themselves. Bit of chop affects that landing she just couldn't stick it she's got, really got to try and shake that off now julian because she's got to perform justine avril is having a very solid heat here scores very much around the five point region if she can just improve a bit more on this this is a big boogie loop i think she would have got higher and with a bit more power the bar sheeted in meanwhile though it was still a good control this is what i'm talking about i'm looking at the control bar as she comes around here it's just a bit further out there but it's actually still that was reasonably well executed from Justine Avril. Will it be enough though to upgrade one of her scores? She's already got a kite loop front wall of 5.17. I'm not sure that's going to replace. I oh, know it has been so I think that was a 5.6 uh, or 5.5 that she's got for that last move that's upgraded it. Yeah definitely she's riding doing a good heat. Um, yeah, just keeping everything under control. We can see she's doing everything she knows how to do. And yeah, I think she's, uh, for now at least, uh, winning the seat for sure. Uh, but Michaela, I saw her do some quite crazy stuff in Cape Town. So yeah, we have to keep an eye on her. It's just a straight kite loop scoring 3.77 for her. And she needed a kite loop there, really. That's devastating that she hasn't been able to to replace that score, Julian. It's looking like this might be an exit for her. Just here, it just has to feel right on the way out. We had this lovely discussion with Ruben earlier where she just didn't feel right. She had good height, but she just didn't feel it was the right time to loop it. And that's a matter of more than anything of safety with a mega loop. The last thing you want to be doing is sending it without even taking off in your head. You do that at the start. You're like, I'm just going to send it. That's how you get injured. Yeah, definitely. You need to have the tension in the kite before you loop. Oh, nice kite loop with a tail grab. Landed. Almost looked like she tried to remove the foot out here. I wonder if we watch this replay. These replays are coming in really nice and fast. Did she manage to get a foot out of here? Yes, yeah, she did. She just kicked it out. And I hope the judges saw that. Difficult move to perform. And I think she shuts the door firmly on Michaela Pilkington, but there's still a glimmer. There's still a glimmer of hope here. She can upgrade one of her lower tricks here, maybe coming for a Devastator, but that move from uh, Justine's probably going to bump her up to around uh, the 17 or 18s in total. Yeah, definitely. I think Michaela is now going to do her last trick. Um, yeah. Only a we'll 4.7 she's got from that. So. Yeah, I think uh, I think this is the end of it now. It's, uh, it's not going to score massively. That straight kite loop, an 8.8 .8 meter on the surfer app. And uh, here we're going to see a nice replay of pretty much the last move in the competition then from Michaela Pilkington, who unfortunately is just going to have to settle with being ousted from the rider that had a slightly lower ranking than her. And uh, Justine Avril looks set to advance. 
Here are the Lords of Tram. It's the GKA Big Air Kite World Cup here in Bacharez. And we'll be up very shortly with round number three. Just in Avril, that just won uh, the last hit and she made it to the quarter final. How was it out there and are you happy to make it to the quarter? Yeah, I'm super happy to win my hit. Now uh, the wind is picking up a little bit before compared to the other one. So now I'm uh, against uh, Mika. So not the easiest uh, hit, but uh, I will push hard to, to do all the best. Yeah, but you know this win, you know the Tramontana, so yeah, you got this advantage. Congrats for this one and uh, send it to the next one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, uh, Val, on the beach there. That's an ecstatic. Uh, Justine Avril, who's worked her way through. That's the second heat in a row that she's done now to, uh, to carry on through this competition. And uh, she's done really well. Round three coming up shortly then, and uh, we will have heat number one of round three. Natalie Lambrecht against Johanna Distier. French rider for you to support here. Yeah, a French rider that I actually met in Cape Town this year. Uh, I was sharing a, a house with her, and yeah, quite a sick person, and she's progressing and sending some quite some big stuff. So yeah, really looking forward to to watch her. I talked with her a little bit and she was telling me she was enjoying a lot riding here. So hopefully she's going to have fun and yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we're hearing her name a lot here in Big Air in the ladies. She finished fifth last year on the tour and uh, maybe she can hopefully go one better. She needs to, to win this at heat to advance to the semi-finals, of course, and uh, that's where she'll, she'll want to be. But wow! What is this for a start? Wow, massive loop on that duo tone on the walls. That was big. Yeah, that was big. Unfortunately, she got a little butt check. Uh, but yeah, that was definitely big from uh, Natalie. You can check now, good height, good tension in the cut. And yeah, not really getting the landing, but that was a good one for sure. It wasn't too bad though, that butt check. So just with the height of that, it may well score, I think maybe a four or five. I'm just going to throw that out there. There she is out there uh 12.6 meters that's what i liked about that the height and 60 meters in distance with our surf app so it's just a 4.07 but sometimes just having that on the board can be useful of course she would have loved a cleaner landing and that might have pushed it up but uh, a reasonable start from her but this is interesting johanna this is down on the beach now this must be her with a call kite in front of us and there's some real drama here because she's not on the water yet yeah, now we can see her now that um, she is having a, a little problems launching. I think some bars went over over her bar, and uh, and yeah, people haven't been really respecting the rules uh, for rolling your lines when you're done. Uh, so yeah, that's what happens. So there she is. There is the call kite then of uh, Johanna Distia. Is she being timed out? Let's take a look at the big screen. No, I think... Uh so on the big screen here, she's on zero out in front of us. So 
it is the rider's responsibility to be out there on time and in the, in your heat. So I wonder how flexible the judges will be for her here now because I can see uh, the flag has been raised already. Blue flag then for the next rider. I think she's been scored a zero there, Julian. That's big John. But there she is on the water in that white rash vest looking around with a bit of panic in her eyes and there's a reason why she's looking like that because she has missed one of her tricks. Yeah, definitely. Um I think she's going to be pretty bummed about that late back row here. Nice from Natalie, nice and clean. Uh, but yeah, to come back on Joanna, I think that's quite a, a mental pressure right before you eat to have that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, hopefully she'll make the best out of it. Nice replay then of Natalie uh, landing that move. Uh, and luckily really for Joanna, she hasn't really been punished too badly, but that said, it's not just one trick that she's been affected by now. The second trick here, well, there she is. She's way further downwind in that white rash vest. There's a nice shot. She's out there in the chop right now. That time is probably ticking. Again, 40 seconds, we remind you, the riders are allowed to perform their move. That gives them maybe two, three, four tacks back and forwards. But Johanna Distia is probably in danger of being counted down again here. May well be forced to have to trick left foot forwards now out in the chop. Yeah, I think she's going to come back to the shore uh, and and send the loop. But she has to do something uh, quite quickly now as the time is still running up. Ten seconds I looked at about eight seconds ago. So she has to send this. That's a nice takeoff. Oh, she could have done with looping it. So it's really thrown her off here. Her first two moves aren't going to score pretty much anything. It's definitely the first one is zero. So she's got five tricks left and only her three best tricks will count here. Natalie Lambrecht's probably looking at this like, wow, that is a nice cushy start to this heat. Yeah, definitely. I don't know if she's happy or not happy, um, Natalie, because it's always better to compete against someone. But um, yeah, for sure, at least now Joanna is back in the game. And we can see now Natalie is getting blown off by the, by the guest. I think she's riding a seven. Same for Joanna, so the wind looks about 30-something 30, 30 knot. There's quite a big gust now. So Yeah, yeah. wind has picked up here, and Johanna Distia is really going to have to snap herself into gear here as uh, coming towards the beach. Look at that flat section here. That she's lovely takeoff. This is massive. Huge grabbed mega loop. Looked like she wanted to take the foot out of the board, and she gets bombed out of that one. Almost punched like a micro burst out the sky Julian what happened here talk me through this replay yeah so we can now see that Natalie is doing I think she wanted to take the the, the one footer but uh, on the landing the wind is a little bit gusty and uh, the water is a little gusty um, a nice 12.9 meter jump and she I think she maybe pulled the bar a little too much and maybe the kite didn't really fly like it was supposed to fly. But we now have Joanna coming in full swing. Jump, kite loop. And she opens her account. So it's a third trick attempt. May well be in her mind her first one. And the replay here is going to be of that move as the wind turbine spinning in the background of this beautiful view in this spot here in Baccarat. Straight mega loop. I don't think she's going to get much more than a four for that. However, Julian, she's got a lot of work to do here as Natalie Glambrecht is uh, she's she's had a good start here and even when she doesn't get the trick she quite wants she's able to 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 deal with it yeah definitely for sure and we are now going to see Natalie going for her fourth trick attempt and yeah the wind is looking like it's picking up we can see some white caps we can see the wind we can read the wind on the water and you know the wind is strong when it does this. And we now have Natalie coming in with a good amount of speed. Good pop, nice takeoff, kite loop, one foot. Yeah, that's a tough one there for me. Kite work was perfect, but just if that foot doesn't go back nice and cleanly in that foot straps, it didn't, didn't look to me like she got a nice connection back in here. She got that yank. And it was never quite firmly in there. You just can't ride away like you would with a foot tightly in the strap. So unfortunately, that's going to be a very low scorer for Natalie. And, and, and really, she has left the door open a little bit for Johanna Distier here. So there's still some hope for your French uh, teammate, I imagine. Here she comes. Yeah, here comes Joanna. 
Nice boogie loop. That was big. Wow. Is she gonna land it? Oh, the kite went too far but back. I was watching the this directly from the the window, and as I saw the kite went super far back. We can now see jump. And the kite, she didn't really bring the kite to continue the trick. She kind of waited a little bit or hesitate. And sometimes you, you don't have the time to hesitate. And unfortunately, she paid it off just now. Julian, explain. The kite went behind her. What would have been the best things you could have done in that situation, B? Um, I reckon when the kite goes like this a little, a little too much backwards, um, you have to send your down loop to stop that momentum. Oh! That was a massive boogie loop. The kite angle was insane. She's definitely stoked about that. I think she got a little fright. I was, I got a little fright for her. But we're yeah, not going to watch the replay. The fright we got was that the kite went very level with her, especially with that kite of can. But that touchdown is as good as you can get. And quite rightly, she was ecstatic. This is going to be big. And I think this is over the sevens. Yeah, 8.27 coming in from Natalie. But it was in the same trick category as one of her others already but she's in the control seat here yeah definitely i think uh that's that's the type of trick that boosts your confidence in the water uh it makes you feel good it makes you think positive and not negative so yeah i think she's definitely in a good mindset now um for the rest and we now have joanna coming for a trick attempt she looks powered the kites at 11 she's edging hard and we're now going to see what she's going to go for uh, she didn't really get the takeoff she was wearing for, unfortunately. Ooh. Yeah, she come a bit. It looks like she's been a cropper there of two sort of dodgy wind jumps there. She's going in for what looked like a boogie loop for me there. Didn't quite find the rotation. It didn't feel it. You've really got to feel that move because it's very blind as you come around. It's all in the feeling on the uplift for that. And then interestingly, she ended up with a rewind, spun back round. Kite ended up way above her again, and she's got slammed down in the water. So she's going to need a near-on miracle if she's going to be able to to oust uh, the number three, currently ranked number three uh, from last year's Big Air event in Tarifa at the World Championships. Natalie Lambrecht, who's making a real name for herself, not just in Big Air, but freestyle as well. But Natalie looking really strong here. And uh, let's take a look who they might actually come up against here. Because the way I see this is that uh, the first in this heat here is going to come up against first of heat two. So that will be Zara Hugenrad or Anjali Boulois, which is already a belter of a heat. They're going to come up against very likely Natalie Lambrecht. Uh, bar a miracle here from uh, Johanna. Yeah, we now have Natalie coming. I think she... I don't know if it's, she's going to jump to the left. Oh, it looks like it. Looking for the gust. Jump, kite loop, point footer. She's gonna land it this time. Oh, late rotation. Yeah, just span completely out of control. One hand on the bar, especially sheeted out, can really present you with all sorts of difficult positions. You look good from here, but then just as the kite as the kite shoots up above you again, if you're not perfectly in control, it can spin you back around there. So. Natalie, for me, I'm surprised here she hasn't just gone for a simple trick in her third uh, trick category here, just to shut the door and to sort of end the hope from Johanna this year, because Johanna still does have a chance really here. Yeah, definitely. We saw Johanna can pull some big moves. Um, this spot is gusty, so I guess can literally change everything. She's so got to land this. Sorry to interrupt. She has to land this move. A back row kite loop, not really getting the landing. I think she wanted to go for a um, double rotation, uh, but she only did one. I think actually she fought against it. I think here's where you go for it round. She's fought against it here. But if only she could have landed that a bit cleaner, I think it would have given her a good basis to work off for this last move. That was her sixth trick attempt here. Uh, it's a back roll mega loop, so it will go in as a score. Possibly yes, a low 3.77. It's given her... A chance, though, because still, this is a very important moment in this heat for these ladies to try and make it into the semi-finals. Because it, I think this is a... Uh, oh, no, she's got two trick attempts left. Has uh, Natalie. And it's just interesting, that lucky blue rash vest earlier of uh, Johanna Distier. Natalie Lambrecht's wearing it now. Here she comes then, left foot forwards, in towards the crowd, heading towards the north. Oh, there is the mega loop one footer. 
for Natalie. And actually, the score's now being updated on my screen. So they weren't fully with us there, but now she has got three big scores on there. That was a big move, Julian. Yeah, that was a big move, and we can now feel in the commentator booth the wind is coming. The, it's for sure coming. It's strong. It's very nice. I wish I could go kite, to be honest. And uh, yeah, we can see now on the camera and Natalie and the body language. Um, yeah, she's really powered, and we are now have Joanna coming in the gas. Um, is she going to use it? We will see just now. I think this will just be the last move for her for the crowds. Lovely big mega loop. Can she stick it? Oh, she just gets bombed out. We so often see that on the landing with the wind being a little bit gusty down there. That wasn't... It looked like a nice technique on the way. Flying high above the horizon. I think that has to be 10 metres or higher. We'll see that on our surfer app data, which is always lovely to see. But that, unfortunately, will be the end of the line then for Johanna Distier. Yeah, unfortunately, Joanna will be out um, for this time, but she's definitely going to come back fourth swing. And yeah, congrats to Natalie for going through this round. And we now have um, Zara Hukenkrad and Angeli Bouillot, the Frenchie, another Frenchie, coming for the heat. They have the exact same kite. And yeah, we're going to see what this battle is going to be about. This is the Lords of Tram at the GKA Kite World Tour. It's big air here. Welcome, thanks for joining us, and thanks to everyone that's stuck with us throughout the day here. So we had difficult weather at the start, but the wind's starting to get clearer and stronger. Now, more consistent, actually, is the term. It's not really clear right there. That was the wrong word completely. Look at that. That's overcast. Um, and we've had blue sky. It's been hot. It's been cold. We've had a bit of everything today but the women's really starting to heat up now as we work our way towards the semi-finals this is going to be the heat of the day i think here zara hugenrad against angeli abura and angeli didn't finish where i think she would have liked to have done last year ninth on the tour and she's really a top five rider zara finishing second so this heat is one of those heats where you think how is this one lined up early but often is the way with a competition ladder it can happen this way this is going to be a big heat. Who do you think is going to take this one, Julian? Um, I think uh, it's definitely a hard choice. They're quite similar riders. They can send some not re quite technical tricks, but like really high and really with the kite and that has a good angle. The kite is going low. Um, so I think it's definitely going to be a big battle here. Um, yeah, we'll see who takes it from those two, two chicks. Both riding core kites, uh, both riding Alula prototypes. Um, yeah, we can now see the brands are moving to some new, new materials. We've been seeing it uh, a lot. We're starting with uh, the SLS, and now there's the Alula D Lab, and yeah. So we'll see what's happening. Okay, go, Mika. So Natalie, congratulations. Tell us about the condition and this crazy boogie loop you did. Like everybody got scared on the beach, but the kite angle was insane. <laughs> Tell us about that. Yeah, that boogie loop made my heat. Otherwise, I was struggling a lot because I think I was way too overpowered on my seven. Should have probably been on a six. But like that boogie loop made it. I mean, without it, I don't think I would have passed. So I'm super happy I managed to land with so much speed. But yeah, it felt good. <laughs> Congratulations, best trick of the day so far. So yeah, keep on going, uh, semi-final next. Good luck and uh, send it. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. So we go again for the next hit of the quarterfinal. <laughs> Doesn't matter what the word is for overlay. I'll find out another time, Julian. Meanwhile, wow, straight out the shot. Oh, it gets a bit of a lull on the way around that loop then was Zara Hukenrad. That looked like uh, she didn't get the lift I was expecting, Julian. So we no, definitely not. We saw the cat stall a little bit after the loop. Um, usually when this happens, you, you push the bar. But what I reckon, what I've, I've been seeing with those cats a little bit, we can see that they stall a little bit. And when I went to Angeli when she was competing earlier, um, I was talking with Angeli and I was telling her to trim her cats a little bit. And she went absolutely massive after that. 
Um, so yeah, the kite setting is something uh, that you really have to worry about. And we now have Angeli coming in for the next trick attempt. This is big. If she can stick this, look how far she's gone here. Can she stick it off? Look how often that happens. Landing in that chop, she's going to be devastated. She couldn't open the heat like that. And now she's going to play catch up. Look at the height on this. It's really nice technique. Very unique style for this move. And her foot clearly come out and she can't quite ride away like we saw earlier on what is doing. Yeah, definitely. She really has that style on that late there was all those late rotation with the kite loop. She always goes super inverted, and we now have Zara coming for a second trick attempt. Um, coming with a good amount of speed. Boogie. Nice. And landed. Um, yeah, it's not as high as Angeli's jump, uh, but she's definitely getting some confidence in for the rest of the heat. She's a very good uh, competitor, is uh, Zara, and she knows how to build her heat. I don't think that's going to be a trick that's in her top three, but maybe this is about just getting... So she's too kind of, she's new up here. That's one way to think about it. She's 11.54 to zero. And Angeli will know. Angeli will know. If she doesn't land this one, she's interesting her position in the box here. She looks a bit further downwind to me, Julian, but she's going to got one thing in her mind she wants to do, that is to go as big as possible. Can the local crowd help her here? She's got nice and high. Good decision. Make a loop delayed back Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you read before the jump that um, her kite position was nice, nice inverted rotation. She really does it this way. It's, it's quite scary to be honest. I've, I've been trying a couple of times, but uh, it, it just scares me. I don't know how she does this. I've been in that position once before and then I woke up in hospital two weeks later. <laughs> it was a very strange position to be in, sort of backwards on, on the way out. It's almost like a bit frontwards, backwards. You can't even work out if it's front or back on. It's very inverted. It works for her and uh, that was a nice reply to her and a very good timing from her. There she is. There's both of your riders then. Zara Kuchenrad from the Netherlands coming in. Vice World Champion. She's going to be up against it. If Angelie Boulois is in the mood today, which she looks like she is now, she's going to be up against it. Let's see what Zara can do now. Big loop with a nice guy angle. Um, I don't think that's nice what she was going to go for, but we can now definitely see that the wind is picking up. Um, so they're going to focus on some nice big mega loops and uh, yeah, less technical. I don't feel like the kite hit a nice bit of wind as it went round in the mega loop there. It looked like it didn't hit a constant wind. She lost that constant feeling, perhaps why she didn't go into a rotation uh, or something like this. But we can hear in our live stream booth here now, it's getting very strong the wind as it builds up and it's the right time for it to do so. Yeah, we can now see the beach is smoking. The sand is starting to fly, and even in the water, there's so many white caps. It's definitely picking up now. Um, so, yeah, we have to keep an eye on this lead because the just uh, super hot. And Anjali coming in. Power. This could be massive, Julian. This one could be big. Oh, kite loop. She definitely wants to go for the ball drop. She's sick yet, but that's not what she wanted to go for. I think she's going to go again for it. I think she saved that quite well. So she reaches down into the board, and there's just too much power on the way around that loop to get in. But she rescues this quite well with a bit of a grab. The judges will see this as a bit of a, a messy move, um, but it's still probably going to score three or maybe a low four at best maybe for it, just because of the height. It was 10 meters up in the sky, seven seconds in the air. It, will, it might be useful. It kind of helps to eliminate Zara's 4.50. So it is a score on the board. Yeah, so 4.93, that's actually a big score. So Angeli here is in a nice position. She's got two of her scores are higher than two of Zara's already. So I think the momentum starting to change in this scene. I think Zara needs to go for something big here. She's got a kite loop back roll that's big and a kite loop front roll. I think a standard kite loop could be improved here. Or maybe she's going to try and take the foot out. Yeah, definitely. Oh, she missed the takeoff. I think she managed to stay on the water here, though. That was unbelievable riding there. To me, the judges won't count that as a, as a score. Yeah, for sure. But we can now really uh, read that we're strong. 
Um, they're really holding in against the kite. And, yeah, it's picking up. Uh, we can now see Zara coming in full swing. Nigel for a big late back row. That's big. The amount of people who got through this loop, this is going to say that, 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 that is going to be big. That has to be into the nines for me, Julian. What an answer back. This is about to get crazy this year. I can't wait to see this score. That was wonderful. Yeah, definitely. And the kite angle was really nice. She really had that slug <laughs> after the loop. Um, she probably had the adrenaline pumping uh, through that. And she's definitely stoked about that. Uh, let's see what Anjali responds. So it's an 8.43 coming in here for Zara, and it may well have not been in the nines due to technical difficulty. It was a straight mega loop, so maybe I got a bit excited, Julian, because the height was 12.4. It looked a bit more than that to me. But I mean, I don't know about you, Julian, but for a second there, I didn't think that kite was going to take her. Uh, and, and when she went for that rotation, uh, for the, during that late back, she really committed to it. Uh, she inverted, and we now have Anjali coming. See what she answers to Zara. Yeah, is she gonna land it? Yes. Yes. She does. Uh, she's definitely gonna be stopped. A good answer to Zara, to be honest. Uh, she's pulling the bar even higher, and uh, yeah, and it's that was big. That's at least 11 meters. So it was actually a kite loop. It wasn't a straight kite loop that Zara had done. So it has kicked out her other kite loop back roll, which was a decent score anyway, 6.07. So we're seeing possibly the highest score is of the lane so far. This could go 9.0 then from Angeli Brewer with that amazing mega loop ball. If she's setting herself up for a big finish, she's got 4.93 currently on the board. And that's only a kite loop as well. So she still could open up in the. Uh, the Boogie loop category, something quite big to kick that out. So now we go over to Zara. You know, we've got to boot out the 4.5 here. Yeah, she definitely looks powered. The wind went up for sure, and she's now. Um, I think she's might turn around. Um, hopefully, the judges will be uh, kind of. Uh, uh, let you miss that takeoff, um, but uh, we'll see just now. This is one of those heats you don't want to end, and actually, fortunately, I can't believe we've still got three trick attempts here from uh, Zara to Adam. Um, we've got uh, quite a few more from Angeli. So what Zara's got is a with a she fixed that. Oh, that's a big back slap, that one. Dude, it looks like she was going for the, the mega loop with a, with a foot out. She's trying to replace that 4.50. Uh, she wanted to go for the, for the one footer, but unfortunately she couldn't grab the ball and the feet uh, went in already. So I went out already, sorry. So she didn't land. But now I've only been a good amount of speed. Very fast coming out of there, and she's to disappear through the water sometimes. Oh my Jesus! Does Angelique, God, the sounds coming into this live stream booth are quite scary now. They're like they're sort of like low drones. <laughs> there is a replay of this massive, just the acceleration she had downwind. She just couldn't stick it. Look at the ramp starting to build there of chop. So unfortunately. Angeli couldn't, couldn't stick it, but that 9.0 she scored has absolutely rocked this heat and Zara is going to have to compose herself if she comes back into this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think um, We're now going to see Angeli just grabbing a board, going back to the shore and we have Zara which has two tricks left, two tricks attempt and we'll see what she will be able to do, um, yeah, to just do now. She's she looks quite powered, Zara and yeah, we can uh, experience one of the jumps, and yeah, almost on her all the edge, so jumps, I jump. yeah, straight jump, she didn't really get the take off, she was super powered, we could read from the body language. She just recovered from that 9.0 from Angeli. That really did uh, mix things up here. Second trick in a row, she hasn't really stuck something, Zara. It's still all to play for. Oh, really? If Angeli lands something big in her next oh, really? move, you feel like this could be difficult to reply for Zara. And it's 
I'm seeing an Anjali that's really focused here at this competition. I think most would argue that she hasn't achieved or finished in positions that she deserves for the standard of her riding. The first lady to have in the Red Bull King of the Air is a in the ladies department. She breathes her breath to calm herself down now as it looks like she's about to slam the door shut on the Vice World Champion 2022 here. So I'm going to be thinking in her mind now. Come on, calm down. One more big move and I'm in that semi-final. Here she goes then, Julian. Is she going to go for a good move? I know she's doing big. Oh, that's good. She's going to get a clean landing. Oh, no. Lucky it seems for them, Lanny. She's flying up in the air. She comes down here. I love this, Julian. That was an absolute massive understanding of a boogie loop. Right foot forwards. That's a switch tack, everyone. That's like writing with a different hand. If you write with the left, doing it with the right. That would have shut the door, I think, firmly, Julian. But she's just left it open here for Zara Hugenrad. Yeah, definitely. I think that was a good trick. Um, she chose the good trick to do now. The boogie loop was the right thing to do at that right timing. Unfortunately, she didn't get the landing, but I think she's still going to be stoked about it. I think she needs something like a 6.8 here. And no, it's about 6.8, I'm pretty certain. What she wants to get to do, strong enough, what she thinks I'm doing. Yeah, I'm seven. Maybe more than that. She will do just a leap seven here. She's going to waste the 4.5 zero. It will be the end. And it's a huge bit to come down with some speed. It can't be sticky. She's got to go to the big bomb. She ended up right near Angeli there. I'm sorry, yeah, she yeah. traveled here 90 meters in distance. And she's just pulled nine seconds out. That was absolutely massive. Yeah, that was definitely big. I think she should have maybe waited for Anjali to just get a board back and uh, to just ride on it. She decided to go for a trick attempt. And that was definitely a big move. You can now see 14.5 meters. That is big. 90 meters an hour. The stat here that I'm looking at from the surf race, 98 kilometers an hour. That's the fastest point that she traveled during that. We haven't seen much 50s today. That's how fast she got powered through the sky there, and I think that was a respectable way to maybe bow out of this heat. Angeli Mula is, is actually going to be going into the semi finals here, as that was the last move. So we're going to see now, they almost look like a raging sea. We're going to see that was an angry, angry little lake. Angry, an angry little lake here. We're seeing gusts to me here, well over. Yeah, definitely. Um, we saw the wind was picking up and picking up and picking up. And now it's definitely uh, everyone at the beach was waiting for the wind to pick up. And yeah, it's run out of time. People were saying it's going to pick up at 5. It's now 5, and the wind is in full force. Yeah, so that's the end of the final. We go straight into uh, the UK versus the USA. Yeah, and we can now. Uh, the wind is very strong. The, the launching is going to be a bit uh, trickier. And we can see the water is flying. We can even get a little bit cold in here. I might go wear my jacket because the wind's coming back. We can feel it. And yeah, very nice conditions here. 
Brunswick. Where is Francesca Manny? Is this the next heat? Where is she? I think there's two riders here that are going to be late into this heat. Yeah, this is a slow okay. entrance for these two riders. Um, perhaps they ended up in a position where they couldn't get out. But these two riders are going to heat you can actually get out onto the water because any time you're riding out there, you're in the landing area. So I'd say fortunately for both these two riders, they're getting ready. But this is still interesting because the other flag is up. Yeah, the yellow flag is up. Um, it's about to start. And, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The riders from the previous heat are coming back to the beach while the other two riders are going for their heat. Um, so yeah, very nice. So the real drama here on the beach, Francesca Marni about to launch. <laughs> close to her as she tries to get into the water, back into the heat, back these two. These girls are absolutely lit now. This is well over 40 knots. Yeah, we can get rid of this. We're not going for any of these. Angela Lua, who looks ecstatic in the background in the white rash vest, as her core card has been landed. In the background there is Francesca Lani rush out to her heat. And uh, it's her rash vest that's currently up. I wonder how much pace these riders are getting with these conditions to get in position. What do you think, Julian? Because that's her flag up. I can see the blue flag indicating that it's her time to trick. But these two girls, Anna Kai has got it. Unbelievable drama on your screens. Right there, Kylie Thomas again has a kite release on her for no reason at all. The jet ski is going to rush over to her. She's going to have to deny help with that jet ski because we know she will be disqualified. Here is a replay. What a replay we've got. Epic replay here. She's riding on boom. The chicky loop just blows out. This is incredible drama. Here, Julian, as this wind strengthens, she can't run have the help from the boat here. Well, I don't know where to start. Yeah, definitely. I've had that happen a couple of times. It's when the when you don't put the chicken loop properly into the hook, uh, when you get a little bit stressed, you forgot all the essentials. And uh, yeah, the essential is to put your your chicken loop good into your harness. You have to put your little into it so it doesn't fly away but I think uh, she didn't really put a, it happened to me a couple times uh, the guy just just pops out and but it's, it's weird because I don't know if she was still attached to the to the safety line um, I think so this is major Jeff. she can't touch the boat here she's in a very interesting position here whether or not she can touch the boat or not we have had a rider disqualified but she's looking around as to say what the hell am I supposed to do here now it's a good caddy you out there now passing that kite over if you can it's not an easy thing to do and I don't expect to see it but we have seen in competitions gone by a sacrificial caddy go out there pass over a kite in the water which is possible let that one go I think she's in a very precarious situation here can you rebuild a chicken loop out there Carly Toma and she's got a kite now flying in the sky but it's now very much firmly over to Francesca Miani. What a drama we're seeing here in this ladies' quarter final. Yeah, definitely. And relaunching the kite that's inverted and all that in those type of conditions is all. And we can now um, be sure that uh, Carly Thomas is going to be disqualified, unfortunately. And the boy just got a kite. But Francesca is still doing the show. Nice little loop. And um, yeah, it's very nice. Um, fortunately, uh, I think it's done for Carly. Um, she, she didn't even get to do her heat. That's, that's quite sad. Um, I'm trying to think if I was Carly, I'll be quite mad in the water. Um, especially if it's the second time. I didn't see the first time. Um, but yeah, if it's the second time happening, um, we can be sure that um, next year show put all your gear properly. And yeah. And uh, yeah, we can now see Francesca going for some nice jump, kite loop. Oh, she got yanked on this one, but she still landed it. She she always she always makes everything look so easy, Francesca. She's really one of those good riders that are pushing the sport. Uh, she's young. She's now in the F1 team uh, internationally and. Yeah, living the, the pro rider life. 
And I think she's super stoked about it. And now she's just ensuring a show uh, to everyone that's out here. And that, or uh, um, yeah, for everyone that's watching on the beach, getting cold, uh, yeah, still doing a couple jumps. And I can now see Carly running. I don't know if she will get disqualified if she actually goes back. Let's um, see, Julian. No, this is yeah. getting interesting. On your screen is Francesca Miani. He's just going yeah. through the motions of performing mega loop after mega loop. I think we're going to cut shortly to uh, Carly Thomas, who's launching a kite on the beach right in front of us out of our window. DQ is confirmed. The disqualification is confirmed for Carly Thomas, who's now rushing out to the water. We've got to get this scene down here in front of us here because... And another kite goes. Unbelievable. Another kite's gone right in front of us. Carly Thomas getting hugged by somebody on the beach. Yeah, th that's what happened when you stressed. She is probably so, like, she needs to get her mind right and she needs to get everything sorted out together. But we can now, I can see her now. She's, she's pissed off. She didn't, she was about to launch again and she probably heard disqualified, not disqualified, and didn't put the hook probably in the harness again. And as soon as she launched, the cat popped up. I don't know what will be going through her head right now, but Sam, can we see her on the on the screens? Carly Tomo on the beach. Really emotional times then on the beach. You're seeing a replay of Francesca Mani. I'm going to tell you what I'm seeing on the beach just out the window in front of me to the left hand side. There you are on the right hand side. So it's Carly Tomo with the white rash vest, absolutely devastated there. Third time her chicken loop's blown out today. She's walking around on the beach, absolutely bamboozled. She doesn't know what to do with herself here. She's just had a kite release on her on the water. She's looking at her hands, actually, Julian, which is a sign that that took a bit of an impact on the hands. She is absolutely devastated there. She was in the quarterfinals here in a world championship event, and she's been disqualified for the help originally off the boat. But that was the last thing she needed was to come in here. There is one of her kites that's been brought back to the beach. Devastating news for Carly Thomas. Yeah, and, uh, definitely. Yeah. We, we can we can see her now. She's she's really devastated. She's like she knows it's it's done, and she didn't even get to prove what she was uh, capable to do. Um, yeah, she was very focused on uh, on that competition. I had a little chat with her earlier. And yeah, she was really focused, uh, talking about some double loops, contra loops, variety, all of that. And uh, now Francesca is still enjoying the flight and the conditions. It doesn't happen all the time that you have one of those world-class spots um, for yourself. This is the Lords of Tram here. It is the GKA. Kite World Cup, it's big air. We're talking twin tip and we're talking drama here in the south of France. This has had absolutely everything today. We've had warm weather, 20 degrees, cold weather, strong wind. And uh, Carly Thomas said that must have been a hand injury. Was that her? No, Anna, it's, it's, that? it's Joanna. And I saw the wetsuit was cutted. Um, I, I do remember when they actually cut the wetsuit is that something happened. So I hope... Um, everything is going to get well, Joanna, and uh, that nothing too major um, happened to you. So that's one of our riders going off with a safety team that's had a bit of an injury. And on your screens right now is an equally confused Francesca Mani who's found her way uh, through this heat. This, is heat. this heat's done. Carly Thomas had a third kite release of the day, ended up uh, getting a bye. Here she is, Francesca Mani, just uh, doing a few more moves. <laughs> Definitely worth aborting that mega loop with uh, Hannah. So someone needs to be telling her, look, just get out the water. The next heat coming up now will be Michaeli Sol against Justin Avril, the French girl. And yeah, talking about that guy that just popped out, it's it's weird. Like I think she didn't put her, her leash on because the cat literally flew away. All right, we're going to cut to a quick commercial break before we get back to you with all the action here at the Lords of Tram. Lords of Tram is more than a competition. I was ready to catch you the spot. <laughs> From the beginning, the desire has been to bring together the best riders in the world to develop the big air kite discipline. 
To make an event, you need a lot of things. A team, organization, authorizations, budgets, and more. We are very grateful to our volunteers, our media team, and our judges. Everyone takes part in and is passionate about extreme sports. You will find them in the air or on the water. Partners are also a big part of the event. We are committed to creating meaningful links and building long-term relationships with them. Are we going down to the beach? Welcome back. Um, yeah, we got, we got the beach cam here, giving us a bit of a scene on the beach. Five meter kites now is the is the norm, but um, it's really windy down there now, Julian. This must be pushing 40, 45 knots, and we've had a few incidents there. Everyone seems to be okay. We've had uh, one of the riders just taken off here with the safety team um, from one of the big crashes. Then we had uh, probably one of the most biggest dramas of the day. It was Carly Thomas with a third, really, you're saying you didn't, she didn't put it back in properly for a third time in a row. I suspect something else was going on there um, with her setup. That I mean, that was devastating. Just as she headed out onto the water in this big quarterfinal uh, with uh, with the Brit, actually, it was, it, it just blew out. And then she come back in another one went, how must she fe be feeling right now? Yeah, definitely. And she didn't, she when you learn how to cut, you have to put your leash before your chicken loop. Um, that's a rule. If everything flies away, then you still can have it on the safety line. Unfortunately, she didn't thought about it because she's competing. She's in all that those emotions and everything. I think she uh, might have done, you know. It might have just broke. Maybe, maybe. We'll, we'll have the infos later. But, uh, yeah, she's definitely going to be bummed about that. We saw that she was pissed off. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. And we have Mikhail Isol and Justin, uh, who's going to come back next. Um, don't really know what's happening now. I think the, it might be on hold as someone got injured and the kite flew away. And yeah. There is your big air world champion to the left-hand side. Some sound of the ambulance in the background. Someone's... Uh it was okay, I think, but it may be uh, maybe minor leg injury. Let's see. We wait to bring you more information about. There's Michaeli Sol. She looks a bit shaken by what's going on. She's to the left-hand side now, pointing over here. There's the AP flag, which is currently up, telling everyone we're currently on a bit of a break. But just going back to the beach there, that was our current world champion there, who's pointing around on the beach and is uh, a bit shaken by some of the things we've seen here. It's been so windy. We've had everything today. We've had big crashes. Kite releases, di disqualifications. I mean, I don't remember a time we've seen so many DQs. We spoke about it at the start of the day, and then the DQs came thick and fast throughout the day, Julian. And it, you're almost in a position out here where it's offshore, where you kind of have a think about it for a couple of minutes, and maybe you just think, well, I've got no option. Yeah, definitely, because a heat is, what, like 10 minutes? You can't you can't swim back and get another kayak and go and beat the other person. You, you just simply don't have the time for that. And yeah, unfortunately, Carly is paying the fees of this. Um, she's definitely going to have some other competitions to prove, um, to show what she can do and show a level. Uh, but unfortunately, Lord of Charm 2023 is uh, over for her. Um, yeah, she has to focus on the future now, uh, leave that behind, even if she's think, still going to think a lot about it today, I reckon. Uh, but yeah, definitely. Welcome back then to uh, a very drama, drama-infused Lords of Tram here at the GKA Kite World Tour. It's the big air division and it is delivering us... The sun just makes a rare appearance these last few hours in between the clouds and it looks like there's just a sense of calm descending over the competition area right now for Michele Sol up against Justine Avril for a place in the semi-finals. It's actually Brazil versus France here, so we need to change that from Michele. We know, we know what the deal is. Um, but these two riders, go, both, both going out on the duotone dice kites now. And uh, this will be taking place very soon. Justin Avril really riding well to get through the harder 
stages of this competition coming through the second round. But yeah, the wind's just slightly come down a bit. Oh, we've got uh, Aaron Hadlow joining us. Julian, thank you so much for joining us in the booth. That was some massive, maybe one of the most drama-packed uh, sets of heats that I've seen. Thank you. Flabbergasted, Aaron Hadlow. I am flabbergasted. Did you see any of that action over the last uh, hour? Yeah, I've been watching a little bit, seeing some of the highlights there. There have been some mega moves go down and uh, some big crashes as well. Plenty of drama on the beach. I saw Carly in the last heat there, just couldn't get that second kite. And then when she had that one up, it got released. And yeah, it was just nuts. But that's what the wind does here. It's just, it's very aggressive when it comes through as strong as this. You see the gusts on the water. And uh, yeah, you kind of don't always know what you're going to get when you take off. You start these sorts of days where the wind's coming and going, 20, 25 knots, and you just never could envisage what is going to be on the table here as uh, the locals have now gathered here in their droves as the evening starting to kick into gear. 6.12 p.m. here. We expect to be able to run all the way up to around 7, maybe even 7.30, but just for now, the wind's just taking a little bit of a, a calm down. As I look out, there's no flags raised, so we might well... Uh, we'll be starting on with uh, the current Big Air World Champion, Michaeli Sol, up against Justin Avril. But Aaron, I almost can't need to regather myself after what I've seen here. It was only a while ago Ruben was in here and it was all quiet and calm. And then me and Julian have seen things I haven't seen in a long time. Multiple DQs, which, uh, you know, disqualifications, they're no easy thing to do to a rider, but we've seen a bunch of them today. Yeah, and it's tough because, I mean, at certain points you need to really know what you have to do uh, in those situations. And it's definitely something people gain with experience. Um, it's not always the case that you can, you know, do those things to avoid the disqualification either, especially if you're you're in trouble or, you know, you, you just can't get to that, that second kite in time. Um, and with some big crashes, yeah, everything's all over the place and you just cannot have that help from from the jet skis and um, anything like that it automatically disqualifies you unfortunately so but that's always part of the the rules it always has been in competition and um, yeah I think the, they will learn from that and and in the end of the day you know the conditions are tough out there and you, it's all about trying to get those big moves but you got to stay safe and and try and manage your way through these extreme conditions as well and now we are uh, yeah, just waiting for the flag to raise. We've got Mika Sol, uh, probably one of the, the hot favorites, defending champion here. And uh, Justine Avril as well, been riding very well in this event so far. And um, yeah, we're just waiting for this one to kick off. I see a flag raised there, looks like. So I think Mika should be up pretty soon now. Yeah, there is the blue flag. That indicates to the riders when it is your turn. They've obviously got this massive big screen down here where the screen man's just running behind me because I think that's not working on the beach. That's why we have these backup flags there. There's the blue flag, which has been hoisted high. That indicates the rider wearing blue is, is up and they have their time. What they can't um, convey to Mikhaili Sol right now is how long she has. So actually she has as long as she wants with that blue flag raise. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering if she's actually going to be getting on with it. There she is riding right foot forward straight away, Aaron. Yeah, it's big. Another big starter. She's been having some amazing starts so far. Oh, but she just oh, couldn't take quite it. Hey, take it. Yeah, when it gets choppy and you lose the tension in the in the lines there, she's been taking that one uh, each time at the beginning of her heats, getting a big score in the bag. But that one was, yeah, so close to landing. I mean, it was landed, wasn't it? Basically, it was 10, well, 10 or 15 meters till. And then just a chop took her, and uh, unfortunately that one won't score, I don't think. Yeah, I'd want that definitely not scored if I was one of the other riders. You've got to ride out of your trick smoothie. 13.2 metres high up that was. That was a real big jump for her, 70 metres in distance, showing her competitive experience. She knew it was her go. She didn't wait for the screen to be turned on. She knows the rules really well. As we see a lovely wide shot of just how far some of the riders are going here. That was Justine Avril getting a nice banker on the board but just to go back to that I thought that was really smart from Michaeli she could have easily got confused that the screen is currently not working on the beach the flag system is our backup here that's why we have it and her being a smart rider 
knew she needed to trick. Her flag was up, and unfortunately for her, she ended up way downwind here. She's riding, seems like, ages to get back up, but she looks pretty chilled to me. Hands off the bar. She's relaxed. Uh, she won't let that bother her, Aaron. No, not at all. Super experienced, and all the top riders, they just have so much more time to think about these things. Uh, you know, they know what tricks they can do. They just got a whole another area of the brain capacity <laughs> to just figure out all the other little details that are going on when it's your time you know working out the gusts when to when to take off and managing your space out there on the water and that's what you see with the top competitors mika's been in the game for so long in different disciplines she won't let anything like that phase her ap flag i've just noticed out the window again which uh couldn't tell you what that stands for but i've made my own mind up that was the a problem definition i gave that years ago there's a hand going up there from someone one of the flag team this green flag should be ignored on the left hand side i did report that my concerns over a green flag one of the uh lords of trams flag they assured me we don't have any green flags here so it doesn't matter but as a competitive rider a green flag always scares me i always <laughs> feel from the days of competing i've done is that a green flag means action time but that's gone by the wayside Yes, yeah, there's <laughs> plenty of flags on the beach and so many competitions that I've been in, I've also been looking back trying to spot that thing because they're often quite small <laughs> and mixed up with a bunch of others. So that's pretty hard. But in this situation, there's three massive flags there. I imagine it's just postponed slightly. They're trying to fix the, the main screen so it's a bit more clear for the riders how much time they have. Um, but that should be back online no, in no time. I hope um, that wasn't me that I'm playing. I'm standing here looking at the screen man, hearing behind me hustling around, and I'm just looking at my Mac charger thinking, I hope I had nothing to do with that. Yeah, it's strong down there on the beach now, and you can see <laughs> Mika really try to hold on to that six meter Evo. I think that's yeah. Carly Tomer down there, and uh, you know she's not just keeping her warm down there. Is that Carly? Yeah. Yeah, she's not just keeping her warm down there. That actually is really a nice thing to do for one of your big air riders here by just holding her like that. The amount of energy that she's able to transfer away from me here. She's giving her an actual break here. She's giving her a bit of a rest. Uh, if she just let her go now, she'd probably just pull the bar in and boost straight out on the water. So that's really not maybe what it appears to those of you that aren't kiteboarders out there thinking, oh, she's just trying to keep her warm or it's just, you know a best friend you know she's actually really offering a great bit of caddy experience there and, and any kiteboarding especially in strong wind it really does help your fellow kiteboarder out to hold the back of them whilst they launch or to just to be there as an extra to bit of weight yeah definitely i've never understood or I could deal with it when there's people just there waiting for full heats 20 20 odd minutes in this wind you just cannot underestimate how much energy it takes just to hold a kite down on the beach there and in this situation is differently different you're waiting because you're very soon to be back on the water and here we see again friend of Avril come down to, to hold her back and just take a bit of that energy out but looks like the AP is down and we'll be raising the blue flag for Mika and she'll be back out again shortly for her next trick so Mika had a crash and then Justine in the lead at the minute with a 4.6 from her first go. So Mika will be heading out and getting in line for her second trick attempt. And I imagine it's gonna be a repeat of what she did at the beginning and just try and land that. Cause that's quite a good score. We saw her get up to eight points for a, a big late back roll earlier in the round. So I think she's gonna be, yeah, going for that one again. It's the Lords of Tram GK Big Air Kite World Cup here in France, and that is a massive mega loop with a delayed back roll. She's going to be in the air at least seven seconds here. Look at the distance covered. This could be the first over 100 meters today, Aaron. That was massive. She got the magic gust as well. You can see on the way down, it was just absolutely <laughs> keeping in her, in the, her in the air. The kite was heli looping all over the place, and uh, she was just yeah able to control that. Very similar to the first one, actually, coming in hot, but she had gained her experience from the previous trick managed to ride that one out and i think that's yeah that's going to be a big score that was way more than 59 meters 14.3 meters and nope you didn't see the replay there just in case you think you've lost the plot that wasn't the replay of her massive mega loop delayed back well to the right that she prefers but what can justin avril do it's gone into a big big loop committed to that kite loop very quickly aaron and gets another bomb out here 
Yeah, it's a problem. When you pull the kite so early in a trick, it's really hard to control the speed, control the slack in the lines, and you see how early she got whipped, and then you're from there you're just a little out of balance. You're constantly trying to slow down and really break with the kite behind you. And in these choppy conditions with a lot of speed and a lot of power, you can see here, it's even a struggle to get back upwind. She looks like she enjoys it, though. You know, Kaylee Sol, multiple world champion now in freestyle, and she's really making a name for herself in the big air. And I, she just looks happy to me out here. Um, she's enjoying it. Look at that spray up in the face from Brazil. Quite a difference here, just getting absolutely... Uh, washing machined all the way across the bay as she comes back right foot forwards again but she just looks very calm it's going to take something very special to beat her here Aaron yeah definitely I mean we've seen some really insane tricks from many of the girls but I think yeah just like I say before with many of the top riders they're just so comfortable with a kite in their hands in any conditions and for anyone looking back at home looking at this thinking no way I'd be out in there or this would be such a struggle and it just looks so tough like it's just so funny as a rider like you just kind of get out there and at the beginning you you warm into it and then by the end you're just so comfortable in these conditions and it's a really hard feeling to to describe but then when these gusts comes you're actually looking to looking for them to do this sort of thing was that a second front row in there? Second rotation, and she just couldn't quite take that one either. And we'll never know what they'll score it. That's the devastation with that, Aaron, because let's talk about this. This is a huge boot loop. I can't believe the heights I'm seeing these ladies go. It's a doobie loop there into a second row. And again, just pulling the bar back, trying to create some tension, just bringing it as far back as you can to try and create tension. She couldn't find it. I mean, these scores would have been well up into the eights and nines if she'd landed that. But Justine Avril is still in there. She's only 0.13 down. Yeah, definitely. That was the same again. And um, just, yeah, just couldn't take that landing. And like, the thing is with these small kites and, and this much wind, you get so much pull towards the kite. Here she goes for a straight loop with a tail grab. Took the bomb there. Came out quick. But yeah, like I say, the smaller kites, you, you do have to be so precise with the steering. It's really ridiculous because the kite loops so quick. And then because there, there's just not much canopy, not much material up there, you come out of the sky so fast. So your timing has to be absolutely spot on with these smaller kites. And you see, yeah, let's make her on that last one as well. Like she just couldn't get the kite behind her enough to slow down and then... You're coming in so hot that it's just such a, a tough one. And although it's flat water where you take off, by the time you do get down, that's way more choppy than you can really uh, can see on the screen here. Almost halfway through this heat now, both riders having three trick attempts, Aaron. Is this a case for concern for Michaeli Sol, who's just got one landed move in her three tricks? Uh, no, I don't think so. She'll go out and get another big score, I think, here. And um, once she... Yeah, I think she'll be in a commanding position after her next trick and she'll be able to, yeah, just go for something that will just edge her in, in front. Um, yeah, she, it's a difficult one in this position because she's probably not going full 100% out, you know, she's trying to just get some big tricks on the, on, on the scoreboard, but like just these conditions, the point, if you do it as you just want to do it, the points are going to be massive anyway because the wind is just so strong and they're just going so big. I think it's suiting the riders right foot forwards quite nicely now. They really are coming into the beach. The wind has shifted round quite northerly. So here with that left foot forward, she's not getting the cut as they might have done before in, but it's suiting her. She likes this right foot forwards here. She's turning around. She's... Uh, I don't think she needs to go massive here, Aaron. It's what I've been thinking those last moves. You know, does she need to go this big? Or is she just one of those that can only go massive? No, there's the answer. Straight mega loop, land it. That was very experienced riding. Yeah, you wouldn't do anything different. She's in such a... Even though she's behind and only got one trick uh, score, her big trick from the beginning was so much higher that she just needs something decent mid in the mids there like four or five will just get put her in a really good position to to take the win there so she um she went first in the heat so now it's down for justin to to reply here and then um i think mika will go from there but again they just uh yeah she just knows what's what's on the cards what's uh, happening where she is in the heat and what she needs and that's uh, she's really able to gauge what tricks she really needs to, to get her scores. 
hardcore. Big Yankee, big New York Yankee on that uh, mega loop, the delayed roll from Justine Avril. She's needed that. Uh, here we go. Look at just the yank. Once you put your kite through the power zone, just look how fast it pulls you. Boom. Really nice control. That looked a lot higher on that. Yeah, that was a nice one, definitely. And um, good power, good pull, and uh, she should get a decent score for that, I think. That'll be a nice, yeah, 6.5 there come up. So, yeah. Um, how are we looking now? Yeah, so Mika doesn't need too much just to get in, in front there. Another four or so would put her in a decent position. So it'll be interesting. I think she'll still go for a boogie loop. Yeah. She's got to land this, though, to really feel nice and confident. And uh, yeah, that was a really well executed boogie leap from her. The nice replay here, Aaron. Did you like this? Yeah, it was good. Super controlled. She did get, could have got pulled out of position quite easily there, but she held it. And uh, yeah, it was all about the landing. I think in those situations when you need to land something, the, you just get the beginning, the first part of that trick done and just like really focus in from from the halfway point there. But what I've looked at today, Aaron, it doesn't seem to be what's going on up in the air above the water for these riders. It's the problem. It's the landing here where we're seeing so many moves executed perfectly and coming in just that extra distance downwind. Look at the flat water you get to take off from. That's nice. That is a bit out of sorts, boogie loop, but actually well controlled. Oh no, just down to the end. Didn't look good on the way up to me, but in that landing area where the water is so much more choppy, it really puts the pressure on to, to try and ride away. Yeah, it's definitely a combination of different things here because, yeah, you can just you can also go for the perfect trick and get everything absolutely in line. But if you hit one of the gusts that are out here in the critical moment of the loop, it's going to pull you out of position. You're going to get some slack in your line and it's going to throw you off. And then you often find yourself coming in way hotter than you could have expected. And at the same time, sometimes you feel like you're going to get the gust of your life and you just go nowhere as well. So it's a real balance. It's real, real fine feeling for, for what's around you and how that takeoff, um, how you're going in the original takeoff. Thanks for joining us here at the Lords of Tram is the GKA Big Air Kite World Cup in France. One of uh, maybe even three Big Air events here in the GKA. And this is your current Big Air World Champion just going through the through the how she landed that <laughs> amazing landing yeah how she landed that super good that's Again. a bomb out into a landing no that's that's what that looked like to me that was just one of those gusts that just totally disappeared there yeah, she was just out out of um no tension in the line but she had already done enough she was winning the heat um yeah justine would need something pretty massive and spectacular here to take that away from her now i was surprised and she went for that at the end actually i think she could have changed the the trick category and done something else but now it's down to to justine with the last jump of the heat i believe that's a big gust coming in here can she find something good she's gone for a double loop wow what a commitment that was right to the very end and the bar just gets ripped out of her hands. Wow, who goes for that unbelievable attempt here at a double loop? She got the high, Aaron, and she just held on, and she nearly got away with it. And magnificently avoided a front side block side tumble there, so reminiscent of Ruben where he got his tumble. I think she's okay there, but I yeah, can't believe it. definitely okay. What a trick. I mean, she knew what she needed. It needed to be a massive, massive trick to to get her through that round and I think that would have done it I think another meter or two yeah she was pretty close so unbelievable last trick there really putting it on the line pretty heavy crash but yeah she's fine she's got a got away with that one I don't even think it was her last trick here I'm pretty sure she had uh they got seven trick attempts one two three four five so I think that was her sixth trick attempt unless they've moved down to six trick attempts no because it's gone back over to me so that wasn't even she's got another go at this Aaron oh interesting yeah I saw the other girls getting ready for the next heat I thought maybe that was uh down to it so it looks like Mika's going is she going back out for another one I wonder if that was the word just to say look I've done myself there congratulations I'm out like I don't think she's coming back here is uh Justine Avril, she doesn't look like she's making an attempt for me to get back to the board, but maybe I'm wrong. But um, No, I think she's trying to get back, but 
it's actually so difficult to to body drag when you're that overpowered. You you hardly even can stay in the position, let alone go upwind. So you're right relying on keeping your position and letting the board drift down quicker than you. But yeah, she's struggling to get back to it there. I think she's fine. I want to see that again. I hope someone does bring. Oh, and Michaeli Sol's bringing her ball back to her because she wants to see it again. Could this be a dangerous move, Aaron? Would you do that? <laughs> Hard to say, definitely, but I think Mika's just got the confidence in herself, and I think any rider that does. And in these conditions, you are definitely. There's probably times in my career I might not have done it when I was younger, but in big air, it's a different ball game. You got to look after each other, and uh, in these crazy conditions, it's um, yeah, it's definitely tough. So she missed her chance to get the board back on here. She's waving frantically, and I don't think she's going to get another assistance from anyone to bring her ball back. That was her chance to get it. I don't think she's okay here. And I'm wondering, what's she waving for? Does she need the help from the boat? Yeah, so I think the boat's starting to go in here. Oh no, she is bringing her board back one more time, but this is her turn now, and I think her turn has been. I'm interested what Michaeli's done here. I mean, she wasn't exactly close, but it was tight enough that Michaeli's missed her go, I think. And I think that's really good sportsmanship, actually, for Michaeli. She's in a position here where she's well downwind. She's probably absolutely knackered with her kite at 12 o'clock, Aaron, and that was a really lovely piece of sportsmanship for Michaeli Sol, who just skips her own trick attempt, I think, because we're now on a... We're going into the next heat now, so she's just given herself a chance to get back, and I think that was wonderful for Michaeli to, to do that. Yeah, definitely. I think she knew she had it in the bag there, and the time had, had gone. Um, <laughs> just shows you how windy it is. It's just, it can't even body drag. Crazy. She's going to be knackered when she gets back to the beach. Okay, so next up we got Natalie Lambrick from Sweden, Angeli Bulia from France, and this is going to be a very interesting heat. We're getting down to the later stages of the competition now, and both of these riders have been absolutely sending it. Angeli's had a couple of standout tricks for sure, huge tricks uh, throughout the day, and uh, Natalie's showing very good consistency. So it's going to be a, a pretty big heat here. We're really getting down to the, the final final few heats where you know the cream rises to the top that was a quick shot of justine Aver. i expected her to just be on the floor there she's uh, very uh, in good shape to deal with all of that and come back and walk straight back up the beach so our cameraman just spying her there you can see the scene then to the left hand side with the yellow flag aaron i'm cold in here i've messed it up i've left my nice warm coat in the car the temperatures dropped how have i done this again i thought you would have learned from last year but it's much warmer than uh, last year i mean we were here commentating last year and blimey it was absolutely freezing this year it's a bit warmer but yeah as the tram montana comes through it really starts to to get chilly in the evenings here and that's reflected on the water too makes it much more compared with somewhere you know tropical as well so when you get into these final later stages in competitions there's also a fatigue factor coming in um, towards the finals, uh, which is yeah much stronger than than some other warmer events for sure. Three heats remain then of the ladies. Actually, that's not true. There's a whole bunch of heats. That, that's totally wrong. That's not bad. Four heats. We've yeah, got a four. mini final coming up as well. Natalie Lambrecht from Sweden up against Angeli the Charger Boulevard from France here, who's been storming her way through these heats. This is going to be a cracking heat. Yeah, definitely. We've seen some insane tricks so far from both of these girls, and um, I think this could be... Uh, this is where you got to put it on the line. This is it for the final. Final's the one everyone wants to get to, and yeah, now's the time. So I think we're going to see some pretty massive sends come, coming through here. Natalie Lambrecht from Sweden then spends a lot of her time in Egypt. Should have all of the whole of uh, El Guna cheering for her and the Makani Beach Club as she goes for not the perfect start for her, just a scent jump, didn't quite feel it and uh, 
She won't be happy with that start. And are we going to see even further inside the mind of Anjali Boulois here now, who seems to really have made a change to her competing uh, strategy, Aaron, which so many have wanted to see over the years. And she's able to structure her heat so well. At the moment here, is she going to do it again? Interesting. Didn't fancy that one left foot forwards. And these are the sorts of changes we're seeing from her. In the past, I think she would have just steamed in there and sent that. But now she's really going about her heats in a different way. Could this be her time here? Yeah, she's super experienced in these uh, sort of conditions as well. And uh, she knows exactly what she's got to do. It's just a straight kite loop. Didn't get a massive gust there. But it's something on the board. And, and yeah, that will, that will work for the first trick after... Natalie only getting a jump. So that just shows the wind shifts here. It's uh, not ideal. There's not the big gust coming through. It's still a pretty massive loop, so I think it will score okay. So she's starting off just getting some tricks on the, some scores on the board so far. But yeah, speaking about people who come, like Mika being so comfortable in these conditions, and I think Angeli's also one of the, the girls that I see most comfortable in stronger winds, taking, you know, big size kites and uh, seeing her, yeah, in Cape Town and in many big air spots really dealing with some some challenging conditions so let's see now what natalie has for her first proper trick attempt here yeah nice landing there a bit of a transitional landing and they're the ones that can go wrong if you find you don't have any tension in the kite you end up over your backside pretty much changing direction here riding in left foot forwards mega loop delayed roll and anyone with a dominance of a right foot forwards so Goofy coming in here tends to want to ride out right foot forwards as well. So nice for Natalie to get that in the bag. Just going back to Angie and what you're saying about her being comfortable in these conditions, Aaron. One of the other aspects is actually being comfortable to take risk, uh, to, to take on risk, which some of the top ladies riders can do. She's definitely one of them. She, she you know, she'll go for it and really take on the risky moves. Yeah, definitely. And in risky conditions as well. So there's a real fine balance, and I think that's what you're seeing with her. At the moment, she's deciding, like here, she's aborted it. It's just gaining experience, and that's just what you know. All good riders tend to do over time, and it's just you start to realise, in so many different types of conditions, in so many different gusts, when you have to pull out of of going for that loop, and that's something we try to teach to to many people who are learning to do kite loops. It's all about that feeling on the way up. Do you have the right takeoff? Do you have the right tension in your lines? Is it time to, to pull that loop and really send it round? So it's just like no, no different than a spaceship, really. You got to abort on the way up. If it ain't going no good on the way up, you got to abort it. Otherwise, you're just gonna, you know, be taken apart. So here's one of those gusts that have just come through. So windy that neither of these girls can hardly keep an edge here. We can see uh, Angeli out the back, also with a kite down on. Side of the window, just stalling, just trying to pass through this. Natalie can barely keep her, keep up wind. And this is sometimes you just got to either decide that you can make this work, get up in the corner there in the flat water and use the gust, or you just have to let it settle down a little bit and just, uh, yeah, bide your time to, to get the gust that's going to work. But you can see how crazy these conditions are now. And, um, yeah, I think as the evening goes on we're gonna see this uh, throughout to the finals but she's gone for the jump a pretty massive kite loop straight kite loop no rotations but oh big crash yeah so the strong winds combined with this uh yeah with the yank and the the pull of the kite <coughs> excuse me it's just so hard to control and break and slow down and there you see she just had nothing on the way down to to break her fall so unfortunate crash there for natalie but um, I think the wind will gradually calm down throughout this heat. And uh, she's in trouble here, Natalie, of actually getting back to her board now. We talked about body dragging be difficult, and this is interesting close to the beach here. She's body dragging out. of You on your screens can see uh, Anjali, and uh, we've just got Natalie here body dragging straight back to the beach, getting teabagged and hammered along here. She's going to get another board. That's the strategy she's going for here she's not messing around trying to body drag back to that board and she needs someone to be bringing her aboard asap where's the spare board meanwhile angeli bouar 
He's ended up a little bit further down. Where there's a great shot of the choppy water, and uh, yeah, director rightly gets rid of that guy. I think there's a kite switch going on down here. That gust was so strong, she just cannot hold the seven meter. And that seven meter rebel, I can tell you, is powerful. Uh, yeah, it has got a lot of power in that thing, especially um, if you're you're not trimming it down. But look at this huge gust down on the beach here. Angeli out the back, biding her time. We can see Natalie switching down to a six in front of us, but. Yeah, it's, not, it's uh, Angelie's go here, but the wind is just so extreme now. She's really struggling to hold on to the kite she has. Aaron, I've got to interrupt you here because on the beach here, we've got this great shot of this kite being launched. Aaron, the board's just come in from the boat now. Can Natalie touch it? This is really important. Natalie's there. The board has just come back from the boat. And I'm worried about this for her. And if I was the competitor here, perhaps I, unless she gets launched on the beach. What a great shot. We have it. This is 45 knots or more. That is the board that got returned to air from the boat. Would that be something you would be worried about touching as a competitor? Yeah, I wouldn't be having that. I would be taking my spare board for sure. Uh, it's a bit of a grey area, to be fair, because <laughs> they are both... Yeah, I mean, if they're identical boards and they're in the same position, then, yeah, I mean, you're going to grab one. But I think she's grabbed her spare, actually, so um, she should be fine with that. Yeah. And now Angelie is still out the back, biding her time. It looks like she's going to set up for one now. She's coming in pretty hot. Yeah, great work by the director there. Just switching to Anjali, who's going to oh, get a massive, huge yank, huge late back roll, coming in just too hot, cannot control the landing. Nothing she could do there to take that. And now she'll be the one that doesn't have a board. Let's take another look at this replay here. That's over 15 metres for me, Aaron. That is massive, and she just can't get the kite in a position to give her significant lift on the way down. And are we going to know? Anjali's managed to get back to her board. Yeah, the pull in combination with the late back roll there was absolutely perfect. That was such a great shot there from the side, the side on there. It was nuts. 16.7 metres yeah, from the surf huge. wrap. That was massive. 68 metres across the bay. She's got, and she's getting nailed here. What a way back into the heat here. This is absolutely nuking. I'm sure one of these kites is going to blow away on the beach outside here. But this is currently... Natalie Lambrecht's go. I think she's, it'll be a bit harsh, but I think she's going to get timed out of this trick. I feel like unless she goes left foot forwards now, the judges or race crew may feel like, look, she did get all her time to change the board. I don't know, but I think she has to trick it. This, I'd say this is 50 knots coming in. Anjali Boudoir has just been blown all the way down to the beaches. They're running. It looks like a desert storm. This is ridiculous, Aaron. This is 50 knots now. Yeah, look at this out the back there. You can see... Just white gusts just flying. She has to release her kite, I think, here, Angelie. She's too far downwind for someone to catch this. Natalie, meanwhile, is trying to deal with it up there. It looks like she might go. She's coming in left foot forward. And she might be able to send a trick here. Yeah, she's going for one. Huge, Whoa! massive she loop. Sends it. Can she break in time and land it? Oh, I mean, that's as good a land. Oh, no. oh, she just couldn't deal with it. All it the drama. So close. All the drama coming in here now. It's the Lords of Tram GKA Big Air Kite World Cup. What a moment this has been for you to join us here. At, what is the time here? 6 44 p.m. 50 knot gust blasting in now. Angeli Boulois has been blown out the zone as a sandstorm nails the beach. She's still in this heat. The white water now has literally been. Picked up and chucked downwind. This is what 50 knots is all about. And Natalie Lambrecht, meanwhile, going out there with a 14.7 massive mega loop. And the AP flag, yellow and black flag, or black and yellow flag is raised, Aaron. And the race director deciding enough's enough of this absolutely ridiculous heat. Unbelievable. I mean, absolute mad respect there to Natalie for even sending a six meter in that. I just was looking out and could just see the water being lifted yeah, that was an easy, easy 50 knots out there now. Unbelievable. And she almost landed that. Just, I mean, I would have given that as a landing if her board hadn't have just come off the, out of the straps there. So right now, you've got Natalie Lambert on the water. That was the best thing that that jet ski could have done was drop that board off to her. Has she even got a board or is she just going on her feet here? Yeah, the safest thing she could have had is a board given back to her. And she's actually doing... What I think is the sensible thing here, she's riding back out on the water as a matter of safety. I mean, look at this water coming in over the boats of jet skis. She's just got to play easy. So he is currently abandoned here. 
the boat sort of going past her as if to say, look, sorry, we can't do anything about anything here. And Natalie Lambrecht, I wonder if she's trying to get back up into the zone and can't quite see this yellow and black flag. But I think that was the right move from the race director, Aaron. Yeah, I mean, it's always a bit of a argument about is it too windy or not? And there's different perceptions for different riders. But I think in that circumstance, when you're out there on big kites, you know, seven meters uh, in that sort of wind, it's, it's super powerful. And uh, yeah, in the end of the day, the safety has to come first. And if you cannot hold an edge on a six meter, then yeah, it's time to get back to the beach, reassess what's going on out there. And yeah, it makes it tough. I mean, it makes it especially tough being downwind. All right, we're going to go to a quick commercial break. and We'll be back shortly. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple... L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents. of Tram was the first real big air contest in France and started in 2019 in Grouissant. After our third edition, the city of Barcares saw the potential of the event to develop their water sport appeal to the world. Barcares is a dynamic city, committed to events promoting their territory. Thanks to Barcares for their trust.
L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents. Lords of Tram was the first real big air contest in France and started in 2019 in Croissant. After our third edition, the city of Barcarès saw the potential of the event to develop their water sport appeal to the world. Barcarès is a dynamic city, committed to events promoting their territory. Thanks to Barcarès for their trust. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents.
Worlds of Tram was the first real big air contest in France and started in 2019 in Coissant. After our third edition, the city of Barcarès saw the potential of the event to develop their water sport appeal to the world. Barcarès is a dynamic city, committed to events promoting their territory. Thanks to Barcarès for their trust. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents. Lords of Tram was the first real big air contest in France and started in 2019 in Coissant. After our third edition, the city of Barcarès saw the potential of the event to develop their water sport appeal to the world. Barcarès is a dynamic city, committed to events promoting their territory. Thanks to Barcarès for their trust.
L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents. Lords of Tram was the first real big air contest in France and started in 2019 in Croissant. After our third edition, the city of Barcarès saw the potential of the event to develop their water sport appeal to the world. Barcarès is a dynamic city, committed to events promoting their territory. Thanks to Barcarès for their trust. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents.
Lords of Tram was the first real big air contest in France and started in 2019 in Goisson. After our third edition, the city of Barcares saw the potential of the event to develop their water sport appeal to the world. Barcares is a dynamic city, committed to events promoting their territory. Thanks to Barcares for their trust.
What an incredible day it's been here then at the Lords of Tram at GKA. Big Air World Cup, we're in the south of France. It's been epic. We've had 20 knots all the way up to apparently 70 knots gusts. Get that for the ladies. We've seen everything. Kite releases, massive mega loops, people body dragging in. It's been one of the most action-packed, drama-filled days I've seen in competition for a very long time. That's the end of day one. We hope you can join us over the rest of the weekend and maybe into Monday as this forecast looks absolutely epic for Big Air. See you again soon. Welcome everybody to the Qatar Airways GK Kite World Tour. Inside the water, like everybody want to win. It's going to be a good show. Let's get it. Who are going to be our new world champions? go in the world, one airline goes further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together.